see the PowerPoint? Can everybody see the PowerPoint on the virtual room? So we're going to work on that first to get you guys rocking and rolling here. Thanks for bearing with us. Listen, one of the things, we're gonna get this up and running. There we go. You're welcome. Can everybody now see it in the virtual room? Okay, got it, no worries. You guys, as we get here, we have a lot of different things we wanna cover but we wanna make this really meaningful for you all. So we're really excited about what we have for you. But as you guys know, when you come to any mastermind, it's all about the people, right? So it isn't about, you're gonna only take away from Alex or you're only gonna take away from me or you're only gonna take away from Kayleen. You guys are gonna take and contribute throughout the entire event, which is a, the real idea of a mastermind, right? We're gonna sit there, we're gonna work in groups, we're gonna work on different things and we're gonna get wherever you're at and we're gonna up at a level. So that's our intention here today. <clears throat> so let me see how I'd have to move the needle here on or move the, how do I move your slide? We have some tech things going on, right? Yep. Yep. There we go. Is this which button did yep, you hit? Yep. This one? Yep. Okay. So everybody knows Miss Kayleen, right? Who's going to be here. For Kayleen, for some of you who may not be as familiar with her, because some of you may not be, she really does some client services on the back end. She's the one that set up a lot of this event, right? And she is the one that's really in charge and working on the Facebook community. So if you have questions around different things like that, make sure that Kayleen, you guys all have your Slack channel and you can utilize that as well. Um, and so for myself, I'm going to be working today on some impact stuff. I consider myself an impact strategist, a coach, and a facilitator for today's um, mastermind. Then we have Mr. Alex, who is going to be, of course, as you guys know, right, the visionary. He's going to be the main speaker, and he's going to be the founder. Looks like there it is a delay on the, on the back end, which is fine. What we want to do is we want to get to make sure that you guys know the objectives that we're going to come through the entire mastermind. So one of the biggest things is that we want to grow, right, a world-class community to start because we're guys, we're small as we grow bigger and bigger. We want to make sure we're connected and that we're actually here, not just for our own businesses, right? The biggest way that you can build your business is to build this community because these are people that may refer you. They may have ideas for you. They may have thoughts and things to progress you up. You're gonna be working in small groups. You're gonna have accountability groups later, et cetera. So let's get to know one another. We're gonna do some activities with that. We're also gonna make sure you leave away today with both mindset and skill set. You're not just gonna come and build some technical skills. You're gonna build some thoughts and some ideas to help make sure that we strengthen both our minds and our skills. And then we're gonna increase our understanding of the levers. You guys have all had exposure at this point to Alex and the levers. We've talked through them a little bit, but what happens is as you get new knowledge, you wanna build upon it and you wanna make sure that we get that stronger and stronger. The next thing we wanna do is you wanna walk away from the mastermind with an actual tangible and tactical tools, right? You're gonna walk away going, okay, this is how I use this, this is how it works and know how to apply them. And then you're gonna walk away with goals. Right When we have all these things, you have all this knowledge, you've got goals that are yearly, you've got quarterly, you've got you know, monthly goals. We're gonna make sure, wait, okay. Come okay, that we ensure that you guys walk away with which goals you're gonna have for the next mastermind so that you're already thinking that far in advance. Okay, and then we wanna make sure that you walk away with knowing how to do the work, learning and growing is its continuous cycle. So that's what we're going to get out of the mastermind. Now, we talked about first getting to know one another. So we are going to do a fun activity to do just that, right? We got to get ourselves rolling um, and uh, make sure that we do that. So what we're going to do is this slide takes a minute to come up is I'm going to, the slide is going to give you instruction on what you're going to go around the table. So we're going to start with the virtual room 
and then we're gonna go into the physical realm. When it's your turn, because we only have this mic, um, and I don't know what's gonna happen if you unmute and try to speak, it won't work well. Yeah, okay, so you guys are gonna need to speak really loudly. We're gonna see if the first person can hear well in the virtual room. When it's done, we'll test it, okay? Otherwise, you can repeat your answer to the virtual. Oh, well, it will lose the effect. They can come up and, and, and speak to it, I think will be better. Okay. It is still taking a minute. I, I hit that slide a bit ago. So while it's doing its thing, I'm not going to worry about it. We are going to talk about your name. Okay. So you're going to do your business. Right. You're going to talk about your name. You're going to do your business. Can you get the next slide up here for me, Ronan? Because I, I hit that button a few times. Um, then you're going to talk about where you live. Okay. One goal you want from this community. So one of the things you guys, as you build your own businesses, you're always thinking about your own goals. But what would you like this community to help you with? If we're in this together, helping each other, like even from this mastermind, if you can think of something you'd like to get from this community, I want you to voice that. Then something fun fact or interesting about yourselves. I know that seems interesting when you guys do that out there, but we're new to each other. So we want to know more about you. So tell us something that would be, you think, interesting of note or fun. And then I am going to just shuffle these. I have enough cards for one for each of us. And then I'm going to ask you the random question and you guys are going to answer based on what the question is. They're all different. Okay, so we're going to start in the virtual room and we are going to start with David. So David, if you can unmute yourself and walk through and tell us all about you, that'd be fantastic. So David Monroe, as you can see, my branding is David Monroe, CCIM. Uh, that is a certified commercial investment member. I'm actually uh, one of only 60 instructors for the CCIM Institute, uh, which is uh, over 13,000 members. So it's pretty exclusive. Uh, that's where I get most of my credibility to be able to teach multifamily investors uh, how to get started investing in multifamily properties, which is my business. Um, uh, I live in Mobile, Alabama. And a goal I want to get from this community is I want to kick all your asses and be the first one to a million bucks. And I'm all about challenges and I'm all about uh, competition. And uh, I think Tanya is my biggest, uh, my biggest competitor, if I had to guess, from what I've been paying attention to so far. But I promised Alex I'm going to be his first to a million. So good start this month. Um, fun fact about me. Uh, I actually had a, an argument with former Vice President Dick Cheney, and I won. Ooh. Was it about the spelling of your name? No, I'm just kidding, David. <laughs> no, it, that's, that, that's a little bit of a longer story. We can talk okay. about that in so my David, answer, You're going to be number five, and here's your question. If I could have any superpower, I would pick what because of why? <laughs> I would be an internet marketing guru like Alex, because then I would not be struggling to get traffic to my sales pages and be at a million dollars already. Got it. Okay. Very good. Yay, David. All right. Next, Miss Catherine, you're up. Hey there. So I am Catherine Harmon. My business is Life Perfect Limited. Um, I I'm stuck right now between two niches, um, but that's, that wasn't the best thing coming into leverage, but that's where I was in my business. I've been working with relationships um, since I met Alex um, in Client's Abundance and then went through AJIC with him. But I'm also now working with the niche of anxiety. It's exactly the same program, same group that I work with, because what I do is I teach people in a nutshell that they don't need to believe their thoughts. Um, where do I live? I'm in the UK, so I might be the only one in the UK in Leverage, I think. Um, but I'm right, right in the south, so I'm a little bit nearer to you guys. Um, one goal that I want from the Leverage community, gosh, um, I feel I might be wrong. Um, I feel that I'm the baby of the group. Um, I have so many questions, I don't even know where to start. I am not very competitive. I love challenging myself, love, love, love that. But I'm, 
how amazing would it be if I was the one <laughs> to a million, David? <laughs> um, um, but I'm, I don't know, just to be part of something. I really believe, I believe in Alex and I, you know, with Susan and Kaylin and, I, and, be, and because you are here, I believe in you guys. So I think together we can make this great. Um, and I want to be part of that. Gosh, fun fact, interesting note. Um, I brought fitness pole dancing to the southwest of England. Nice fitness pole dancing. You go, girl. <laughs> I, well, I've been a fitness. Well, that's how I got into coaching. I've been a fitness coach. My brain. All my adult life. The word dancing. Everything else was foreign to me right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Okay, so you are going to be number six, and your question is: Someone I'm grateful for in my life is because why um i am grateful for my husband paul whose birthday it is today and in our family we're very very special on birthdays we always do something with the kids and and we've got a very very small family but you know like with my mum who's nearly 92 um and i said yeah but i kind of need to be on this mastermind thing and he was just wonderful, as he always is. So much support. So there you go. Very, very nice. I love it. Okay, we are going to go next to Miss Monica. Hello. Um, so my name is Monica Sood, and the business that I have is a health and wellness uh, center. During the mornings, I'm a conventional doctor, but in the evenings, on my days off, I do the whole wellness uh, thing. I live in Long Branch, New Jersey. Um, one goal that I really want is accountability and, and community to really feel like I'm a part of something big. And I feel, I can already tell from all the, the master, like what I've watched through the Slack channel that everyone seems to be really like rooting for each other and, and you know, helping each other. And so I really want accountability and I want to be able to provide that as well. To the community. Um, fun fact, interesting note. Hmm. I guess if I could leave everything and just cook all day long for everyone, that's what I would do. I love, 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 love feeding people. Um, and then, yeah, that's it. I love eating from people who feed me. <laughs> We're an instant match. Monica, I love it. Okay, so your random question is number eight. Yours is the last thing I did just for myself was? Come into this community. Like this is for myself because this is gonna bring me the freedom that I need to live the life that I want. So that's, I consider joining this mastermind and leverage the last thing that I did for myself. Yeah, you go. On New Year's Eve, on New Year's Eve. So that I could, be, you know, you know, make changes uh, this year. You sure did. I love it. Fantastic. Okay. Um, I don't believe I see Mr. Bertrand. So I know he wasn't feeling well. Um, and so maybe, or some things, you know, I know he's in another time zone. So there's that. Carlos, I also don't see. I know he wasn't feeling well. Carlos. And so if they come on, then we'll get to know both of them a little later. Meanwhile, we're going to go to the room. So as you guys go through this, I think what would be just so everybody can hear you is I am going to have you come up and sit here and then you can go through it. You can see the slide with the information. Is that fair? All right. We're going to start with Miss Mary Lou. Woo! Go Mary Lou. Go Mary. Go Mary. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hello. I'm Mary Lou Falovich, and my business is the Family Mindset Institute. I've been doing this for over 15 years, but I've been going big the last, bigger, much bigger the last two years and hitting it really hard. So uh, where do I live? I'm a snowbird. So I'm in Northern Ontario in uh, the summer on the lake, and I'm in sunny, hot Florida in the, in the wintertime. <laughs> Uh, one goal. Hmm. So many goals. We're, um, as an entrepreneur, right, I'm doing everything alone. So, you know, I really need people around me. I do much better when I have people around me. So I need 
more minds um, have me think about things that I haven't, you know, that I don't know, that I don't know, things that I can't see, help me see my blind spots, things like that. Um, fun, interesting fact. Hmm. Let's see. You got so many to choose from. <laughs> fun, interesting fact about me. Mm -hmm. Um, I enjoy organizing. I'm really a nerd when it comes to that kind of stuff. Nice. <laughs> Anybody needs any help with that kind of stuff? I'm, I'm your person. <laughs> I love it. Okay. okay. We're gonna. We're gonna wait one minute like we got a little feedback from somebody trying to mute something. One second. Turn it off on computer. Audio off. Okay. Those are songbird. Right? Okay, so you're gonna be number two. Miss Mary, your question is three words to describe me are. Um Three words. There's oh my three. God. Only three. <laughs> no more than three. <laughs> um, a fun, silly nerd. How's that? Okay. <laughs> I love it. Thank you, Miss Mary. All right. <laughs> Jenny's up. Okay. So, hi, everyone. So I can, I think that people can see me now. Okay, so my name is Regeni, Regeni Bopay. So I'm from Canada. I live in Canada. So what do I do? My business is the Decluttering Ferry. So I, I help um, clutter people, hoarders, to develop good habits and to declare their lives. So where do I live? Usually, I used to live in Quebec and Canada, but now I'm doing my um, process to move here to the United States, live in Florida. So yay! So that's an amazing thing. I'm really, really happy. So, um, and that's thanks to, to all what we're doing with Alex. And that's really amazing for us. So one goal that I want to, from this community is that, is that, oh, I have feedback. No, we have feedback again. Yes. Which goals? I think it's me. I'm a host on here, but. Participation. Here we go. And I'm not there. I'm not there. I'm my apologies to you. Oh, it's okay. We're going to move backwards. Yes. So there we go. There we okay, go. Thank good. you. There we go. So one goal that I have from this community is that um, I want to be with people that are really organized. They, they know how to leverage their business and how to manage crazy lives when we are extremely busy and not knowing what to do. So I want to learn from those people. I, I prefer to be the less experienced the smallest earner in the room <laughs> that to be the biggest one so i can learn from you guys and to you know be impregnated with all that knowledge and all that good habits that those people have because it's i, I know that it's habits that bring you where you are and i need to develop those and i want to learn from that and yeah so a fun fact from me is that if believe it or not i'm dominican i'm from the dominican republic it doesn't look like <laughs> But yes, I am. And my mom is Dominican, my dad is Canadian. So it, it brings this little girl here. So yeah. So I love it. it. Here is your random question number nine. One of my favorite shows is... Oh my goodness. One of my favorite shows. I will say it's more a funny guy. He, uh, Jimmy Gaffigan. Oh, yeah. He's so he funny. Is. Yeah, so when, when I'm like trying to get my mind all out of all the chaos and cleaning and stuff and working i just listen to him i start like cleaning the home and i just love it good so, to know yeah. Yeah, that's it's, awesome thank you thank, thank you for sharing. Yay. Where's that you're up? Me? Oh. I'm not gonna do that. 
Yeah, right? Um, no worries. And then Chen will be up next after her, so you'll come around. So, so one fun fact that I learned today um, about Tanya is she's super tall and I'm super short. So the two of us together are quite hilarious. You just took my fun fact about myself. Oh, I'm so sorry. You gotta come up with a new one. It's okay. Hi everyone. Um, I'm Tanya Russell. I am from Kelowna, British Columbia, and we are famous for wine and skiing. Uh, what do I do? I do lots of things. I have a day spa. I own two tanning salons. I run a women's group, women's group coaching program, and I'm in the process of building an online business with my oldest daughter. And I do some real estate stuff. Uh, one goal I want from the leverage community. Um, honestly, my goal here is to come here and give as much as I get. And that's going to be a tall order because I've already gotten so much. And I think we just lost connection on here. It's trying to connect. That's okay. I'm still, still, still here. Oh, everyone can. Okay. Um, fun fact other than the fact that I am, yes, six feet tall. Um, I would say fun fact, I wrote a book this year, but I have probably read 500 books is my guesstimate in wow, my lifetime. Wow, that's wonderful. Um, and answer a random question. Okay, so here it is. Your number <laughs> is 10. One of my favorite movies is... Oh, man. You're like, I don't time for movies, I'm reading books. I don't, yeah, I don't really, uh, movies. I like the Devil Wears Prada. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and I'm not even a fancy girl and wear, <laughs> like I am not, I, it's the funniest thing because I don't, well, and I'm, I own spa businesses and I'm not a girly girl. So it's weird, but that's me. I love it. Thank you so well, much, Chad. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. Six feet tall, that is amazing. Did you play volleyball? Basketball, actually. I didn't play volleyball. Right, Chen Rupp. Cool. Hello, hello. Um, do what? You'll read off this oh, slide. Oh, off this slide? Yeah. My name is Chad. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Chad Earhart. And uh, what do I do? I, am, uh, I own the Chad Earhart Coaching Company. So I'm a coach, which is my favorite gift. Um, and so I love to, uh, I don't know, right, the way I say it right now is I, I love to uh, liberate leaders. Uh, so that they can do more of what they want to do in less time. Um, I'm also, I, I also, the way I help back is I'm a pastor. So I help uh, a church, a little church that has a lot of disabilities in it and their caregivers and trying to help them grow. Um, uh, what else? I, where do I live? I live in um, misery right now. It's uh, freezing cold. It was like, three degrees or negative three degrees the other day uh so it's great being here in san diego and that's why i came here and i didn't care about covid at all uh let's see one goal you want to leverage from the community you know i think the the main thing for that is just always helping me know what my next step is and getting me very crystal clear about it and then um and there's probably a lot of things, you know, it's, it's, I, you know, there's so much I don't know. So it's like, what do I not know that I need to know? So help me know. Uh, that's probably it. Okay. Um, yeah. Then your question is. Fun fact. Oh, did you do fun fact? Oh, fun Sorry. fact. Fun Sorry. fact is um, I love to do anything I've never done before, pretty much. Um, is that list long or short? It's pretty Oh, did, oh, that I haven't done? Oh, mm -hmm. tons of things. Because you like to do things you haven't done. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, fun fact. I'm also a pole dancer in Missouri. <laughs> no, just, <I> just, <laughs> uh, so, ever since thinking of things I've never done. So that's on. Excellent. What he didn't tell you is it's a tadpole dancer, just so we're clear. <laughs> Number 12 is yours. It says, my favorite place to travel and vacation so far was. Oh, favorite place? So far. Wow, that's a hard one. Um, Mendocino, California was probably one of them. Um, uh, my favorite place is probably Mar Maroon Bells, Colorado. It's just absolutely beautiful. It's one of the most beautiful places that people take pictures of it all the time. Um, and why? Because it's. 
it's just out in the mountains. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's just beauty. And I, I love to connect with nature. It's one of my favorite things uh, to do. Wonderful. Thank you. All right. Okay. Hey, you can talk. Yeah, if you can just do goal you want from Leverage Community, fun fact, and then we'll do a random question. Um, okay. Goal that I want from Leverage Community. Uh, I want you all to get the very most out of this experience in this year. I want you to all hit a million dollars, your first million, and like get what you came here for. So I'm open to feedback. We want to hear from you. You're our pilot group, and we're so excited about this. We really believe in it. So that's what I want for this community and for all of us. Um, fun fact is, um, well, I played volleyball in college. I played D1 volleyball here at USD in San Diego. We were a top 10 team, and I traveled across the country for it. Loved it, and that's actually what brought me to San Diego. And is there another one? No, and then the random question. Random question. The random question is, the type of music I enjoy most is? Oh, Tropical House. Did anybody know about trap? <laughs> wow. Oh, wow. It's just, it's saxophone. It's nice. a little bit of like cool vibes, chill. Excellent. It's you to like, you can meditate with it or you can work really well with it. Beautiful. So I'll play some for you later. Excellent. Alex is up. All right, Alex, what do you want to tell us? Yeah. Hello, everybody. What is that, a fun fact? Yes? Yes. Okay, a fun fact. So I think, uh, what happened there, didn't it? Come yeah, on. just go up this one. Uh, okay. This is connected to the internet. <clears throat> so a fun fact I think that would be good for all of you to know is um, I say that I was a bad boy turned good guy, which means that in my past life, I was a criminal. And I was able to bring that knowledge across to the business world, not the unethical stuff, but how to deal with people, you know, how to like do business with people on a real level. And, um, and what I've learned from that is that from associating in the highest level masterminds in the world with the highest level people, the people who had a, a, a dark past, if you will, are the most successful people around. So that doesn't mean that you have to have a dark past, but the lessons, you want to find out what those lessons are. And I'll certainly be teaching you them. And, and some of it is, you know, yeah, I'll teach you some stuff over the weekend. So it's going to be good. So that's a fun fact, I think. Uh, some great stories of the past that are in the past. Um, One goal you want from the leverage community. Brilliant. So the goal I want from the leverage community is I want you to focus on giving more to the community than you're trying to take. Reason being, if I have a relationship with somebody who I like and I want to be friends with somebody and I want to have a very deep relationship with them, what I'll say to them is that I am going to play a game with you. We're going to play a game together. And the game is this. I'm going to add more value to your life than you add to my life. And I'm going to beat you. There is nothing you can do about this. I am the winner in this game. And what happens is then genuine things, you pass on genuine things. And it's a game, but you're making it a point of being genuine. And just relationships blossom like, you know, the... the have the most dear friendships because of it. So I think that would be a goal for you is to give, aim to give more than you take. And this will be the best investment you've ever made in your life. Love it. Here's your random question number four. In work this past year, I'm most proud of? Dot, dot, dot. As I spoke with Susan last night, uh, I want to create a body of work that I'm proud of and leverage is that. I am already seeing the difference it's making in people's lives and just getting things simple. And once we have that, we're going to just springboard to success. So I think it's a body of work I'm very proud of. So that's that. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Listen, to build a, you know, this community that we talked about, you guys, it does take understanding one another, which is why we're going to take the time to do that. So I'm going to talk a little bit about me, right? So my name is Susan Rooker in the house, right? The business that I do is I own a company called Impactful Strategies, right? And I really am an impact strategist. I help people and organizations really make the impact that they want in their lives. And I do that by building disciplines and skills, okay? Where I live is in the Dallas, Texas area, but I've lived all over the US and I've lived in Spain. I've lived in many, many places as an adult. A fun fact or interesting note about me, hmm. I think I'm going to do this. I love languages. 
So I speak different languages. I'm fluent in Spanish and English. I speak French conversationally. And <laughs> I say that with air quotes. Um, I've used Portuguese in the past. Um, I'm learning Korean. Um, I know a few odds and ends in multiple languages. And I'm, I speak a silly language called ob. And I don't know, you guys are all more my age, but Fat Albert used to teach it on Saturday mornings. And believe it or not, people do know it. It's not a real language, but it's like, like Pig Latin or kind of a made up language, but it was taught on TV and people do know it in the world. Um, and so I'm gonna say one thing, an ob for you, and I'm gonna say the hardest word, which is supercalifragilistic expialidocious. <laughs> and I'm gonna say that knob because it doubles the syllables. We're gonna take a 13 syllable, make it 26. Here it goes, ready? There it is. <laughs> Believe it or not, you can take that back for somebody who knows it, and it was accurate. So there you go. <laughs> um, some people call it Abi Dhabi. That's been called different things, right? It's, when I grew up, it was called Ab. Yep. So if you don't know who Fad Albert is, then you and I need to chat about our age gap. Okay. <laughs> now. <laughs> The an a random answer, I'm just gonna pick one here, is number one, oh, I've got number one, I even look. It says, I'm at my best when, ooh, I'm at my best when I'm present, right? Because I can get distracted like anybody else and then we do lots of things and I'm not at my best when I'm trying to do everything. I'm really at my best when I'm just present in the moment because this is the time I can make the difference. That'd be my answer to that. So I hope that was fun. I hope we all got to know a little bit more about each other and we're ready to do the next thing, which is this. So Miss Kayleen has done a wonderful job of getting the Facebook group up and running, right? So if all of you, you should have joined. I know one person's still working on their Facebook because they are, had some issues with it. These are your accountability groups. Why have we split you into groups? We've mentioned this when we started right? Leverage. First of all, you can leverage, you can use each other at any time. You guys know each other now a little bit better, but we want you guys to build a mini community where we are going to do some competitions, David, to your point, right? And you're going to do a competition as a group. So your group may, will have something going forward, right? It doesn't have it today, but when we do it, it will be your group results. So you want to make sure you work well as a group, you help each other. And we've picked things for different reasons, right? Whether it's geography, types of things you are, personalities, whatever it may be. These are your groups today. What we're going to do is we're going to give you just five minutes. So it's really fast, you guys. You're going to get in your groups, maybe five, six minutes. You are going to quickly, you've already introduced yourselves. So all you're going to do is pick a team captain. You're going to pick a team name. You can make it anything you want for fun. And you're gonna pick a time that you guys are gonna to get together via calls. Now you can work all the logistics out later, right? Right now it's just quickly pick a team captain, team name and pick a call. Now you can change captains over time if you want to. It doesn't have to be the whatever. The captain is facilitating the calls. There'll be a document sent to you guys that kind of gives you guidance on that. It's just so you're not all sitting at a call together waiting for the next person to speak. That's just the main role of it, right? So pick a captain name and quick time to call. These are your accountability groups. Right? Can you get them into virtual rooms? Okay. Okay. How do we do that? You can come over and. Oops. So are we on? Are you? Is are we on? Okay. Yeah, you're on Alexis. Okay. Um, okay. So you guys are going to get into your groups, and some of it is um, now. You have we have two people not here, so my apologies. We have Carlos not here and Bertrand, so you can't make them team captain by default. <laughs> It's like, hey, you weren't here, you're team captain. Uh -huh. It does need to be somebody that is physically here. Um, okay, so you guys have, uh, Kayleen's gonna get you into virtual rooms. You guys are gonna have about five minutes. Okay, perfect, right? You guys are gonna pick really quick. Okay. Uh -huh. okay. And you only have like five minutes. So we're gonna do it fast, fast, and then come back together. Got it, Kayleen. All right. She's she's working on it, guys. Where, where, where I'll just going to take my computer. 
I see you going on. I have had terrible technology problems today. It's really frustrating. Uh, I can hear you. So here I'm going to show myself. Come on. Good question just came up. It's how often to get together. My ask is that you guys get together at least once every two weeks. More than that, you can do it on your own.
Okay, everybody, we're going to come back together, right? And we're just going to recap really quickly. All I need to know out of the accountability groups is who's the captain, who's the name, right? And we're going to go through it really quickly because we're going to move on. We've got lots of stuff to cover here today. You guys can continue your chats as you guys are working in your accountability groups today, some throughout. Um, so here we go. We're going to rock and roll. So Tanya. Uh, we are Team Global because we're Canada, US, and England. Excellent, and Team Global. I'm the captain. Excellent. Tanya is a captain, Team Global. And I know Kayleen's writing that all down. Right, Chad? <laughs> I'm Team Technology, not working. Excellent. <laughs> is that the real name? That's what it needs to be. Yes. What is your real name? Uh, I, I, we didn't even, we weren't able to come okay. up with this. So my team name is Team. You can come up with it later. That's cool. fine. Yeah. Who's the team cool. captain? Team cool. yeah, I'm the team captain? Okay, you guys can come up with that later. Right. Excellent. Okay. For Jenny? For Jenny? Okay. So I'm team captain. Okay. What's your name? Uh, we haven't decided yet. Okay, you guys can come up with it later. Yeah. Excellent. So we got team global, one name. We got three captains. Way to go. I appreciate everybody's effort on that. Okay, I don't know what's happening here. So we're just going to do that thing. Okay, you guys, now we're going to go into a little bit of some training, right? Some mindset training and look at some things before we take uh, our break here. And then we are going to, yep, that's it. Excellent. So how many people have seen this formula before? Excellent. I've got one in the room. Tanya's seen it. I've got a half hour thing. Okay. Chad's seen it. Anybody else? Okay. So we got two. How about the virtual room? Can you guys put in the chat if you've seen this before? This formula? Anybody seen it before? I don't see any chat responding. Okay, so we got two who are familiar with it and we got everybody else who's learning it, which I love. All right, so I learned this formula from Jack Canfield, who's the one who designated and built this formula many years ago. Jack Canfield is a co-author of the Chicken Soup for the Soul series, and he's a guru and very well known in the leadership community. He does keynote speaking and a lot of leadership training throughout the U.S. I learned this from Jack about, um, I'm going to say around between eight and 10 years ago, and it was life changing for me. And it's really, really important. So I'm going to tell you as you sit there and you look at this, right, what it really is, it's very simple, yet it just because it's simple doesn't mean that it's easy, right? This is a way of life. This is a way of thinking. So it stands for this. E is your event plus R is your response, equals O is the outcome that you get. Mm. Now, here's the key thing, you guys, right? <laughs> R is a factor here, you guys. That's the only thing that you actually have any actual say in the matter, right? We don't have control our events. We don't actually control the outcomes. <clears throat> what we can control is our response to get the outcomes. So at R, just so you guys know, is a factor and a mindset in which it's mindset first and skill set second. That's the concept, okay? And the reason that it is, is it's super important for you all to realize that you have to put and apply the mindset before you can actually get the learning and the building of the skill set. When we're in the right mindset, you build and learn skill sets much faster. If you build and learn skill sets and you're in the wrong mindset, then you don't get the results you're looking for in life. Now I'm gonna tell you, right, this mindset formula, and I'm gonna tell you it in first person. So I'm gonna talk about me for a second, right? So I do not control events, okay? We can influence events, right? Events can influence us. A lot of times we think, Events are the only reason we get outcomes for whatever happens in life. It's because this happened or that happened, because I lucky, I got lucky, because I was drawn, because somebody selected me, because this catastrophe happened, because I was adopted, whatever it may be. It's not the event that gets the outcome though. So I do not control events, okay? I do control and I'm 100% responsible for my response. Me and me alone, okay? Sometimes I think <laughs> I respond because of X, Y, and Z, but no, I choose. So responses are always chosen and they're always self-selected. 
And therefore I get the outcome. Now, outcomes, just so you guys know, are earned by the quality of the responses I use. Okay, outcomes are earned by the quality of the responses I actually choose. Therefore, if I don't get the outcome that I love, then I have to select different responses, right? To therefore get the outcomes I'm looking for. So all in first party, remember, I don't control the events. I do control my responses to the events. And therefore the outcomes I get are earned by the responses I choose. If I do not like the outcomes, I must then choose other responses to get better outcomes. Does that make sense just in general? Yeah, I love it. Okay. Now, what I want to do is we need to manage our responses. So as when we think about how to manage our responses, I want us to think about experiences that we have out there. And I want us to think about how can we do that? Here's the thing. E plus R equals O is actually how life works, whether we believe it or not. And here's the thing, whether you work on it or you don't work on it, whether other people out there choose to use E plus R equals O and work on it or don't work on it has no bearing on the fact I will work on it. If I work on E plus R equals O in my life and I build my responses better to get the outcomes I want, okay? It is not at all relevant or important whether the next person does because my responsibility is for my responses. To anything that happens, how I respond to it is my responsibility. How somebody else responds to it is their responsibility, not mine. I don't own it. I can't impact it that way, right? I can only own my own. It's key and critically important. So let's put it in some examples and then you guys are gonna get to practice it a little bit. So does anybody know who Roger Bannister is? We got one in the room, knowledge. Anybody in the virtual room know who Roger Bannister is? Please put it in the chat. Nobody knows, okay. Mr. Alex, tell everybody who Roger Bannister is. So four he is. If you look at this, Roger Bannister was born May 6, 1954. And this three fifty nine four numbers mean something. He was the very first man to run the four minute mile under the four minute. Now, why is that significant? I'll tell you, because everybody before him said it could not be physically done. Doctors, experts, athletic coaches, people that were in the business, people who were knowledgeable of the business, physicians, lots of medical people all said the body's not made to do that. Nobody had ever done it before him. And Roger Bannister said, I'm going to run a mile in less than four minutes. So his response to that was, okay, I got it. Nobody's done it before. So I'll be the first person. Like David says, I'm going to be the first person in this community yeah. to reach a million dollars. Yeah. David isn't worried about whatever maybe he's like, bring on the competition because David's response is that I'm going to achieve it. Not, it can't be done. Not that it's a challenge. Not that's whatever. David's like, I'm in. Roger Bannister did the same. Now, everybody thought he was stupid. They thought he was an idiot. They thought he didn't know what he's talking about. They're like, you don't understand. We're the experts. We're telling you it can't be done. And Roger Bannister trained hard. He had the right mindset. He chose to have a different response. I'm going to believe me and my belief, not what other people are saying can be done as possible. And he turned, right, that same thing that other people says, as impossible into I'm possible. You guys have seen that before. I know you have, but he absolutely emulated that. Not only did he do that, and then people were shocked. Like he must be just so unique. Like that can't be duplicated. Not only did he do it first, but over 1,497 different athletes later did the identical thing. Because once they knew it was possible, then suddenly it was more possible in their brain. Why is that important? Because each of you have your goals and leverage. Each of you have your goals in your business. But if you don't even believe it's possible first, you're already choosing a response 
that's getting you an outcome that's going to match that. So my ask as you go through challenges, as you go through things that are difficult, as you go through whatever is this, decide the response that you are gonna self-select differently to get a different outcome if it's not the outcome you want to achieve today. So when you look at Roger Bannister, does anybody know who Nick Vujek is? Yes. Yes, yay, we got one in the room know that? Do you know who he is? Oh, look at that, we got two in the room that knows it. Do you know who he is? No. Okay, anyone in the virtual room, did you hear that? Did you know who he is? Okay, nobody in the room. Okay, Nick, you guys, is absolutely amazing. You can watch him on YouTube. He has a million YouTube videos. He's a motivational speaker. This man was born in Australia with no arms and no legs. He's got a double degree. He didn't worry that he was born with no arms and no legs. Do you think his life was easy? No. And here's the thing is you sit there and you look at somebody like this, we tend to compare our lives. Somebody's had it harder. Somebody's had it easier, right? We go, oh, I can't complain when you see somebody like this and he's made it. No, we we're all going to have our own difficulties, our own challenges. We don't want to compare our lives to somebody else's because there's always somebody with more challenges and less. Somebody who has it easier and harder. It doesn't matter. But for your own life, here's this. Nick decided to use a different response. He could have easily said, my life's going to amount to nothing. I can't do anything. And he absolutely has the exact opposite philosophy. He's realized his philosophy is no arms, no legs, no worries, mate. Okay. He doesn't look for when he could get arms. He wants prosthetic arms, prosthetic legs. No, he's lived his life very fully. He's married. He has children. He can swim. He goes on speaking engagements left and right. He will bring a tear to your eye if you listen to him on YouTube. It's beautiful how he addresses life. What's the difference between Nick and someone else is he chooses the response that works for him to get the outcomes he wants in his life. The reason I bring these two examples is against all odds and anything you have in your life, you're deciding to choose the response is key to the outcomes you want in your life. I can't choose them for you. You can't choose them for anybody else. You can self-select, but that is a caution because the choice that you make on that response will determine the likelihood of the outcome that you get. So let's take that into real action here, right? Let's take that and practice it. Uh, for those of you in the room here, you have post-it notes in front of you. You're welcome to grab some of those post-it notes. We're gonna use an activity. For those of you that are in the virtual world, realize you can just use pieces of paper in front of you. It's not a problem. Here is what we're gonna do. I want you to right now, you're just gonna do this activity on your own. You're not gonna do it as a group. Okay. You're gonna write down something in your life right, with your business today, because Leverage is trying to help build your business, right, something in your life today where the outcome is not quite where you'd like it to be, whatever that is, today, not the future state of you, but today, something that's not exactly, then I want you to take your post-its, and I want you to, or your notes, I want you to write different responses you have around that, what's things you do, well, you know what I mean, I don't want to get up in the morning, I just want to sleep all day, right? I'm going to, you know, drink and eat to my heart's content because I'm so depressed about it, you know, or I'm going to do this, or I'm going to call people, mm -hmm. just different responses you can choose based on whatever is occurring. Does that make sense? And then what you're going to do, what we're going to visually see is we're going to debrief it afterwards and talk about the outcome that you want. Here was different responses. Now that you know different responses, what are the likelihoods of the outcomes? And they're therefore, which one will you choose? Does that make sense? You're gonna actually walk through something that's currently not at where you want to in your life. And we're going to dissect it, right? And think about other responses you could use to get the results that you want. Business. 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 I'm gonna ask you to focus on business because it's easier to focus on the personal, but we wanna build your business. So we're gonna be intentional about business right now. Something in your business that today, don't worry about your future state. Mm -hmm. Isn't working the way you want it from the outcome? And then what are some different responses you can have to get a different outcome? That's what you're doing right now. So you can start to see what those responses will then get you in the potential outcome. So under each response, as you're looking through that, think about how that impacts your outcome. And then think about what you'd want to choose. And then we'll debrief it. I'm going to give you about five minutes to write that out or so. 
Certainly, if you have questions, let me know. I don't know if I was on mute there, if the virtual world heard me on that, but if you guys have questions, let me know. The outcome, it, the outcome is currently something that isn't working. You're writing an outcome that is, yeah. And then the responses you could do to look at, and then what would those responses get for the outcome? Okay. See, the challenge is, is our brains don't think in multiple responses. We like to think in one or two only. I could do this or that. And what I'm working on getting you guys to think about is you actually have unlimited responses that get you unlimited different outcomes. So if we're choiceful, and what type of response we do, each one of them has a different outcome. One outcome? One outcome that's not working. One thing that's not working. Yeah, you can only pick one, exactly. We only have so much time. <laughs> Two days of things that aren't working. Woo, that's a, like a heavy load. <laughs> Right, yeah, your, your response at the end of two days would not be maybe favorable. <clears throat> mm, just call it whatever, it doesn't have to be a title. So the question was, you know, I don't know how to put a title on something. Just call it whatever. It isn't about perfection on the wording. So it could be anything. It could be like, for me, like I said today, like this didn't go as ideal in, in my head. I had this idea of my head, like it was going to be this, that, and the other. And then it was slow connections and different things. But my response was, we're just all going to do it together. And this sometimes happens in your worlds, right? You guys get on either webinars or do all the classes and it doesn't go because you, again, I don't control the events. I control the response to the event. I'm running with it with you guys. I could choose to be nervous and like to my fingernails could be put on a post-it note. I can choose to ignore it and pretend none of it happened. Yeah. That's a response many of us like. I could be responding by, you know, soothing myself with comfort food.
which not gonna lie, I tend to opt in on that response <laughs> too often, which I'm working on. It's uncanny how when you when I'm stressed, I think chocolate. Is there chocolate in here? Yes. Yeah. 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 It has no. It has it has things in it that actually do that. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. Let me give you guys about one more minute. See how many different responses you came up with. And when we come back together, I would love for somebody to volunteer in the virtual world. And I would love for somebody to volunteer in the, in the room here, walk through it. Just think if that's you. Okay, you guys, we're gonna come back together. So virtual world, who's willing to share something with us on an outcome that isn't going quite and some different responses that you could choose and then what if you chose one from it? Kayleen says, David, David, bring it on. Okay, so, and, and if you remember when I first joined CIA back on September 1st or August 31st or whenever it was, my huckleberry was Facebook. And Facebook has been a huge challenge for my business. Good. So Good. What was my response to that? Well, I hired Facebook ad experts. Yep. We hired a Facebook group coach. Yep. I hired an internet marketing coach. Yep. So that I can implement what we learn and get Facebook working for us. Yep. What are some other responses you could have done? Do you remember what you originally said to me when we were first chatting? Because uh, David and I go back from with, uh, he, I was his coach in the event. And so do you remember what you first told me? Yeah, I said I was screwed because I didn't have, uh, I couldn't run Facebook ads. Yes. So that's a typical response. By the way, David, thank you for sharing that because we all say that about things in our life. Right. So that response is a typical normal response. And what I would say is sometimes you just go, well, I can't, if something's been taken away, he's banned. Right. So then it's like, well, I can't do it. So then we could throw our hands up in the air and say, well, that's it. Well, so I brought on a partner that could do it. Yes. David did chose a different response and then therefore is getting a different outcome. Now the outcome isn't as ideal as he still wants it because they're still learning. Right. He's evolving and getting better, but he's made a huge progress and doing some different things. And I love that. David, right? So as you th sit there and you've kind of dissected your uh, responses, is there a different response that you didn't think of yet that you could take on to get an even different outcome with regards to Facebook? Well, things are starting to roll a little bit now. Yeah. And so, uh, now it's just all about testing. Love it. So his response is like, we got to test. So in other words, it doesn't have to be perfect the first time. He's like, test and try, test and try, right? So then you learn each time. So I like that little movement upwards rather than a one and done like it has that if it didn't work then I must quit and it must not work and that's what we tend to do when we've tried right especially when we put money towards it so I love that thank you David for sharing okay somebody in the room okay well, Jenny come on up I'm gonna have her come up in front of you guys and she's gonna share okay so it looks like a sun it really does so when I have unconstant monthly sales, mm. so of course I can't stress about it <laughs> and I can busy myself with home chores. That's what I tend to do. I'm like doing something good, but it's not what I need to do. But what I can do is that I can go with what I know, do some organic marketing instead. I can, um, first of all, follow leverage directives know what I need to do and do that mm. I can take advantage of the tools that we already have and do an even bright event 
I can also use some of the help that we have with AJC with the Done For You. Um, I can start contacting members from my Facebook group, just creating relationships with them. I can also go and interact on Facebook with in Facebook groups where there are people that I know that are from my niche. I can start doing, I don't know, maybe a challenge of one live a day for 30 days on my Facebook. So I can have people looking at me again. So I can even hire an assistant or a social manager, a social media manager to help me if I'm too busy with something else. I can even start posting again more often in my Facebook group. So there are different things that I can do. So I can finally talk to people, make wow. offers and make sales. Yay! <laughs> I love it. Thank you, Regeni. So you guys, here's the concept again, right? As you sit there, you saw all the things she can do, all the responses. The concept is this, there's unlimited responses. We like to choose just one or two. We think there's only this amount of things in front of us, but actually we can choose any response we want. The challenge is that we choose it. What we can tend to do is react. A reaction, our first response, isn't always our best response. So you see, when you take a test in school, they say, go with your first instinct. When it comes to response, especially if something isn't going well, if we're not achieving, if we're being challenged, our negative responses may come up quicker. So the challenge for us in our response is to self-select to hold. Don't just act on our initial first response, hold on our first response to say, what would be the outcome most likely to happen if that were to occur? Somebody sent an email and they sent it in kind of a nasty way. Do we nasty back? Do we like, I hear you, blah, blah, blah. Or do we hold, think about it from a different lens and decide what outcome we want, therefore choosing the response. And then you guys, E plus R equals O is how life works. That's it. It's how life works. Whether or not somebody else works on it or doesn't work on it, I will choose to work on my responses. And by building that up, that skill set, by starting with the mindset and then building on the skill set is how my life will get better outcomes. And I would invite you to consider how that can also work for you. Remember that the O that I choose, okay, as far as the outcome I'm looking for is going to be determined and impacted by the direct R I self-select. If I want different outcomes, I can choose different responses. It's not easy to do, but it is something that I have full power and accountability in my own life to achieve. With that said, we are going to take a 15 minute break. So you guys can come back in 15 minutes in the virtual world. Everybody here can take a 15 minute. And if you have any other questions, you guys know how to get a hold of me. I appreciate your attention to this. I hope that was impactful for each and every one of you. And we'll see you in 15. Thanks.
Okay. That needs to be muted, but that's not muted right now, right? Eh? Uh, can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay, perfect. Okay, so as we um, get back together, I had a couple people ask a couple different things and say a few things. So I want to just address that in the room. And then Alex will begin his training. So I know that during the break, the people here in the room were talking through some of the different things and Tanya, I hope you don't mind if I just express what you put in the Facebook group for a minute. Is that all right? So I think what was really great, you guys, here's a really great challenge. Tanya was talking through how one of her things that recently happened, an event that happened outside of her control. Again, we don't control events, right? Was that she had some partners that she worked with responsible for a large portion of one of her businesses, it go awry. And so she thought about it. She was first mad, but she didn't choose to act on that. Instead, she thought through things in her trainings from leverage, right, in order to figure out which lever she wanted to pull in order to move her business forward. So despite her initial response being upset and mad, which anybody would be when somebody's taking advantage of you, she chose the response that says, let me go back to my training that I've learned here in leverage in order to be able to make sure I move the needle quickly and get the results, be able to recover faster. And then she shared it in Facebook. So those are the types of things, again, you guys, when we look at responses that really get us kind of to the next level. And then with that said, Alex is going to help us get to the next level by helping us wherever we're at on our knowledge of levers. And he's going to take us up a notch. So Alex. Oh, we <laughs> What's up, ladies and gents? Oh, I've been excited to see you. Okay, cool. So uh, here's, here's uh, my first thing. So <clears throat> Susan's just given us a talk this morning. And what I'd like for you to understand about this talk is she spoke about the word response and really take notes today. I want you to uh, take notes and you're going to take a lot of notes, but something Dan Kennedy taught me, which was very important. He said to me, what you really want to look for is not a load of notes that are going to get cobwebs, but you want to take some notes that you can get some action items, immediate action items. So just so you know, by the end of these two days, you're going to have pages of notes that you may never revisit. Because I've done it a million times. But there's a few action items I want you to walk away with. And that's really uh, what my aim is for you. Now, take notes. And the first note I want you to take is response. Like, how are you going to respond to things? Because Susan's helping me become better. She's helping me become a better leader. And I'm responding to her feedback in ways that she's telling me, Alex, I see you show up like this, and you could show up like this. And I'm listening and I'm responding. And I'm enjoying listening and responding. Um, if you have lots of questions, I know Catherine mentioned, you know, she has lots of questions. I want you to, your response to having a question is to write that question down. Do not keep that slippery fish in your head. Um, also, if you have questions, write them down. I want you to sit and think on them. Think of different responses. So the book, The Road Less Stupid, if you haven't, if yeah, if you haven't got the book, get it. If you have got the book, go through it and highlight it. Then what I did was once I went through the book and highlighted it, I actually went through the book again with an underline, with a pen, and I underlined, I only read my highlights, and then I underlined the most important questions in the book. So now this book has my highlights, which I think are the best highlights, and then my underlines are very important things for me. Great book. One of the best books I've ever read. Um, now, I'm going to get into a lot of strategic and tactical stuff here forward. The biggest problem in your business is going to be you. You have feelings. We're going to be talking about the future. We're going to be talking about strategy and numbers and emotional stuff. But as you proceed into the future, your emotions are proceeding into the future with you. Your feelings are going to slow you down. Your feelings are going to, listen, we're all wounded children walking around in adult bodies. We are all, I said this to Susan yesterday, I used to believe there was a, a part of society that had everything together. 
And unfortunately, we are all fucked. The whole, the whole human race, I, I, honestly, because we self-sabotage as, as human beings, we're self-sabotaging creatures. And we have to force our way forward. But what I'm learning to do is be powerful, not forceful. I'm really learning to like not force things, but be powerful. And I, and I want to change that word. So we've got to like be powerful going forward. Like I saw Tanya this morning, she was in the gym exercising. You know, she's traveled, she's exercised. Um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's very powerful. So, <clears throat> you know, the feelings are going to hold you back. Now, what I want you to do is when you start having feelings in the future, you, or thoughts that are damaging or limiting, in that moment, I call that moment the clarity gap, when you, when you understand something that's holding you back. You're in that moment with it. You're dancing with your fear and you don't like it. You've got to write that down. You've got to write down in that moment what that thing is. Because if you don't write it down in that moment, you will forget it because the brain forgets the pain. You will forget it. It will be there in the brain, but you will forget the pain of it. You will forget the power of it, but you will procrastinate. You write down your pain or your write down the fear, the worry. It's like, oh, I'm going to go live. And it's like, oh, well, I haven't got my hair done or something. You write, you've got to write that down. Like, oh, I don't want to go live because I because my hair is not done. Or um, uh, uh, I'll, I'll just wait until whatever shows up, you've got to write it down. Because if you don't write it down and get clear on what's stopping you from doing it, it will disappear and then you'll procrastinate. Okay, so I'm going to really just dive right in here to my, to my slide. So I must sell myself before I can sell anyone else. So with your business, if you, if you are not sold on what you're doing, you better start selling yourself. You better start getting real with yourself. Listen, most entrepreneurs are full of shit. They, you know, the, the, the era of entrepreneurs has grown recently and everyone's like, I do this, I do that. When I was younger and I met all of the gurus of the internet marketing space, I remember being with Jeff Walker and all of these gurus and Jeff, Jeff Walker's from Product Launch Formula. And I was broke. I was this guy who had nothing. Like I was hoping that they weren't going to ask me to pay the bill because I would have never been able to pay for a dinner. I didn't even know if I could pay for my own dinner. And I'm sitting with all of these gurus. And I asked Jeff Walker, how come I'm with you? You know, like all of the internet, the fam most famous names at the table are with me. How come I'm with you? They say, well, Alex, <laughs> you have something about you. I was telling them the truth of my struggles and uh, my wants and my needs. And I, I'm so stuck with this, this, and this. And they said, see all those guys over there? They're all full of shit. Everybody was in the seminar. Talk I didn't know at that time because I wasn't successful. Everybody's talking this big game and I'm looking at them like, Wow. But when I was with the gurus, the people who were speakers of the seminar, I'm like, why am I with you? Like, because you're truthful. Those people over there, they're full of shit. And I looked at the group of people. I was like, oh, I thought they were successful. They were all talking nonsense. And as I've grown, I've noticed everyone is talking nonsense out there. It is just completely white noise. It is completely white noise. So you have to sell yourself on your business to be so confident when you step out there it's unshakable. They just see you and they're like, wow, like this is somebody different. So, you know, this is something for me. I want to sell myself before I sell anybody else. <clears throat> so the outcome of today, we got two days together, but the outcome of today is how you can quadruple your business using less energy than you've used up until now. Hallelujah, right? <laughs> Mary's like, hallelujah. <laughs> That is the aim of today. Now, tomorrow is a different outcome that I have for you. But I'm very excited about both outcomes. But what I'll tell you is something I've learned is I, I was forceful and I was just trying to make things happen. And my activity didn't equal accomplishments. I was working really hard, but I wasn't getting the results. So I would set a goal at the start of the year. I'd get to the end of the year and look at the financial goal. And I was nowhere near it. And through a year cycle, I'd be like, huh, I worked really hard this whole year. I worried a lot. I was anxious a lot. I got up like early. I stayed up late. I mean, like I worried so much. 
and I still don't have my freaking goal? The worry doesn't make the money. So, you know, I really started to understand about like lion energy and just like strategic energy and, and, and not having to just be on the go all the time, like to rest, to allow rest. Um, I'm going to uh, go on a tangent right now. But yesterday I, I, uh, I went to church and then I, after church, I actually went to bed and I rested and I slept and I felt very good about getting into bed and having a, having a rest. Um, but something, just something random, I'll just tell you, I went into church yesterday, there was over 300 people in there. And as I'm in, in the big auditorium, the woman on stage, the pastor's like, where is he? Where is he? The guy in the white t-shirt. He's up there somewhere. Bald guy. Beard. I'm like, <laughs> she goes, yes, you. She's like, God wants me to tell you that you're in the right place at the right time in life. Amen. <laughs> it's like, Amen. And then she clapped and then she, she carried on with the thing. So it's, it's crazy. Uh, I, felt, I, I felt very good. Um, yeah, yeah. So um, <clears throat> something I learned from Susan yesterday is I want to talk about this here. Susan said to me yesterday something really impactful that <laughs> will stay with me for the rest of my life as I train people. Susan said, uh, it's either a skill or a will issue. The people don't make it. And they can have the skills, but if they don't have the will, they're not going to make it. I'm going to give you the skills today. I can't give you the will. You've got to have the will to do this. You've got to have the will to fight. You've got to have the will to make it happen. You've got to have the will to get past that noise. That that that. You've got to have the will to close the deal. You're so confident. You've got to have the will to be comfortable in an uncomfortable situation. You've got to have the will to stand up for the person you're on the phone with to close the deal. Because if you don't have the will, it ain't going to happen. Like when people speak to me like, wow, like you're really confident. So it's up to you to extract the value of this content. Let me see if I can move this down to the, uh, to the bottom. But it's, it's, it's really up to you to extract the value from this content over the next couple of days. I'm going to give you a lot of stuff. You're going to write down a load of notes. Remember just a few action items. Um, I'm hoping that they can still hear me because this one's not working. We can hear you. Okay, thank you so much, buddy. Um, so <clears throat> Leverage X, when I come up with Leverage X, we, we looked at the X for exponential growth. Now I'm gonna be using this myself, building the brand clients in abundance. Like what we're doing here, like I said, I want to be proud of a body of work. And this is something that I want to use for myself. So what I'm building for y'all is what I'm building for me. And obviously there's going to be different businesses. There's tweaks because each business is unique, but this is what I'm doing. So exponential growth. We've been blessed to do six figures a month for I don't know how many years, okay? But I've never, well, I've done seven figure months but inconsistent. So we've done seven figures in contracts a few months, but we haven't been consistent with that. That's coming. So millions a month consistently is what we're about to step into. Um, now, you know, most business owners can't distinguish between the story and the facts. So what I mean by that is that there's going to be a lot of stories going on in your head, just a lot. That doesn't make it factual. Like I've had, I've had conversations with people where I'm sitting there and I know for a fact, you cannot, you know, I, I will go on the internet and debate with people on certain things that we're talking about here. Anyone in the world I'll debate because it's just science. You, you know, it's, you can't, it numbers and science. You can't beat me if I'm just using that formula. You can talk about any story you want. It does. Okay. So I can sit there with the facts and people will sell me stories why it will not work for them. And they will go blue in the face to sell me why it will not work. They're holding on to that story. It is not factually true. It's their story. And it blows me away. Don't be that person. Like surrender is the most powerful thing I've done in my life is to surrender. It's an easy word to say, but like to surrender fully. Like my way wasn't the right way. 
Like how I've led my life, I've been forced to have oh, success. No, my, the way I've led my life up until I'm 40 has not been the right way. No, it's my path. I could have done better. It doesn't mean it wasn't the right way. I could have done better. I could have had more ease and grace in my life. I could have had more success and more impact in my life. It was these stories that I've sold myself. I have them myself. You know, I'm full of stories. <clears throat> Good intentions don't produce results. Good intentions. I promise you, just because you do things doesn't give you the results. We're going to really focus on that. So business success requires mastery of business skills and tools. Now, obviously, Susan spoke about you, the mindset, you know, the, the beliefs, the being confident, like selling yourself. But there's going to be the skills you need to learn, marketing skills, people skills, uh, you know, math skills, uh, patient skills, thinking time skills, um, you know, really sitting, sitting alone and, 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 and planning skills, um, sales skills, negotiation skills. These are, these are things that you really want to learn, mostly people skills, listening. I told Susan yesterday, something I'm studying right now is empathy. Because what I realize is that I am not empathetic to females because we're different creatures so the way i would show my male's empathy is completely different to a female so we're completely different and i don't understand females i'm 40 but i still don't understand females of like i don't i don't and i but to be more empathetic and just to choose to like i don't understand it but it makes a female feel much better when i'm able to listen and not try and fix their problems they just need me to listen to them Right? But like, <laughs> do you know how long it took me to learn this? I have, I have courage. Yeah. Courage, Allison Armstrong, yeah. understanding women first. Okay. And for the ladies, yeah. So, so there's, there's skills that I, there's skills I, that I'm learning, you know, like empathy and understanding. So you just got to get real with yourself. And then there's tools for that. Like, you know, there's a tool. She said, you know, this, this female's name. Now I have a resource to study, you know, and, and I know um, that. So the best business owners who I know, they study the art of leadership, leverage, planning, and measuring. These, these are really important things. Like, you know, as I'm going to be building and growing clients in abundance, I'm going to be a leader. And I'm going to sit in my zone of genius at leading. I'm going to use leverage. I'm going to be using leverage of time, people, money, tools. I'm going to be, I'm going to be setting plans. And then I'm going to be measuring the results of those things. So that's kind of a good framework that I have. So if you've been busy and you've ever thought to yourself, oh, maybe I'm a busy fool or just, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm working too hard or working harder than I need and earning less than I deserve, it's normally the lack of correct clarity. So you don't have the clarity on what needs to be done. And if you don't have the clarity, don't move forward. Now, just remember this, people, because they feel these emotions, I've got to move forward. They feel feelings in their body. They got to do something. It's just these urges to do something. Pen and paper, like, like, like am I clear on my goals? And I go back to them. Am I clear on my goals for like, well, how far do I need to go? Does it, maybe I'm looking at the day. Maybe I'm looking at the morning. Maybe I'm looking at the, the, the tomorrow. Maybe I'm looking at the week, the month, the year. But I'm gaining clarity on what's going on again. And I keep visiting it. Because if I don't, you know, I'm just doing the wrong activity. And uh, <clears throat> so we've, I'm pretty sure everybody's here to 80-20 rule, right? I'm pretty sure it's, 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 but start looking at your business with that. I know we understand the principle, but now start examining your business of 80-20. Which clients give you the most money? Because what you'll start to notice is that, especially in the coaching business, the people who give you the least amount of money want the most amount of time. So you start to see that, wait a minute, I'm spending 80% of my time with people who give me 20% of my money. Where could I actually start to shift this around? Now, this isn't just like, you know, this isn't just something that you notice. This is an activity that you can do and start to examine. That's what, what they say about working on your business. Spend a bit of time like, huh, let me have a little look at like, who's my best clients here? 
like the amount of times we've gone into the whole list of clients and looked at like categorizing them of like, who does what? How do people show up? Like who, who doesn't blame? Who does blame? Who does what they said they were going to do? Who makes excuses? You can see that in the pool of people and you start to categorize them like, oh, that's interesting how these people, you know, you're going to just do that as people. It's like on Facebook, I have, you know, group of people, I have two Facebooks. I have a Facebook account for my friends in the UK. 80% of them are negative. You scroll through, it's like, wow, this is very negative. Actually, it's more than 80. <laughs> <laughs> so mindset, skills, tools. Like, just focus on those three things. Like, what are you doing for your mindset? Are you training? Are you losing weight? Great, great exercise for your mindset. Lose some weight. You know, my buddy, he's like really overweight in the UK, right? And I saw him on, I saw him on the picture. I'm like, oh my God, he looks like terrible. I, I was worried for him. I like, spoke with him and I know he's doing drugs and he's off the, I'm like, are you okay? And then he picked a boxing at the beginning of this. Every morning at 6 a.m. he's boxing. I spoke to him the other day and he said, Al, I've lost a pound, like a stone and a half, some, you know, whatever that is, 20, 20 pounds or something, 25 pounds, whatever. He's just maybe 30 pounds or something. He's just lost in a month. 20 pounds say and um he said but you know what i didn't realize when i come from exercising in the morning my mindset for the rest of the day so good and i'm like that's exactly why i train in the mornings <laughs> i don't want to get up and train in the morning but when i get up and train in the morning the rest of the day i'm just my mindset's in place then i got the skills and i got the tools so <clears throat> quick quick as we're going to move into some training here all projects are off. One of the best things I've ever done in my life is learn how to emotionally turn all projects off. So right now your business is running and there's all of these different moving parts. So what I like to do in my brain is all projects are off. There's nothing moving. And then I will build the business back up in my mind or on paper from that point. So instead of it being busy and you're trying to fit into the moving, how it's moving, all projects are off. We're going to start over fresh. What, what, what would we want in place? It, it, it's just leveraging elimination of all of the noise you're caught in just to start fresh. Don't you don't follow it? Well, I'm trying to apply that to my own business. I'm like, what that would look like. It means everything stops. Everything's on hold. Everything. Now, the business can continue as normal. You don't have to stop the business. I'm talking in your brain to stop all of the noise of the moving parts, I just say, okay, all projects are off. So it's, it's huge for me. I've done it. I've done it more than 50 times in my career. Okay. All projects are off. Yeah. And now what, what needs to move from this moment, what would happen? And I start to write out everything that there would be to get me to the outcome. Cause then there's clarity on what is going to get me to the outcome versus all of the noise. So like, Basically, it's like pausing and like looking at what your movers are and what the movement needle thing says. Yes. So you're not, you're still going to do prop, do things. Yes. But what you're existing doing is pausing and then you're going to only focus on the project is now going to be just. Yeah, because, stuff. because what happens is you try and, it, it, so what Tanya said is like, she doesn't really understand this and it's good that you don't understand it because it's a very powerful concept when you do get it. So my business has a lot of moving parts. So as everything's moving, if I try and sit down and put a plan together to fit in with all the moving parts, now you're just convoluting the plan. And a lot of the moving parts don't get you to the outcome. It's just because the activity has now happened, there's energy moving around and there's people moving, there's just things happening. So when I say in my brain, all projects are off, that can all be happening, but with my pen and paper, I now have a blank piece of paper and it's called avant-garde, just blank. I just get to now create. What do I want to create? And then as I create this, then I can look at what's going on and how can I now fit that into this? Okay, I know you were doing these things, but we're going to eliminate those things, focus here. We can bring people into alignment. So it's basically just taking a refocusing on what you're doing. Yes. It's uh -huh. so in terms of orienting, because we always have things coming on in our face. Yes. So do we just stop doing anything? It's 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 in the okay good. It's in the mind. 
so really good point. The, the, the issue is that, um, and also here's what I'm gonna do, because I've got a lot to cover. I want you to, I'm not gonna answer any questions at this point, because I know I've got a lot to cover. And I knew this, I'm gonna go through the content. Any questions that you do have, write them down. Then there's gonna be plenty of time to converse around these things. And I want to make, you know, I want to make that clear. I was going to come to that in a minute in the presentation, but we we are not going to be changing conversations in leverage to like new stuff all the time. I'm going to always be redeveloping you on the core principles. And so we can speak about this in three weeks or three months or three years. I promise you, this will be a, still a very a poignant conversation piece in my life because what it does is it removes the noise all of those to-do lists you just said there thank you so much susan when you just said uh all of the stuff coming in that's what it does it blocks all of that real world stuff it's only in my mind i got nothing to do do you understand what what now I, what do i get to do and i get to create art i get to create my plans from that point Cool. So leverage automation. I uh, everything and anything that can be automated, get it automated. Delegate it to somebody and get it automated. As many of the things that you do, either eliminate it or automate it. <clears throat> You're definitely going to want to start leveraging people to free up your time. There's going to be, you know, as you grow the business, you're going to need people. I highly recommend, you know, leveraging people to free up your time. Where do you want to free up your time? You want to free up your time to be doing IPA. This is called income producing activity. That's where you should be spending your time. Now, unless you're going to sell your company, the, the thing that I really want to be clear about is my good buddy, he, he, just to put it into perspective, he put $18 million in his bank account last year, okay? In his, in his pocket, $18 million. And at our good friend's wedding, he said to me, Alex, this is not what we want to hear, but we think we're business owners. Really, we just have high paying jobs because we can't sell these companies. They're, you know, they're guru businesses. Like, yeah, can you sell them? Like, can you brand it? Yeah, you can do it. You can like, there's ways of doing it. But the truth is the way that we've run our businesses they're cash flow businesses. They're not really equity businesses that we're building. Can we turn them into equity businesses and create our IP and stuff? Yes, we can. But like they produce cash. And then you can take that cash and you can invest that cash into investment things, vehicles. So he's, he was very clear about this. He said, look, you want to focus on the highest leverage places in the business, income producing activity. So that's where you want to be, making income. Because... I have built many businesses or many communities and they can come up and they can come down and that people can leave the community and stuff. And what you're left with isn't as valuable as you once thought it would be. So it, 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 you know, the, the, uh, the value is always in the community. Keeping community together is very powerful. Um, but yeah, you, you know, as you'll see, you know, making sales to a community is very important. So income producing activity is what you want to be doing. Obviously, you want to leverage people to have freedom away from the business. Uh, you know, workaholism is, is an epidemic. You don't want to be a workaholic. There's no, there's no badge of honor to be a workaholic. If you think you're a grinder or a hustler or you think that, you know, there's more to do, there's always more to do. You know, it's, it's uh, don't, don't fall into the trap. I promise you, you want to enjoy life away from business. You want to find hobbies and things to do away from business and let other people handle business for you, you know? Um, and also, if you hire people, turn them into profit centers. Like, look at everybody. How can they actually generate you money? Really start to look at that as anybody who comes into your company, and we'll definitely be talking more about that. By the way, you're going to get all of the slides, so I'll give you the slides, and then you can ask questions around those you know, anytime that you need. <clears throat> so technicians, I used to believe that when I worked for my dad, which is interesting, my dad just asked me for a job to, this morning when I sat by that. That's maybe the most, um, could, which could be interesting. It could be one of the most interesting things my dad has ever asked me because he's always, 
made it very clear that he's the boss my whole life he's made it clear that like he's the boss and when i worked for him for many years he was very clear that he was the boss and i was always the lowest person so if chad come to work for the company chad would automatically go above me automatically and if and and if in a year's time somebody else come into the company automatically the person goes above me i never got to be anywhere apart from the bottom of the company I was, that's where i was so i become successful to prove my dad wrong and um you know, he asked me for a job this morning so that's, that's fascinating because my dad's just you know he's such an e you know so such a big ego and you know so look when i worked for my dad <clears throat> um and he is a boss, you know, my dad is, is a boss, you know, it's, it's, uh, I'll, I'll give him that. I learned a lot from him. I used to be a technician. So when I worked for him, I believed like the more hours I had to put in was the more money I would make. So that's like the technician, you know, I got to put hours in to make the money. Then when you become an operator, you believe you own the business, but really the business owns you. So many of you are in that place where the business owns you. You have a business, but you're not free of this thing. It's a monster. It's a, it's a business is a horrible monster, just so you know. For some reason, businesses, we get into them. We want to create this impact. We want to create value. We want like harmony. We want to create things. We, we have the great, the great dream. You get into business though, and there's all of the fears show up. All of your fears show up. Everything breaks. All the technology goes wrong. Like, you know, people are rejecting you. You know, like, you know, people like let you down and, and, and you're like, this is, this is crazy. And the bigger you get it, the bigger the monster gets. So you have to just understand that the, if you're an operator, this thing is going to start to consume you. So you, what you want to do is you want to move to an owner. You want to add value through leverage teams and then measurement dashboards. You want to like, you really want to really use like leverage. You really want to understand that you put the right people in the right seats. And then you have the tracking, like the measurement dashboards, like, like, they will perform. Obviously, they need to be training, coaching. But like that's what you know the leadership is about. So once you're an owner, then you can and a true owner, that's when you get the freedom. You know, that's when you get to work on the business. You're not worried about like, <clears throat> like one of my one of my concerns was as I launched leverage as an example, is I didn't want too many people to join. Because I'd have to do so much one-to-one -one with people. So I really was so picky with who I was bringing in. Because like some people, I'm like, I could close the deal with this person right now. But like, just, uh, so, I, so like I was sabotaging sales because, uh, you know, so you got to be careful of like, so you have to like go through the rungs. But soon once the system's built and like the training's built and the process is built and the, the onboarding process, everything's built then it's not going to be me stuck doing the same things with people. We're building it, you know? So I brought the right people in. We've been building it. And I can move even, you know, from leverage, I can go from operator to owner very soon. But with the business, with, um, with uh, the business, you definitely want to go from operator to owner. Like that's where you want to get to. That's the seat that you want to be in all of you, okay? I'll tell you the, the, the um, if you've read $100 million offers, uh, so Alex Homozi, he he's come up, he's an up and comer from like 2016. This first time I'm, I've only met him once was in 2016. Since then, he's become one of the, the leading experts at just, you know, what we do. And uh, he published a video the other day of, you know, a conversation with a billionaire. And we believe the billionaire is uh, Mark Ford. We don't know if it is him or not, but we believe it's Mark Ford. And what Mark said to me in a consulting session in 2012, uh, not 2012, 2014 uh, or something, was uh, you want to be the consultant and investor to your own company. So what I've got to now do is I've got to really, as I'm going to like launch Clients in Abundance and leverage and, and you know we're re relaunching clients in abundance and building leverage i've got to consult carl and john like i've got to be the leader and consult them and that's you know my uh, role with them and i'll be the owner so extracting value from the data <clears throat> so you know i'm going to just go through this quite quickly here 
I've asked you to go into your business and process and start cleaning up your data. And it's, it's a tedious process. It's a process that most probably you're like, why am I doing this? I'm confused. Where is this? I don't understand that. Why isn't that working? Huh? I don't want to do this. What's the point of doing this? Huh? And then you get something, well, that's not right. Huh? And then you're cross-referencing. You're like, what the hell's going on? What am I even doing? I'm gathering numbers. Huh? Who what number? Okay, it's a mess. And that's what, ha- as you, did anyone experience that? Just raise your hands if that was you. Okay, so you got, okay, you went through that. Well, that's why people don't go into it and do it because it's a mess. But guess what? Your business is a mess. It's a, it's a sign that your business is a mess. Okay, why is your business a mess? The business is a mess because you, there you go. So Jenny owned it. My business is a mess because I am a mess. Okay. Okay. So, so the way I'm going to now pass it to Regeni instead of um, putting it on me, but Regeni can have it. And I'll, I'm the same. Regeni's business is a mess because Regeni is a mess. If Regeni continues to stay a mess, her business will continue to stay a mess. Regeni, though, what's really cool is can actually start to work on her mess by cleaning up the business. And it's a place to actually start to see you change it. So my car, mess. Reflection of me, a mess. So I can clean my car and that shows me that I'm worthy of cleaning up my mess. Then I wanna keep my car clean. And if I start to make a mess in my car, I'm aware that I am a mess. Okay, so I can, I can start to clean things up around me, but we've really got to clean ourselves up and it's normally emotional tangle. Anyway, I'm talking about data. Step one, <laughs> process, <laughs> process and clean data. Step two, explore and visualize the data. So I had you put it into the tracker. I had you in, so you built a model, which I built for you in your business, which was the, the levers. So you've got your controls and your KPIs. All of you should have your controls and KPIs inside a calculator. I would like all of those handed in to Susan. If you haven't done it, you've got to take responsibility that you haven't done it. If you have done it, feel accomplished that you have done something for your business that you wouldn't have done prior, that you didn't even know that you were looking for. Listen, Most people think they see everything all the time, yet they see almost nothing most of the time. We are are so oblivious to what's going on around us. We think we're not, but we are. This gets you very focused on the controls, where we are and where we want to be. You've got that now. So now what you want to do is obviously you've got springboards, okay? And also, this is what I'm going to do. If you can just take, for everybody who's in the virtual room, by the way, Susan, this is, this is shut down. So I, it's fine. They, they've got me here in the camera there. But I don't know if you want to um, play with that at all. But here's, here's what, um, for everybody in the virtual room, definitely please um, you know, get some uh, paper. And for all of you here, I want you to take, you just look at this, plain paper. I want nothing more. I want you to take multiple pieces of this plain paper. Then what what I want you to do is, as you start to come up with ideas for the different areas of your business, I want you to have them on each individual piece of paper. So if you have ideas for leads, you know, that's one of the levers. I want you to have a piece of paper just for leads and anything about leads, you're gonna put on a piece of paper. So there's different springboards, there's different areas of the business, right? I wonder what he's, is he driving like this, just like one-handed or is he like, you know, two-handed or is he like this? Yeah. Or is he on like Snapchat? Yeah. Sorry, two, two, uh, three. Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. So like I said, um, just, I'm going to pass this paper around. Just take a few pieces. What I want you to do is just make sure that you segment the notes for different areas on separate pieces of paper. 
Because as we're going to come together later or tomorrow, we're going to start putting plans together. I really want things identified and isolated on their own pieces of paper. We have something about leads, write down. Something about sales, write down. Just keep it all segmented. And I like to find people like this. I can see it for what it is. So generate results. That's the, so that's the fourth thing of, of generating results. <clears throat> And that's from your springboards, okay? Then step five is optimizing. So, you know, now you're going out there and you're doing things, you've got your controls, you've got your KPIs, you, you know, you're taking action to generate results using the things on your springboards. The fifth thing is to optimize. Like you can start to look at it. Where do I now need to optimize for results? And then the sixth, the sixth step then is to validate the results. So, you know, you can then look at, in 30 days time, this is where I was. This is where I said I was going to be. Let's now review the next set of results. And that's what we're going to do. We're then going to look at those results again. And did you hit the targets that you wanted to hit? Recording in progress. Okay. One moment. Good. So, so it's 11.11 here, which is, uh, which is beautiful. I love that time. So I want to go through now uh, session one, lifeblood of your business. That was just introduction. Here we go. So the outcome of this session here is that you're com confident how to double your leads. Like that's, you know, if we're going to talk about simplicity, I'm going to, I'm going to really like spoon feed things of real simplicity. Like the outcome of my presentation in front of you right now is you are confident how to double leads. The guy downstairs. So he has he has a jewelry store, and he's and he's making he's making a hundred thousand a month profit. I'm in the I'm in the hot tub with him, and I'm looking at his business, all the different ways of his business. I said, "How much are you spend on Google Ads a month?" He said, fifteen thousand." I said, "Well, just double your ad spend. Everything else seems to be in place." He's like, "Well, I I don't know if I can double my ad spend." I'm just like, "Are you not worthy of a fifteen thousand dollar test?" Like we can turn the test off at any time, but like in a month, you're gonna the maximum you're gonna spend is fifteen thousand dollars extra, and we're gonna check it every single day how it's progressing. He goes, okay. He went upstairs and doubled his ad spend instantly. We checked the numbers. We kept an eye on the business. He had his first two hundred thousand dollar profit month that month. He knocked my door for Christmas. He gave me a Rolex for Christmas, and he said to me. We just did over half a million dollars in 24 days for the month of December. I give him many different tips and strategies of like negotiation and sales, but like the number one thing we did was just double the leads. I mean, his profits, like he's now going to make millions of dollars extra profits. One move. Nothing complex. He went upstairs from a hot tub and doubled his ad spend and there's an extra million dollars of profit now there's other moving parts he's gonna hire somebody because of you know he needs somebody to assist him or about fish because obviously there's a lot more people a lot more business so there's a study of efficiency um but you know it's it's you know then from there he can actually open up other stores if he wants to open up other stores he can actually license this training out to teach other people if he wants to but he can actually invest money into real estate faster. One move, all of those things. Pretty interesting, isn't it? All right. So this here, this is a very important metric to continually track. How much does it cost you to acquire a lead? Like just such an important question. And also, how much is your dollar per lead? You want to be looking at those numbers every single month. You can look at them broken down to weekly, daily, but like once a month, you want to take stock on your business as you're planning the next month ahead. You can look at how much did it cost me to acquire a lead? And I could, and, you know, and like, let's just speak like specifically to David as an example, like where he does, you know, he's doing like Facebook advertising. You could look at it on how much does it cost to acquire a lead? from advertising, but then you can also look at, if I included all of my running costs as well, how much did it cost me to acquire a lead for the month? 
So you're gonna look at it like, oh, I'm paying like $8 a lead. But if you then look at like, you got 10 leads, you paid 80 bucks and you look at the running cost, you're like, oh, it actually cost me $300 a lead. So that, that cause that, that number there gives you an understanding of I need scale. So we have to step into economies of scale. We need more people to actually create profit. So I want to know how much it cost me to acquire a lead of advertising. I want to know how much it cost me to acquire a lead of just running costs divided by the amount of people of leads I got. I want to know those two metrics separately. Then I want to know how much did I make dollars per lead in that time period. So I want to talk to you about four moves. I said one move there made, you know, Sebastian, you know, a millionaire. He's already going to do it, but like, you know, there's an extra million bucks from just doubling and he had resistance to it because he was like, you know, he just didn't, the way he just didn't think about it right. His response, as Susan says, wasn't the response that I had, right? So I want to talk about four moves that can 16X your business. So if we look at this here, we got $1. One person gives you $1. You make $1. If now you had... Two people give you $2, you make $4. If you had four people give you $4, you make $16. So imagine if you only had four people give you $1 each, you'd make $4. Four people give you $1 each, $4. But if you get four people give you $4 each, $16. It's very basic stuff, but this is the leverage here. Like, like that's, so one times $1 is $1. One times $2 is $2. Or like two times one. If we can go two times two, is that four? Like if you can go from one times one dollar to two times two dollar, it quadruples your business. Two, we just need double the amount of people to give you double the money. Double the amount of people to give you double the money and you quadruple your business. You get four times the people to give you four times the money, 16 times your business. So I want to give you a couple of seconds here just to write out the ways that you currently drive leads right now. Just so you can put that on your leads, you know, just get that on a piece of paper and just put leads at the top. Like, what are you currently doing to drive leads right now? Just, just rapid fire. You just write it down, huh? You just write it down. Like, what are you doing to, to currently drive leads? Just, let's just get clear because we're, you know, we're in a workshop here, mastermind, we're, we're building, we're building cases, if you will. You know, we're building, you know, frameworks and knowledge. Now, what I want you to look at is, is the ways that you're currently driving business, are they consistent or inconsistent? <clears throat> now, I don't, um, I don't know all of your businesses intimately enough. What I do know is that, you know, with clients in abundance, there would be inconsistencies because we would do live events. So we would, we would be ramping up our traffic to a live event. And when we fully optimized our spending and we're at this high, you know, high place of spending, the events the next day, we have to turn the ads off. It's inconsistent. When they're running at their optimal, we have to turn them off. I used to be like, I can't believe we're doing this. It take, it's taken us like two months of work to build up the seminar and get all of these people at the seminar. And as we're at this optimal rate of just selling, we had to turn the ads off. And I was like, oh my gosh, like I love this. Like the model, like we can make a million dollars from this event. Imagine we didn't have to turn the ads off of their op I'm speaking to like genius media buyers, like great media buyers. Like they're spending a million dollars a week up, up, up in Oceanside. I'm sitting there with them looking at all of these like accounts. We got to turn our ads off. <laughs> it's inconsistent. So that's what really started to get me thinking, okay, I love the event business, but the event business 
become the main business. I want the event business to be the cherry on the top. I want consistency. So, you know, if your business isn't consistent or your lead generation isn't consistent, you want to add consistency. So just a single word, very powerful. So consistency, make sure that you, what you're doing is consistent. The second question is, is it delegated or not? Are you doing this or is somebody else doing this? And then, and then if, if you're doing it, it's fine, but can it be delegated? And do you have standard operating procedures for this or not? So if you're doing it, could you build SOPs and get somebody else to do it? Or if you're doing it, could you hire somebody, train them, and they build SOPs? But really, this is what you want. Your aim is that you have a consistent lead generation system that's delegated with standard operating procedures. That's the aim, okay? Like I said, I could talk about this for a long time. I'm going to just keep moving forward. We can, we've got you know, a long time to conversate around these talking points. And that's what this is. This is talking points for now. Uh, I've got a real lot to cover. So write down any questions and I will, I will be able to assist you. So simple reference points. Dan Sullivan taught me something very powerful. To multiply, you must simplify. So to be able to grow your business doesn't mean that you've got to do a lot more stuff. It means you've got to stop doing a lot of the stuff you're already doing. There's a lot of things you're doing right now on a day-to-day, week-to-week basis that does not take you to the goal. It's actually just stopping you from doing the work. And this is why I started off at the beginning. You may not be doing the work because you're frightened of doing the work. And you're frightened of looking at the work. So you keep yourself busy because you're scared. Yeah, you're avoiding, procrastinating, distracting, just scared. And that's why you've got to look at, you know, the business for what it is. The business is a monster. It's a scary monster. I promise you. There's a lot of fears that show up in business. That's why I say from stage that your business will not outgrow your personal development. It cannot outgrow your personal development because you've got to tame that monster. You have to be in control of it. So that's why simple so buying the beat is so important. Now, once you simplify, this is my quote, once you simplify, then you amplify. Now, if you have an online coaching business or any sort of business of such, it's as simple as this. Leads, applications, sales, service. That has saved our bacon more times than you could ever imagine. As we've grown businesses and they've got out of hand, leads, app, sales, service. You could bring it down to lead sales service, but I like leads app sales service. So you simplify to those four things and you amplify. What am I going to do to get leads? What am I going to do to get those leads to turn them into applications? What am I going to do to get sales from those applications? What am I going to do to service those clients so they keep paying us money and get results? That is as simple as I've turned and we make tens of millions of dollars with the business. That is the, that's the simplest I can make it. We could actually make it this simple, traffic and offer. I've made it that simple, but there is some in- intricacies in between us. So the four is, is my, my, uh, my, my strong foundation. Okay, I've colored this in yellow. You know your controls, or you should know your controls, and you know your KPIs. That is A, B. That's where I am. That's where I want to be. You put a timeline on it, and you go after it. And remove anything that's not supportive of it. And you double down on anything that's working towards it. It's as simple as that. I'm not here to teach you complex formulas or complex. I am not here to teach you really complex stuff. I'm here to remove a lot of the stuff. You've got to unlearn a lot of stuff and just focus on these things. If your TikTok has reels or not, I don't care. If you have a pretty picture on Facebook, I don't care. They, they're not necessary to build in a multi-million dollar year business. This here, what's highlighted in yellow is your guardrails. <clears throat> so <clears throat> I want to look at some leverage points. Like leverage point number one. Now you know that you could remove anything that's not supporting you get leads. You've written down your leads. You've, 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 you, know, you, can, you know you could double down on it. 
Well, leverage point number one is increasing the number of people through the funnel. So let's look at this. <clears throat> what are you currently doing that drives leads? That's a real question. We've already looked at it. The second question is, if you just doubled that activity, would it double leads? No? So if you just doubled the activity, whatever you're doing right now to drive leads, if you just doubled that activity, would it double leads? No? Okay, we'll look at that. So, so Mary's saying, no, that, that won't double my leads. Okay. So it's good to know. Because like I said, in Sebastian's business, we just doubled it and we did double it. That was it. We literally just doubled the ad spend and we doubled the lead flow. And, and if the leads didn't double, but the, the, the profits doubled, there was just more people coming through the door at a much faster rate, okay? So, yeah, well, sorry, what are you currently doing to, um, to the, the drives leads? And if, you, and if you just doubled that activity, would it double your leads? Normally it does. And if you double your leads, you can double your business, just like that, with no extra activity. See, the coolest thing is once you have a business running, it's very finite things that move the needle the most. We don't need to go and do a, a load of things. We can literally just double the leads and boom. Do you have the time to do this? If you, if you don't have the time to do this, can you make the time to do this? Because this again is the elimination. Let's remove stuff. Let's simplify my schedule so I can spend more time on income producing activity, which is driving leads. Or do you have someone on your team to do this that you could delegate it to? Or do you need somebody else to support you with this? Do I need to hire somebody to support me with this? A single hire in this area, it may be scary to hire somebody, but if your business is doing 100,000 a year already, and you just had somebody focus on driving leads and, and they can double the business to take it to 200,000 a year, anything less than they, anything that you pay them less than 100,000 is just profit. So it's just a single bump in profits by one move. Okay. So we got to, we, well, how we're looking at this stuff is we're not looking at it with like, well, we need to hire somebody and we need to train, manage, or, uh, you know, we need to hire, train and manage them and we need HR. No, I'm not looking at all of that stuff. I'm looking at the lever. Is this, is this something I'm willing to do to hire somebody because this is a great lever or not? You know, do you, like, I believe having people helping you drive leads is a really good thing to, to have in your business, right? So leverage point two. Make better conversions through the funnel. So now we've looked at like, you know, putting people into it, making better conversions through the funnel. So lowering CPM, that is just one way. And CPM is the impressions on Facebook, like how much it costs per thousand people. That's what CPM is. A thousand people viewing your advert and just some people have like high CPMs from the advertising, but if you go and lower it, it can just change everything. The CPMs like can fluctuate for many different reasons, but the, the, the cost per lead, you know, when, when we were, when we were running leverage, my, you know, just Caleb allowed it. He's like, Oh yeah, just get leads for less than $40. Okay. And there was no reason Caleb picked $40 or whatever, but they're running leads and they're buying leads for less than $40. So I go up to the office with the media buyers and like, yeah, we were told to buy as many leads as we need for less than $40. And I said, cool, but I want leads for less than $15. That's the CPL I want. I want the cost per lead to be $15. Because if I can buy, you know, at $15, you, you look at it, I can now equal like, okay, if I'm spending $15 a lead and I buy 10 leads, it's 150 so I buy 1,000 leads, it's 1,500. I could buy 2,000 leads for $3,000. So I just looked at it. If I got people pay me the 30K of 3,000 a month, out of that many leads, could I get one sale? Could I, could I acquire somebody to, like, could I acquire a client out of, now let's just do the math, 1,500. How much is this? So, 50, uh, sorry, $15. 15 times 10 is uh, 150, so that's 10 people. Oh, so it's, sorry, so it'd be 200. So, so $115, be 150, 10 leads. 
So 1,500 for 100 leads. So it'd be 200 leads for $3,000. Can I, can I acquire one client that would be worth $36,000 on contract for $3,000? So I'd break even at the point of sale. I'd break even, I'd have 200 leads. I make one sale of somebody who would then the next month be pay. So we'd be in profit within 30 days. I'm not saying that's the math that I'm building the business on, but I'm just giving you a thinking of that. I could spend $3,000 to get 200 leads. And from those 200 people, could I just get one? I mean, everybody like pretty like, yeah, that, that seems reasonable. Right? That isn't what I was building with that, but that's a reasonable thinking. Like, okay. So when I'm, when I'm in that position, I'm not scared of spending money on advertising because I'm aware of like where I am. And I've got that as my framework of what I'm working with. So, so, um, so we got the leads down to $8 a lead. So they were at 40 because I'd, I'd asked them to lower it and really focus on 15 and we were more specific. We got it down to $8 a lead. So that means now I can get 400 leads for $3,000, 400 leads. Now imagine I make four sales, one out of every hundred, which is what I will aim for. Out of every hundred leads, I'll aim for one sale. Well, that would mean the $3,000 in would be 9,000 profit and four times 36 is six figures. Okay, make sense? So I'm just looking at that as somewhere of like all of that conversation come around, by the way, just looking at that there. So lowering CPM is a way to uh, that. The other thing is a massive lever in all of your businesses right now is the opt-in rate. Your opt-in rate of wherever people are going, where you're driving your traffic, that page is a huge lever. If you take, imagine, imagine your opt-in opt rate is 10% and you just turn that to 20%, you just doubled your business. It takes, one, it takes one move, no extra effort after that, pure leverage. And it could literally be a headline change. It could be you remove name from the fold and just have email. You just gather people's emails. It could be you change the color of the page. But that one page, we did it with leverage. When we launched, one Sunday afternoon, Caleb changed the squeeze page and it doubled conversions. And that's how we went from like 15 to eight is because of one change that he made to a headline on a one Sunday afternoon. It doubled business. So the leverage point number three is add new sources of traffic. <laughs> so once you've doubled down on your current activity, you removed stuff to free you up, or you've put other people in to support you, you've now optimized the funnel so the opt-in rate is better. Maybe your cost per lead is cheaper and your opt-in rate is better. That's just a by the way, just you know, multiples. All of these things I give you, if you work on these for the next several months, your business will grow. Only covering the topics that we've covered so far this morning. Compounding, compounding. Just got to put time and energy into it. So adding new sources of traffic, you know, organic, you could use our move the, the needle list. Okay, there's a training in the, in the Facebook group about it, how to move the needle. You could do joint ventures. Who is your direct competition you could partner with? So, you know, something that um, I did in the United Kingdom, and I, and I really haven't since we've moved to America, is utilize joint ventures. And it's something that I really should have done, and my ego got in the way. And it's something that we are going to be doing this year, my, my direct competition, um, we, should have, we should have aligned and we should have uh, uh, cross-promoted each other and we would have made many millions extra each. Um, but also, for instance, there's not direct competition, but there's ancillary. So for instance, like John Asraf is somebody who, you know, I can, you know, co-collaborate with and do a joint venture. You mentioned chicken soup for the soul. You know, we spoke with the CEO of, of uh, uh, Jack Canfield's company to do a partnership with, um, with clients in abundance. And uh, there's people out there 
to do joint ventures with. There's people like, for instance, I went to a restaurant yesterday and there's a gondola, okay? And the gondola is on the lake and there's a gondola going around the lake. And as I looked at it, I was thinking to myself, this restaurant could partner with the gondola. And as they're speaking with us, like, hey, there's, we have packages where you can actually have your food and go on a gondola ride. The gondola person could just go to the restaurant and say, hey, anybody, I'll split with you 50-50. It's really simple. So the same with you. There's people out there, if they go for, if they go for their nails done somewhere, hey, there's a promotion that we do partnering with here. We can get your lashes done. You know, there's maybe a suntan lotion, a suntan uh, place that you can partner with. Do you want to look at the joint ventures that can send you traffic and you can also send them traffic? Okay. Huh? Collaborations. Yes. This is a great way of driving business. But I promise you this in the United Kingdom, as I did this back there, my biggest competition were my biggest allies. The two biggest names that were competing against me were my biggest sources of traffic. Because, because I did promotions that they would promote. So I would have them promote me to their mailing lists and I would promote them. We collaborated because they had, it's like this, Grant Cadone says, who's got my money? That's a saying he wakes up and says, who's got my money? And I don't like Grand Cadone for a number of things, but there's a certain number of things I do like for him. And that saying there is a really powerful one. Who's got my money? So you can also look at who's got my customers. So there's people out there who have mailing lists with your absolute perfect ideal clients. And they could send one email and drive you tons of sales. <clears throat> so they're, 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 the, the people who you would think are your competition, build an ally with them. Get your ego out of the way and build allies with them. This can blow your business up. And uh, we're going to be doing a lot more collaborations uh, this year forward. And then paid advertising. This is the reason I didn't go into, this is the reason I left joint ventures because it was a, it was a, it was a scratch. It was a, you know, if I promote for you, Alex, I want you to promote for me. So what I started to happen was I had to promote for other people, but I didn't like their, what I was promoting. I didn't see the value in it. And it was just this, I had to scratch their back. And I'm like, huh. So, you know, when I learned about paid advertising, I'm like, this is great. I don't have to like promote other people. I can just get leads and promote my own business. Fantastic. So I just focus on, you know, ad spend. And, you know, we've, we've had, you know, many months where we've spent, you know, $100,000 plus on advertising. And I see us like growing that um, consistently, but we brought it down because there's just, there was lessons, great lessons I learned that I had to come and clean up my own mess. Um, so summary here, you could probably quadruple your business just by being proactive and concentrating on one or two simple ways to increase the effectiveness somewhere in these areas I just spoke about. If you really think about it, the growth is not beyond you. It's not beyond your grasp. We've covered how to grow your business this morning. It has been covered, but you've now got to sit and think. And you've got to explore this. And that's where most fail. I can't do it for you. I can't go to the gym and do the press-ups for you. No personal trainer can go and do it for you. This is the job of the owner. You can't expect other people to do it for you. They can support and assist you with that. But you should never leave this to somebody else. This is my role. This is what I do. And if the business isn't growing, nobody's to blame apart from me. Take full responsibility of where the business is. Because I haven't spent time to sit and think about how to grow the business. There's, there's really three levels to the business. There's building the business. There's running the business, the day-to-day -day stuff, and there's driving the business revenue. Most people, most of you, you're either building products, oh, my book, working on the book, oh, working on the podcast, building, going to build a podcast studio, going to build the, the book design cover, and building my 
structure, building my plan, building, 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 building. A lot of work building. No direct results, and it's fine if you're building stuff because you know we plant seeds of abundance, and in the future they come back to us. It's fine building. Then running though, now you've got clients, now you've got to respond to emails, now you've got to show up to meetings, now you've got to do coaching classes, now you've got to write, you know, respond to emails, whatever it may be, you're running a business. But most people forget about driving the business. They don't drive the business revenue. Each day they're not jumping out of bed and driving revenue. So driving revenue has got to be the most important thing for you. You. And even if that's guiding your team and coaching your team how to drive revenue, you don't have to be the one doing it, but you need to be focused on people are driving revenue. And, and you know, I'm going back to the point of pedantic, if you will, but I don't think it's pedantic. I'm going to be watching my money in and out every day. What was said to be going out and what went out? What was said to be coming in and what went in? And I want that reported every day to me. You don't have to be like that. You can look at it weekly or monthly. I'm just choosing. I'm going to do that daily because every day I'm going to look at those things. I'm going to really be focused. So we looked at ways to double the business. Do more of the same. Optimize the process. Listen, Lisa, I'm not trying to be complex. I'm not trying to, trying to look smart in front of you. You just double. You, you just fix your squeeze page. I could double your, your lead flow. You just lower your CPM, could double your lead flow. You just double, you, you just stop the, the, like cut the ad spend in half. Good advert could double the lead flow. If you, if you, if you cut the ad spend in half and you double the opt-in rate, you quadrupled the business. You don't need to add more streams, but it's in there if you want it, like organic, joint venture, paid. So we're going to go into a bit of a breakout here to speak with each other about this stuff. And as I'm thinking about the next 90 days, I want to, like, what will I do different? Because to see a change, you have to change. The business isn't going to change if you don't change. A month's going to go by fast. 90 days is going to go by fast. That's just what happens. This is life. So as I'm thinking about the next 90 days, what will I do different? What would things be that I do less of? And what are the things I must do more of? And these, these are really good questions because I'm going to act differently. I'm going to do things differently. I'm going to do less of certain things. I'm going to do more of certain things. So as we go into this breakout, Susan's going to facilitate it as in the groups. I'm going to step away for a few moments and then we will obviously be able to come back and... Uh, have conversations around these things but i've thoroughly enjoyed teaching this and what i like to say is when i when i write books i wrote six books they 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 took me a lot of work to write these books and i like to say that when you read my books they're very simple to read and the reason they're simple to read is because i did all of the hard work writing them to make it easy for you to read them and it's the same with the business. If you can create the best vision, the people can understand it in a snap. They're going to be able to run with it in a snap. If, the, if you're confused, they're going to be confused. So I want you to get really clear about the next 90 days. What well, you'll do different. What are you going to do less of yourself? What are you going to do more of yourself to achieve a quadruple result in business? Thank you very much. You, Susan. You're welcome. Yeah. yeah you okay. Okay, so you guys, this is what we want to do. We're going to have you break out right into your groups that are your um, accountability groups that we just said. So you can, you know, leave the room and go into your own things, have your headphones, whatever that may be. You're going to spend the next, okay, 15 to 20 minutes, let's say 20 minutes, right? You can spend some time on your own. So it'll be like five after when you come back to the room, right? Five afternoon for Pacific Standard Time here. What you really want to do is you want to take the learnings that he just went over, just that section alone, or anything from this morning when you're thinking about your response to get the outcome, right? He's just really clearing it up. It's not about everything else out there. Just take it to just the learnings you went through that he just went over and think about these breakout questions to stimulate, right? 
your inaction to do the right things. Simplify it. Remember, it's not about 100 actions. It's about specific things that you can do less of or more of that are making a bigger impact to your business today under those levers and metrics. Okay, you're going to work on it yourself. You're going to work on it with your teams because you guys are accountability partners and helping, right? You can do it anyway. You can think about it yourself for a while. You can start collaborating right away. It's not mandated how you want to do that. You have 20 minutes. And then at the end of 20 minutes, we will come back and then we will Q&A what came up as you guys are working together. Hey, we had this. We didn't understand that. My business, this, what that, that kind of specifics. All those questions he told you to write down right? We're going to get into those as well, right? So by all means, you guys are welcome to break out in the group. We'll see you back in 20 minutes. Meanwhile, if in the virtual world you have questions and you don't want to wait for the Q&A back just for directions, type it in the chat. We'll come back to you and the room will be in the space ready for you as well. All right, everybody. Thank you.
So, David, I just wanted to uh, acknowledge you. I really like you. Oh, just thank you, sir. I like you too. Yeah, just want to put out there. Um, it's good. You know, just getting to know you know, getting to know people. I was really, really hoping to be there. Oh, man, I know. Uh, and, and I'm paying for a hotel I'm not even sitting in right now, so it, it hurts. Yeah. Um, yeah, Susan said, uh, you know, I was like, oh, no, man. I was really looking forward to, uh, you know, like, you're going to really enjoy what um, we do moving forward. I'm really going to tighten my ship up with me, Carl, and John. It's going to be, I'm really going to tighten things up. You know, I'm going to... Uh, Go and, go and see Carl soon. And um, I think you're going to really like it, you know? Uh, you I know. hope so. Yeah, you know, I think, I think you're going to really like it. Just tighten things up, you know? I think, I think you'll respect, like, the moves that we make, you know? Like, a, clean, a clean ship's a happy ship, you know? <laughs> um, what are you going to do, David, when you hit your first million? Ooh. Be the first one. What are you going to do to celebrate? Uh, we're all going to go somewhere where it's very warm, very sunny and not hurricane season in the, in the, uh, Caribbean and celebrate. Like it. I like, I like the goal. All right. As we come back together, you guys, right. It's all just Q and A time now for Alex. So for the next 13 minutes, you know, take it away. Like who had struggles with something? What do you want to ask? You guys were writing down questions, all right? When he was going over the stuff, he said, write down your questions. This is a time to ask those questions. And then Alex will go over any of that with you guys. And, Who's uh, first? And, and it's a time to start asking the questions. These, yeah. qu these questions, the same question can be asked a number of times. You don't need to ask me a question not get the correct answer or not get the answer the response that you needed from the angle that you needed and you have to leave that question behind don't let the question stay unanswered but really think about as i was speaking with uh, uh catherine in the in the in the lunch break in the breakout room i was speaking about her mindset and her language that she uses and um to really look at the business from the numbers, not her emotions. So taking a step back, you know, I asked Catherine, how are things going? And she's like, oh, oh, I, oh I, not so good. And I asked her about the numbers. And she said, oh, the numbers look good. So she went from this emotional response to when she got the numbers, she was in the logical brain. And I'm like, well, so her emotions just took over. And, and you know, Catherine is emotional and she allows it to take over. So if she can, you know, start looking at the speaking of, okay, the business is from the numbers and talking from a more logical mindset, you know, you don't have to be so emotional about it. It's, it's very powerful. And then obviously she has to acquire skills and mindset um, and make a better offer. Um, okay. So yeah. So who's got questions? Yes. Okay. Regeni has a question. Okay. So when talk for the next... Um... And can you hear her in the audience? Can you hear well, guys? No? My okay, that's fine. You asked the question, I'll repeat that. Okay, so when you talk about the next nine days, yes. we will do different, do more, or less. Yes. Do you to always relate them to self service needs and applications, or it can also be things that lead to the daily basis? <laughs> Everything, yes. So the, the question is, you know, that, that with the exercise, you know, if you if you look at the if you look at the depth of the training I've given to you this morning already, yet the way I've delivered it of such simple nature, I could just get like, you know, every single line item I've given you. It's very powerful stuff. It's very very. We can have conversations around it again and again and again, and we're not you know, like. So I would just say use it everywhere. So. You know, I was listening to David talk. Okay, let me just answer the question. Use it everywhere. What can I, what am I doing that's not working? But like, you have urges. The problem is like, we, we go to the cupboard and I'm picking up a cookie. Doesn't help with my exercising. But I find myself going to the cupboard and picking up a cookie. I just do it. I, I, I'm not going to eat ice cream. All of a sudden, I'm, I, I'm eating ice cream. Like, 
then the next morning, like, oh, my belly, or like, mm -hmm. but like the process, and I observed myself, I'm like, huh, it was an urge that made me go there. I, I, so I started to be aware of my thinking, I'm thinking about my thinking. So do it everywhere. You know, what can I eliminate? What's not serving me? And uh, well, again, once again, you'll realize you won't want to acknowledge it because it's, you know, very comfortable to stay in the same rut. It's very comfortable where you are right now and getting out of this position is very uncomfortable. Success is very uncomfortable. Success is going to beat your ass. It is. It's, you get, like, it's so much more comfortable to roll over and go back to sleep. It's so much easier to not follow up the lead to close the deal. It's so much easier to say, I'll start that tomorrow. It's so much easier. Of another year being in the same place does not, will not allow they, me to do that. But there you go. But then Mary, boom. So Mary said, but being in the same place in the year's time, knowing that feeling doesn't allow me to do that. So that's when you have something that's you know more painful. You know, that's why I don't pick up the first drink. I don't drink alcohol. Like I don't pick up the first drink for that because I know in two weeks' time when I'm out partying, how terrible that's going to be. <clears throat> I've been aware of that. So I've got that pain and I'm holding on to it. Um, <clears throat> so, so, you know, it's simple uh, everywhere. But what, who else got questions? So, yeah. when you talk about value, you know, doubling your leads, right? Doubling your ad spend to double your leads. Yep. And double an ad spend to double and then leads. You looked at my numbers. Yes. What did, did you see what I was saying? I haven't. I haven't. Um, I haven't really examined your numbers. Um, I was just looking through your other notes and just looking at your homework. It's very good. I'm very happy with that. But okay, look. So doubling your leads, like to use David as well. Like he's he said in the breakout, it's like can't really just go and double your ad spend because like Facebook doesn't like it. You know, and it's true. There's there's. Not every campaign is the same. Not every account is the same. But what I'm saying here is that you're going to have a running cost of business. And that's fact. And that just every 30 days, that clock ticks and it comes back around and click, uh, click funnels once their their subscription <laughs> every month, you know, like whatever's, you know, whatever you're using, whatever tools you're using every 30 days, boom, there's whether it's a $6 tool or an $18 tool or, or a more uh, expensive version of $297 every 30 days. So <clears throat> that's your running cost. You can have a set running cost. It could fluctuate, but you know, it's, you can have set costs. So the income producing activity you do in that period of time, you know, a certain amount of the activity you do takes you to the costs. Then you cross the line of what we call profit season. So like, how much money do you need to make to cover that month's costs? And then you go into profit season. And what we look at is how many days does it take me to get to profit season? Like, that's a game that I'll then play. Like, what's my outgoings? How much would I need to make per day in the month to, to just cover the bills? And like, how could I you now speed that up to do it in like eight days? So the rest of the month, anything that we produce is just pure profit. And we call that profit season. And um, so, you know, doubling your leads is like, you know, should just stack a lot more profit to the business. It's just one way of stacking. It isn't the only way, but you've got your controls. Maybe it's like turning your leads to, like, for instance, Catherine, like Catherine may be getting the leads, but she's not closing the deals. So like if she just followed what David said, well, which was, you know, make your offer better. And then just listen to what I said was every time you speak with somebody, like for instance, Susan, I spoke with, um, you know, the person you sat me up with and he did, didn't uh, join us, Ryan. It's really the only person I spoke with, if you will. And it was a kind of a sales call that I had with him. Um, but I learned so much from that. <clears throat> the guy didn't sign up, but what I learned will make us multiple people sign up to the program. You know, it's, it's like, so... I'm going to teach this tomorrow, but like marketing drives sales, but sales drives marketing. Because when I'm on the phone, I'm taking that information and going back and bettering my marketing because of it. Yeah, can I, can I speak to that? Yes. Come up here for a minute. So I think what's fascinating, you guys, is as he's talking about that example, 
is here's what I would say as an example of will versus skill, right? So here's um, somebody that actually could have benefited from the program, really had the needs. The needs were still there, right? So nothing changed, but what happened from the needs, but what happened is something else happened in his business, okay, that threw him off in his own business, nothing to do with leverage, right? And so because a, a shift happened in his mind of like, oh my gosh, the way he was doing business, a partner didn't want to do the business anymore with this person. Suddenly he's like, oh my gosh, I got to do it on my own. And he, and he went into a response of, right? When people are panicked, they just, they go in and they go, oh my God, I got to scramble. So they started to scramble, work harder. So it's fine because in the end, it's always a will versus skill. It can't change somebody's will. If they don't want to opt in and want to get the help, then they don't have to. They can go and they can try to do it on their own, et cetera, et cetera, right? <laughs> Meanwhile, we will then, as Alex was saying, build and learn from how we could take that and, and figure out how to assist the next person differently, you know, to maybe proactively look at some stuff. But again, those are the points when you guys are looking at, you know, just even in your own business, which people you want to work with or do different things. You cannot impact somebody's will. They have to opt in and decide if they're like, look, I can't, I'm in panic land. You can try to influence that. But if you can't, you can't even teach skills until they're there at the will, right? So that's when you just go, okay, learn and move so that you can make movement for the next person. So you don't stagnate yeah. right on the one because there's other people that still need you. I would, I would, right? I would, add, yeah, I would just add on to that. There's so many multi layers yes. to this, what we're saying. There's, yes. there's so much depth to this conversation. Yeah. I, I could do a five day retreat right now <laughs> and not stop from like what she just said. There's, there's multiple yes. layers in that. Super but to really give you some real simple, like key tangibles, number one, like be always be making your offer better. Yes. So, like, I spoke yes. to this guy, Ryan, and when I spoke with him, he said things to me. My, my sales sheet is a gold mine because of what he said to me. I wouldn't have come up with those sentences and those lines and those pains that he's experiencing and, and like the reasons why he wouldn't buy. So I listened to that. There's also another guy who didn't join. His name was Sam. And uh, he believed that he could just double his leads and, you know, or no, sorry, invest $30,000 into Facebook ads and he would make more than working with me. So he's like, I'll just put the 30,000 to ads instead of working with you. That was his belief. I was like quite shocked by it, but I was like, okay, now I get it. But then I could speak to that in my presentation, which I did speak to in my presentation because it isn't just that simple. Uh, there is other complexities, you know, and proximity is power. You know, it's, it's you know, you, yeah, proximity, you know, ask me a question and like, you know, you, I give you this response, you do this, but you go over here and you know your life's completely different you know it's split decisions you know uh, by the way really good topic this morning like the, it's very good powerful like the reaction stuff so um so yeah so awesome the better offer let's let's um about a minute before lunch yeah but we can continue talking anybody in the virtual got a question at the minute before we get into the next session will be good good okay so what I, I'll just pick up on this, uh, David, I hear you talk about in the breakout, I'm going to come to this, but I think it's good for you. Consistency. If you could just use that one word, get into your business consistency. And I think a promotional calendar with like the events in there, just, you know, it sounds like you're ahead of it and you're on it. That's this, this is going to be a game change for you. I'm about to give this to Carl, the same, the same thing. I'm going to tell Carl, okay, this is what we're looking for. And I'm going to help him build this calendar and the sales are just going to be coming in so much thicker and faster. Consistency with the promotion calendar. Okay. And I can talk to you more about it, but I'm sticking that in for Carl and it's going to be good. All right. I love it. Lunch. Lunch time. We have an hour. So you guys can get out of Zoom or stay in and take off the camera, whatever you want. But we have an hour for lunch and we Fantastic. will see you back in one hour. Fantastic. Very take much care, looking everybody. forward to this session. Thank you. Great morning, guys. Thank awesome. You. Thanks, Thank David. You.
There you go. There you go. Okay, Catherine Davis, can you hear me? Yep, perfect. Good. Thank you. All right, cool. So let's get this started. So <clears throat> very cool. So we what did we speak about this morning? Just give me a briefing on what we spoke about. Leverage points. What else did we speak about? What we were going to do over the next 90, did that, 90 days to improve. Nice. So what else did we speak about? Mindset. What else did we speak about? Response. Response. What else did we speak about? Huh? Four okay. moves to 16 extra business. There you go, my brother. So what, I, what we really spoke about, the main topic of it, uh, was doubling leads. So if you double your leads and then you know you you double your conversions, you can 4x. But you do that twice, you can 16x. So there's, <coughs> four, moves, there's four moves to 16x in your business. And it's it's fascinating when you start looking at the lever. So you know Mary Lou just walked straight into you know my office here with her you know with her notepad. And inside of Mary's uh, stuff, she has her numbers uh, prepared. And this is the past two years' numbers. And she's given me everything of a business for two years to look at. And as I'm looking at it very, very uh, easily, I'm seeing that there's three areas for Mary to grow her business. There's three levers. And the one isn't double <laughs> her traffic. Now she can, she could actually 10X her traffic and blow the business up, but she needs to double her sales conversion first. So this is not linear for all of you. I'm just giving you a, like a linear talk that's for everybody from the beginning. If all of you just doubled your, your leads, you more than likely will double your business. If, if Mary, if you did that, what's interesting is you would double your business you would make another six. So for about, for about, I mean, I'm not even about. For Mary last month, is it okay if I give the numbers? Yeah. For Mary last month, if she spent another $2,300, she would have made another $12,000 profit. So she, so by not doubling her traffic last month, based on the same numbers, but just because you didn't do double the traffic, you missed out on 12,000 profit. How do you, uh, ten, sorry, 10,000, sorry, 10,000 pure profit. How do you feel about that? I don't feel very good about that. Okay. <laughs> so, so 10,000 pure profit because she didn't double, she didn't spend another, she only spent $2,398 last month on traffic. She only spent 2,398. If she would have doubled that, she would have made another 10,000 profit if everything stayed the same. Now, if Mary would just do the one thing she needs to do, take a sales conversion from 10% to 20%, okay? That's the biggest lever right now. We can get it above 20, but 20 is the minimum. 10 is not acceptable. 20 is the I'm minimum. Fired. Eight, 80, <laughs> you're not fired. You're gonna be trained and coached and mentored and guided and measured. 18 is like, you know, like 20. However, okay, now if you would have doubled, if you would have doubled and doubled, it, there's not another 10,000. You would have, there's another 40,000 profit for you last month. Just for the I'm not eating it. I'm going to start choking. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I have the same. Oh, oh, so I feel your pain. <laughs> yeah. Except for my ad spend was $300. <clears throat> the same profit. And I that. Yeah. Wow. Well, and with Tanya's business, Tanya can actually do an extra six figures. Yeah, an extra hundred, another four hundred thousand a year. <clears throat> now things look, things things go out of whack. Sometimes things just completely crash with the numbers. Sometimes the numbers like float somewhere. Sometimes the numbers just follow that pattern, that path of what you said. You got to follow them, but the numbers are going to find their own pathway. It's like a river. And and just very simply here, if you would if you would have doubled your close rate. And if you would have doubled your close rate and doubled your traffic, 40,000 extra, or maybe 30,000. My math may be a bit wrong. But, but, yeah. but the thing, but, but what you have to remember is, she would, but think about this. This is what's important. 
Mary was able to sustain her business running costs within the 12,000, I, I believe, right? I may be wrong, you may have lost money, but like somewhere. But add in another, in the same time period, add in another 30,000, the profit margins go from very thin to very fat. So the margins grow huge. And we go in cycles. We go in a year cycle, we go in a month cycle. You know, like the whole year, but like really, they're month, they're thirty day cycles. So, like, there's two moves, and one move is, hey Ryan, double the ad spend and make sure everything stays within KPI. You're following it, so you track it daily. You give me a month here, but you're tracking on a day to day. I know, and then, and then work on closing, and that twelve thousand month will be a forty eight thousand month within a month. Two moves. You're going from 12,000 a month to 48,000 a month. One move, she, she just says, Ryan, double the ad spend. The other one is, okay, I've got to get better at closing. Because look, at the end of the day, if you're not closing, nothing, I say my slide for tomorrow, you're not closing deals, like nothing's happening. Not about doing anything else. Like, there's other things I can do. There's stuff you can do. Yeah. Let, let's, just, let's just be clear about it. There's a few things you're going to be obliged to do. Like show up to a coaching class. Like respond to a group message or something. Look at the obligations. Not all the stuff you want to build. Remove those. They're separate. There's a lot of stuff you could do. This like, oh, oh, just stuff. I do. Don't, don't get busy with stuff. It's a big problem. There's two moves right now that quadruple your business right now with these numbers. And the good news is these numbers are small. So I could get this to a six-figure a month business easily. Easily. This, this goes to, this is a million dollar business with these numbers easily. Yes. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. I'd love to write so, a train place map. <laughs> so, so let's just look at some of the things that, that we're covering here. Session two, doubling your dollar per lead. Is this showing up at your PowerPoint? Oh, uh, let me share my screen. Yeah. Thank you, uh, mm -hmm. Susan. You're welcome. Um, Yeah. So, so, so session two is doubling your dollar per lead. So the outcome here for this is, let me go back. The outcome here is that you are confident how to double the dollar per lead. So Mary, you know, how you would double your leads from the first session is as simple as Ryan. Could you please double my ad spend or... That's one option. Number two is, um, as we mentioned, you could write a new advert because your because your click through rate has dropped. Right. And what would be really good, Mary, is if I could bring up your numbers on the screen. If you were able to share this spreadsheet with me, not right now, but yeah. but at some point. So every, I'll bring it up on here, and I'll show the room, and I'll share on the, the screen so everybody in the audience can see what I'm looking at. Because Mary's just given me a business. So me and Mary don't need to conversate apart from I can ask questions. What's happened here? What's happened here versus me needing to glean information to try and figure things out? I'm asking questions based on certain areas. So I want to share that with the audience so they can see. So one place for Mary is double the ad spend. Another place is to write new adverts because her, her uh, link click through rates dropped. Another leverage point for Mary is to um to increase her opt-in page by five percent which gives a 20 percent bump in revenue and uh they're they're the three areas for her how she could double her dollar per lead though is by doubling the close rate on the call that's like one place there's others but this is big one for mary right now so let's just look at the math so we covered this math already right yes we've already covered this now but look at this though this is this is what makes me excited for all of you <laughs> Like, you know, you've got a cool little business, you know, you're learning, look, here's what you're doing. You're learning these tools. These are the very same tools I'm using for my business to build clients in abundance. You know, as I'm going to go and I'm going to sit with Carl and John and, 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 and structure the company, we're relaunching clients in abundance to a more consistent model instead of going from seminar to seminar. The tools that you're learning, I'm going to be implementing that. But like, I don't know if your salons and stuff are going to have the, the money you can make, like you're going to do in like your other like coaching business and stuff, yeah. you know? Yeah. 
Because like this stuff here is, is this is the, and, and you can always marry though your salon, for instance, to get in those girls to come to retreats with you. Remember I was talking about like, like to give you all understand, I was, I was sharing about like promotions and like getting clients to give you more money. And with Tanya, I was like, you know, you could maybe do like, you know, like Mimosa Monday. So you have all of these women, if Monday's a quiet night, have all the women come over, have their stuff done and give them free mimosas and have a bit of party in the salon. It's a, it's a, you know, it's community. But then from there, you could sell those women a retreat somewhere where you all go to Hawaii or something for a retreat. And you could sell them a high-end package, you know? I'd go to my therapist and he always had his retreat in Maui. You could buy his retreat for a few thousand dollars. You go there, you go in there for a few hundred dollars, but he was always selling his, his retreat for a few thousand. So look at this. You've got a thousand dollar package. You sell one person at a thousand dollars and uh, you've got a thousand bucks. You sell one person at 25,000, you got 25,000. Now, this is really basic, but it blows my mind because a buyer is a buyer is a buyer. And you think somebody's only going to give you a thousand until you make them a twenty-five thousand dollar offer, and they take the twenty-five thousand dollar offer. Obviously, there's a conversation around value, and there's um, uh, and self worth. I'm not going to go into those conversations. I'm just looking at the the math right now. If you don't believe you have the value for a twenty-five thousand dollar offer, once again, go and look at Hamosi stuff, look at my stuff, look at anybody's stuff about offers, and just learn about offers and value. Just learn it. Study offers. Like, you know, I think Hermosi's, yeah, like he really understands it, breaks down for the simpleton like I. The, the, uh, but like it's one person, one, one transaction, 25x difference in results. It's just a different, they just want something different of value. It, it could be literally proximity where you come in like this, you know, it's like, it doesn't need a lot like proximity is, you know, access could be the big difference for the thousand. They get the course, the 25,000, they get the course plus access to the guru, the expert, the author, the, the, okay. 25 people at a thousand, 25 G's, 25 people at 25,000, 625 G's numbers, you know, it's a big difference in numbers, you know? And like, I remember when making 25 G's was like, whoa, we just made 25 G's. And I've just like, like been at a seminar, I like to John, John always has the slips. How much? He's like 625,000. I'm like, fucking nice. <laughs> you know, it's different, you know? And John's counting numbers, he's like 625,000. Lovely, you know, it's nice. 25 people. There's no diff there's no difference in people. I have 25 people who've given me a thousand dollars. I have 25 people who's given me twenty five thousand dollars. Yeah, I've got more actually. I have you know many more of each. I just I just want you to sit with that a second. Look at the difference: twenty five thousand to six hundred and twenty five. The the greatest lesson I learned, not the greatest lesson, but I learned many lessons, but. One of the lessons I learned that was great was with your price, double it and then add a zero to the end. Like, you know, it can make you rich. And I, go on. I do that all the time. I teach that as well to mm -hmm. my people. And what it does is it changes your mindset as well because it immediately begins to help you. And I like to do that as an end result. Like it's like we always say, what do you want to make this year? A million. What if it was when you add a zero? Because all of a sudden you start to think, I have to think differently from how to just add to multiply. Uh -huh. Or I have to think, you know, you, you just you just change the way yeah, you think. it changes the it hundred percent changes the way you think, but it also changes the bank account. <laughs> yeah. You know, and again, I'm not I'm not talking at this point about you know the emotions or you know, the value proposition or anything like that. I'm just showing you 25 people. You could make 25 G's, which is nice. You know, it's, it's nice. Or you can have 625 and it's just completely different. 
And it's, and it's, you know, everybody, you know, and it doesn't need to be the front end offer, but all of you could have a 25K back end offer. You know, all of you could have a 25K back end offer. Now, you know, with, with like, if I just use Tanya, because you got like women coming through, maybe you don't live in the right place to like make those offers. You know, like, you know, in America, you know, a 60K offer is, um, you know, I would say more accepted in America than if I was trying to slang it in the UK. Like, you know, a $60,000 off in the UK, they're not buying it. Like they're completely like, you know, it's but in America, but then obviously there's parts of America that, you know, yeah. again, so maybe there's some women there for you, maybe there isn't, okay? Um, but, you know, again, proximity, you have the whole access to the internet. You know, the internet just gives you, you know, access to everybody. Cool. So, you know, you just see the difference there. I just think it's a very powerful, uh, and, and just, just think about it, just write down, like, you know, I, I want to create a back-end offer. And just like, I just see David over there, and I'm going to turn this a bit, but I see David there. It's like, again, I don't know all of your businesses intimate enough yet. You know, I know David just did this event and I have gleaned some of his numbers. But what I do know is if he went and made a 25K offer on the back to these people, some of them are going to buy. Just because the fact that he made the offer, you should always make an offer, in fact. It's like this. This is, this is what I say here. I do it in rooms like this. You bought everything from me, so there's nothing else you can buy from me. Right now, all of you, I promise you this now. I can make you an offer, and somebody's going to pull a credit card out and say, I'll, I'll swipe the card right now in this room. I promise <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I, I promise you, right? So you can always make offers, right? And you laugh of it, but I'm not going to make you an offer. I'll keep it in my back pocket. <laughs> but, it, but, there's, Three from now. <laughs> but there's but there's always offers you can make, and people will laugh about it. Look, you laughing about it. You're like having fun about it as well. There's always offers to make, but they're not going to buy it if there isn't that level of value. So it can be it can be you know intimacy it can be unique it can be exclusive it can be you know proximity it can be community you know it can be a number of things but 25k to 625 that's what i'm pointing out okay it's a big difference and how do we go from an offer that was <clears throat> well good good question so 25, like, it's a good question how do you multiply by two it's like 9000 and then at zero, it's 18. <laughs> well, well, yeah, but you know, you could you could just go like you know, you could it could be ninety thousand, and then you could give you know a massive because it's ninety thousand dollars of value, and I'm going to sell it for twenty five, or I'm going to sell it for eighteen, or I'm going to sell it for thirty six, or whatever the number is. But the market will, you know, the market will um, tell you what they want. I'm going to sneeze. <sighs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> thank you. The, the market, your, your clients will tell you what they want. So for instance, I would just do like this. Like who would prefer, so if you would like to go to, if I said Thailand or Hawaii for a treat, if I said Thailand, right? So most people put their hand up to... Who, who wants to go to Hawaii instead of Thailand? So, okay, cool. So like, you know, so the retreat's going to be in Thailand. So then we could do a retreat in Thailand. So when all of a sudden, that's, you know, how you'd start to layer it. You include the clients into the journey of what we're going to be offering them. If I was going to be doing a retreat in Thailand, you know, the stage would start to be set for that. Okay. And um, yeah, I'll, I'll talk more about backend offers anytime you need. So optimization points, uh, let's look at optimization point one. So increasing the lead to application. So, you know, as I said to uh, mention to David earlier, all of you uh, want to have a content marketing calendar. You want to have a calendar that is mapped out for promotions and you want to have events through the month. Now, I'm going back to read, but I'm just telling you like, this presentation I'm giving is a presentation I'm giving to myself. Because as we build clients in abundance, this is the stuff that's being implemented to the company. Um, 
because we, we, we moved away from it, going from event to event. We used to do phone, then we went to, to events, then we went to virtual. Now I'm going back to consistent and actually live seminars as well. So a content marketing calendar is going to be very important to have events in there and promotions in there. There can always be a reason to promote people back to your place. There's always reason to promote them back, you know, um, back. Well, she has a repeat business, you know, she has, yeah, back, back to, you know, but like, but like this, you know, but if we just talk about increasing leads to application, you know, if you just keep emailing them and having promotions of, you know, to get there. And then like, for instance, for leverage, if I wanted, I would now have in my content marketing calendar, uh, Tanya's video that she, that she did for us. I would have that put out there, put onto like onto the internet and we would have pulled it from the group. And basically I can now say, right, what we're going to do is we're going to talk. So I, I now have that to my ammunition. So instead of just throwing out there, I can say, right, on the first day, I want to explain how I've, I, I, um, I want to build a bit of drama because they, you know, these people love a bit of drama, right? So it's like, I, I, I put myself to the test. I've never built a salon before. And, and, you know, now I can, I'm writing an email right now. Right? Like, so, you know, because I'm known as a, like, a, you know, as I'm known as a marketing like expert, and I'm, I'm very well known around the world for building coaching businesses. I was recently put the, to the test of building a salon, which I've never done before. And, you know, this person paid me, you know, a, a large amount of money. And, and here I am, like, I've never done this before. So I went to the tool shed and I looked at what I could pull out of the tool shed to like, you know, because I, I can build any coaching business to the million dollar level very quickly, but a salon, never before. So I put the tools, the same tools into the business and instantly she's, you know, like, I'll actually tell like, oh, oh wait a minute. Um, if you want the tools, I could say, if you want the tools I give to her, hit reply. And I can show you, I, I can send you a video over the tools in an example, right? So what I'm doing there is building a bit of thing. And even if I already know Tanya has got the results, I'm not telling them straight away. Then the next day I could say, hey, remember yesterday I was telling you about these tools? Well, they worked. I just had a conversation with Tanya and she just said, holy shit. That's an extra hundred thousand a quarter. That's an extra four hundred thousand. Like who, who, who? Like if you, if you want more, I'll see if Tanya will share like with us. People start responding. The next day, I send the video. Here's what Tanya just. She made a video and she just sent the video. Check this video out. I put it on a video on a page with a button under it. So I have now made two emails lead into the video that she's already created. So I built a promotion out of it. Then what I could say is, let me see if I can get Tanya on the phone and interview her myself and break this down. Then go in and do an interview. So tell me, what, what, were you, what was life before the tools and after? Great. So if anybody, and I can send, so that's four messages that I've created from, the, from the video that, that Tanya made and an interview. Four days. So what I've just done in my mind is I've just now created four days of email promotions with two assets, a video that Tanya made, thank you, by the way, a video that Tanya made and an interview that I would do with her that would then lead back to applications. Now, first of all, I would do those live. I would write it, send it out, write it, send it out, send the video out, put the video on a page, send it out, interview Tanya, send it out, put it on a page and send it out. But once I've done those four things, I'm going to take those and I'm going to put them into my autoresponder sequence. So for any other person who ever joins my list, from they will go through my autoresponder sequence and see those four emails in sequence. And I'll never have to write them and send them again. They're just in the sequence. So I'm just going to, there was two things I said there. But first of all, I just showed you me coming up with stuff to be creative. Four days on the calendar. And, uh, and then I'm taking those assets and putting them into an autoresponder sequence. If anybody has any questions around that, we can explore that further. I can do lots more teaching around it. But that's what I would do. Okay. Uh, so, you, so to increase lead to application, you can see that I want to have a calendar so I know I'm promoting every day. And I want to get ahead of it with my promotions. And I want to make sure that there's lots in there. I'm booking things in there to keep promoting. Because the more you promote... The more, you know, the more people eyeballs, the more education, the more applications. So you send more emails through broadcast. 
and then you add them to your autoresponder sequence. So what, what happens is all the best promotions, they just, you keep doing promotions as broadcasts. And then what you do then is you put them all into your autoresponder. So you may have like a 30 day autoresponder sequence. As soon as somebody joins your list, they're just being emailed every day of these amazing promotions just on autopilot. And then they just apply. They just think, you know, you're increasing your lead to application rate right now. That's what we're doing. Major lead. Also text messages. You know, if you've got their phone numbers like, like text message saved our butt in 2019. Email marketing just died on us. Like we were running this promotion and unfortunately email marketing just, just it was just dead. And it was just rough. And Caleb, thankfully, just said, um, do you have like all these people's phone numbers? We're like, yeah. He goes, let's download all of those phone numbers and stick them into like a system. So we took all of these phone numbers we had gathered and put them into tax magic. And we started doing, we started doing tax promotions and boom, like we saw loads of tickets to the seminar and it literally filled up the seminar for us. Tax magic is an automated system. Tax magic. Yeah. It's like, uh, yeah, that's how we text people. So, so then what we did was we really took, we really adopted text message marketing thereafter. So everybody who joins our mailing list now, we really want their phone numbers to do text marketing. So, so good. Um, so, uh, so, um, manually reach out to leads. So this is something that we've just adopted with our business is when people are joining our list, they're giving us their email and phone number. Nat is actually manually reaching out to them and she is messaging them by text message, messaging them by phone. And she's trying to get on the phone with people. And when she's getting on the phone with people, she's then seeing if they're a good fit for our program or not. And then she's marking them down of where they are. We're tracking these people. So in, before it was all inbound, what we did. You know, we wait for the application. We push emails and stuff for more application. But now we've got somebody who's actually just contacting people and just phoning up as many people as she can every day and messaging as many people as she can every day. And she's just having conversations. Like that's how, like, for instance, Regeni is in the room. Is I believe Nat, did Nat reach out with you? Yes. Did she reach out with you? Yes. 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 So Nat just Matt, like that's so as an example there, that's how Regeni's in, then Nat reach out to her. And but she's doing that with like loads of people on a day-to-day -day basis, loads of leads that are coming in, she's you know able to go through them. So we're really gonna like that is something that we're really focused on. You know, and I'll be teaching you all the trackers and I'll give you all of the stuff. You know, there's gonna be more stuff around that I'm gonna be teaching you, but um, something Susan's going to be helping with is uh, um, is we're actually going to be hiring uh, two more people, I believe, or one, but like you know, it's is this you know two people who are going to be doing this full time. So that's that's you know we're going to have uh, more people coming on board just for that line there. There's going to be people satters doing that. So. And then at the top, actually, I put content marketing calendar, um, but the same, same difference. You know, it's, it's, it's putting information out there. What I like to say is, you know, I learned this from Joe Polish, but it's pretty, you know, pretty standard. But I like the way he says it. He says, put information before anything you sell. So if you're going to sell anything, put information before it. That's a good way to sum up marketing and sales. Just simple, isn't it? So optimization point two is to increase the applications, the sales, Mary, Chad, Catherine. So it's a numbers game. 
And, you know, there's, there's a real, like, you know, there, there can be controversy around, like, you know, oh, you, you know, you just call your, you know, your, your customers numbers and, you know, like, no, they're people and, you know, there's all of this different conversation. However you want to look at it is fine. Whether you want to look at it as just people or numbers. But, like, business is a numbers game. And when you're in business, you're in the people business. So if you want to be successful in business, get good at being good with people. Like that's, a, you know, it's like, well, it's in the people business. That's it. It's pretty simple. Um, but it's a numbers game. So the more offers you make, the more money you'll make. For instance, Mary, even though your numbers are bad on the phone, if you would have made twice as many offers, you would have made another 10,000 uh, sorry, 12,000 profit. If you doubled the amount of phone calls that you made, you would have doubled, you would have made another 12,000 profit, not even um, because the, the, all of the revenue, the running cost was cut up in the other 12,000. I'm just calling that profit because it's, 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 um, it's profit that's just sitting on the, the table that you didn't get. It was there for you, but you didn't get it. And you don't need it, obviously, because your bills are covered. You've covered your bills. Whether you covered them with the credit card and went into debt, they still got covered for the month. You know, ClickFunnels still took their bill in. You know, whatever happened. But there was another twelve thousand dollars for you right there, profit. If you'd have made twice as many offers, or if you would have closed twice as much, which you know, which which, which is a different conversation. So make more offers to more people. Um, you know, better positive mental attitude. If you want to close more people, it is a mindset game. I remember this girl, she, she's crying her eyes out on the phone to me. I can't close anybody. And I want to prove right to you. And I want to prove my parents wrong. And I want to prove to myself I can do it. And she's just crying her eyes out on the phone to me. She goes, I can't close anybody. And I said, I, I think I understand why you're not closing anybody. <laughs> Because you, 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 it's all about you. I said, it's all about you. Go to the next phone call and forget about making a sale. Go into it and be of service. And, and if you can help this person, the best place you can put this person is into your program to help them. If you can help them, you're doing them a disservice by not getting them in the program. But this is not about you. Go on the phone call and listen to this person. She literally, that next call, closed the deal. And then went on to build a multi-million dollar business in sales. I just told her, if you're interested in people, they become interested in you. She was like, I can't approve myself to you. And I can't approve my parents wrong. And I got to do that. I'm like, you're just doing it wrong. Like, that's not, that's not how this works. So... It's, it's a mindset game, you know? So even when you don't want to get on the phone and close the deal, but you do, like that, you go, I did that, you know? I'm a warrior, you know? It's tough sport, say It's a really tough sport, you know? And, you know, people think I'm good at sales. Like, well, the only way you can get good at sales is, like, actually just getting in there and doing it. I've done a lot of man hours on my own selling, on my own, in a room, just on my own selling. I can't, you can't fake that. You know, you can't, you can't buy the certificate. You can't buy the course. <laughs> you know, you, you don't get to like be able to say, right, this is, you, you have to go through it. So you're all going through it right, you know, but keep good, positive mental attitude with it. Um, better active listening. Um, I want to force things down people's throats as fast as I can. Get off the phone. Either they're buying or not. But like sales, listen. That gets in my way. Though. What? I spend too much time listening and then they give you a story. Well, if you, but you, you, only, you only do it based on, on this. I'm active listening to build a case. Once I got this, I don't want to listen anymore. I don't need to listen. You've told me enough. Um, well, what, uh, what I would add to that for her uh, is I would say is what you're doing is you're being very specific to it. So <laughs> it's really about being intentional. That's how I look at it, Mary. It's about 
being intentional with their time is valuable and your time is valuable. It isn't about your time is only valuable. Mm -hmm. So you also, when they're going on about their story, they, they remember it's story is fact. They start to believe their own story. So part of the issue yes. as, a, as a person who's trying to help them is to not <laughs> let them go on too long about the story yes. that they're trying to get to believe on. Does that make sense? Yes. Not even about like who's the effect, because it's really about catching them quicker in their story to get them out of their story and back into action in the positive space. So some of, for me, it's a little bit of a book like that. So it's intentional with your time and their time. If you look, if you look at it as active listening, Welcome. you're going to find incongruencies in what they say. So they're not going to notice the incongruencies, but they're going to be there. And it's normally before the price and after the price is the major time, major time you'll see the incongruencies. So it's just listening, building a case. That's what I'm doing. It's like, there it is. Okay, cool. Now, now I can actually overcome objections. Um, like a better phone script. Um, you know, I think my script that I'm using now is, you know, very powerful. Um, it's short, it's punchy. It, it does, you know, uh, what it, you know, uh, I think Tanya, you know, even in your business, there should be some phone script. There should at least be a few bullets that are covered. Um, so everybody should have better phone scripts. I can speak to you about that separately, like some of the things I think that we'd be tracking with that. Better offer. Um, how are you going to come up with a better offer? You speak with people, and when they that when they decline your offer, you can ask them, okay, and you can make it clear, okay, cool, I've taken the offer off the table. What would you have liked to, to have heard from me today? What would you have bought today? What were you looking for? Changing the tense, asking the questions. The, them start to tell you, well, I, this is what I need and this is what I'm looking for. They start to tell you and then you can use that language into your, your offer. Yeah, so I'm always listening to what people are saying mm. on the phone and that's how I'm then developing what I'm offering them. Um, and then just becoming better objection handling. This is really, uh, this is the place where I think you all have the biggest leverage. Nothing moves without the sale. So every, I like to say, if, if I did 300 phone calls in 2019, and out of those 300 phone calls, um, I closed 100 people. So of the 100 people, I think it was something like $1.5 million of sales. Out of the 100 people who I sold, 95 of those people told me no before yes. So only five were like, yep, here's my credit card. The other 95 had objections. If I would have only closed the five, I would have made $75,000 that year. Not bad. You'd be like, yeah, 75,000 is fine. You could live. But I didn't make 75,000. I made 1.5 million. It's a, it's a, I promise you, it's a, it's a huge difference. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, and I'm not talking about the money, but I'm talking about like the rejection and and like the self-worth and self-preservance of like, like I don't want to I don't want to only close five people of 300. I closed a hundred. The money stuff, yes, but the 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 impact, the, but it's more about like that phone call, like close. I like closing deals because it opens relationships. So it, I like the feeling of accomplishment. I like the closing of deals. I like good business. I like things moving. So yeah, 75,000 to 1.5 million, that really, really is in that one line there. Better at object than handling. <laughs> and holding the ground. Yes, it come from the sheet and holding the ground. The, I am I am knocking off this phone without helping you. I don't have to tell them that. But I'm I'm not getting off the phone. I've just spent an hour. Why am I going to get off the phone now so easily? No, you're gonna have to you have to spend time to get me off the phone. Optimization point three: increasing the average order value. So, in like for instance, Catherine's point, I think Catherine needs to lower her price of her program right now 
to increase her average order value, to increase her average call value. I think at the moment she's charging 8,800, but she's like lowering it for some people. Da, 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 da. I think she needs to lower the price. I've done it many times. I'm selling at 12,000. I can't sell anybody at 12,000. I just drop it down to nine. So when I was comfortable before 12, I start picking up rhythm. I start making sales. I'm on the phone with somebody. I feel good. I say, yeah, the price is 12. I'm back to 12 again. But, but if, I'm, if I'm losing my edge on the phone, I'm going to bring that price down a few thousand dollars so I can be comfortable again. And, but, but, but what I'm talking about here is increasing average order value. It's like it's for something was reason, like we used to sell a program for 5K. Adam walked in the office one day, he said, we're putting the price up to 6K, inflation. We put the price up, nothing changed apart from a 20% increase in bottom line revenue. Nothing else changed. All conversions stayed the same. After about three months, we're like, 7,000? 7,000, nothing changed. 8,000, things started to change, but the numbers were still good, but the close rates were coming down. 9,000, the sales room couldn't close anything. I can't imagine. No, but like in the UK, in the UK? No, the sales room, as we were doing this test, the sales team couldn't close 9K. There was no deals being made. So we brought it back to 7K, it was working. We brought it down to 6K, they were flying through the roof. They were comfortable down there. But the average order value is what we were looking at. The average call value is not the, it's not the, it's not like I'm selling a hundred thousand dollar package. I'm only selling one out of every hundred people and it's a thousand dollars. If you're selling a five thousand dollar package and selling everybody, it's like five X, you know, it's it's 95 percent cheaper, but five times better rate, like per call. So decreasing the price can increase the average order value. And you want to keep an eye on your average order value, your average call value. Major lever point there, major increase in price. Just by, by Frank Kern said this to me, we're selling at $5,000. He said, do this. He said, there's the five. He said, there's your five. All you need to do is get a line and go like that. He said, that's your new price. <laughs> That's what he said to us. I was his consultant. I, 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 I paid Frank too much money too many times. And what I've learned about him and David would be the same, I guess, is um, just simple but consistent. Um, but yeah, paid him too much money too many times. But, but I've learned from it just so much, like learned so much from it, you know? Um, the the uh, uh, so you can increase your price. Um, you can increase your price. You can add more offers at the point of sale. So we used to sell like a twelve thousand dollar package, and then we would say, "Would you like us to do the done for you offer?" It, it just an extra three k. We normally charge six k, but you can get it thrown in for three k today. We talk them through the done for you. And we would sell it to people. We ended up just packaging that in as one because it was a big sellable for us. But we would add more stuff at the point of sale. For your business, there's so many bumps that you can make, like Tanya can make. But there's bumps that all of you can make. Would you like to add the mastermind in? Would you like to add the done for you in? Would you like to add this? It's all these add-ons that you can make. But um, optimization point four, increase the repeat business. So, you know, rebuild collection, like that there is just key. If you're doing contracts and you're bringing in like a small amount, don't get, don't get lost in the, the contracts. You got to get, you got to focus on the cash collected. So, you know, increasing rebuild collection, like this is something for Chad, the like, you know, his rebuild collection is very low and that will come from his sales call trying to like, worked what chad the chad's problem is that he's a nice guy and it's the same thing that like mary struggles with trying to help people on the phone knowing you can help them and chad's been a nice guy and trying to accommodate them with an offer and like really trying to help them and i can help you so let's work this out and he gets five hundred dollars for them for a ten thousand dollar package but like they're never going to part with any more money with him like it just like they give him $500, but then like they're gone. It's like, you know, it's kind of done. 
So you've got to set the frame that like, this is a $10,000 package. If I let you in at the 500, let's say, I don't want to let somebody have a 500 apart from a deposit, but like, when are we going to have the next payments? When are the dates set? And being very clear and intentional, like, is this person just like going to give me this or they come in with more? And then like, making sure you collect the rebills on the set dates. And like, if they don't give you the rebill, finding out why, and you want to increase it. And you want to be, well, you know, huh? You know, yeah, but like something like for you can auto charge, and we 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 have we have some auto charge, we have some manual. But the point being is to making sure that it's collected. Yeah, I'm making sure that it's collected, and I'm looking at percentages right now, not dollars. So, like, yes, we want we want money collected, but I want high percentage of rebills coming in. Right, the percentage of businesses, I'm talking a percentage right now. Then this is a dollar one, increasing their repeat business where like they're gonna give you more money. So you can you can definitely do it on auto, you know, autopilot, whatever, but you want a high percentage. Like, you know, depending on volume, I don't know, different markets. So I can't really give you a percentage, but aim for in the 90s, like 80s, like 70s, but like you know. If you're, if you're in low 70s, there's, there's a lot of wiggle room you can do to get better at collecting rebills. But focus on it, like improve it. Take, if you take it from like 70 to 80, it's a lot. If you take it from 80 to 90, it's a lot. So just look at the rebills and then increase in repeat business. Kennedy taught us some simple, Kennedy has taught us a lot, but what he taught us was a buyer is a buyer is a buyer. Like just a show of hands, who's given us money before leverage? Yeah, so like, you know, I mean, a buyer's a buyer's a buyer's like, you know, the people who like your better clients are going to give you money and they're going to give you money again and they're going to give you money again. You're going to give me money four times and they're going to give you money again. And they're like Mary Lou, when Mary come to me at, at the last AJIC, she signed up at, at AJIC again. This was her sales pitch with me. Al, I got a problem. I become so successful from being in your program that I need to sign back up again because I need help because my business has grown too much. I can't handle it. <laughs> and I'm like, what a bloody great, what a great problem. <laughs> and what a great reason to like sign back up to the program, you know, but repeat business. Imagine I didn't have the opportunity for Mary to join. Mary would be looking somewhere else right now. Uh, so create more offers for your existing people. Like when I had, when I had clients in abundance, I didn't know what we were going to sell them next. I just knew we were going to sell them something next. And then it took four months until I learned what they wanted. So I had a room of 52 clients. I made them a new offer. It was for $10,000. And 42 to 48, I'm not sure the exact number, of 52 bought it. We did like $400,000 of upsells. No ad spend, nothing. Just straight. Our clients made them an offer. And, and it was something that they wanted. And it took me four months to figure it out as I was working with them. Boom. That, went, that offer then we put to a $25,000 offer. And we sold millions of dollars of that. Uh, offer to other people. Uh, so yes, yeah, so sell more stuff, masterminds, retreats, consulting, just, you know, there's, there's things that you can sell them um, and sell them bigger packages. Like I said there, you know, we, we started off with a $6,000 package. We then sold them a $10,000 package. We then sold them um, a $15,000 package, sold them a $5,000 package, a $25,000 package, a $36,000 package. So the same people have, um, let me just quickly answer this. Hello? Okay, thank you. I'm, I, okay. I just need to make sure because I got some important stuff going on. So they phone twice in a row. So sometimes if somebody, same number, I want to just know. Um, so, so just sell them bigger packages. And, and look at this. I just showed you the pathway of, of the sale. We actually had a 15K package, but then I sold them a 5K package. So, so something that I did was we had a group of clients 
in a room and I found out that they wanted to do a retreat with me. So I was like, well, who would want to do this retreat? Like I just showed you all, who would want to go to Thailand? And they were like, put the hand up. So, okay. So I built the offer with them and then I sold it for 5K. And then I sold it to 15 people. So however, however much that costs. Then I did the retreat at the house with them where we lived in a mansion and we spent a couple of days together. Huh? I remember that. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. I remember that. Then at the mansion, I made them an offer for 5K to, to do a new program with them. I built the program with them. So most of them bought it. So I made 100,000 from that weekend. I built the program. And then I sold that program for $30,000 from stage. And it was just all recordings then. From stage, the $30,000 package I sold was just the recordings of the stuff I did with them and access to a call. And we sold you know, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars of that package. And we took it off the shelf. And, uh, but it's really good training. Um, so cool. So some important questions to really keep asking yourself. What must happen for people to buy from me? It's like, you know, change has got to happen. Things need to happen. What must happen to, to keep them coming back? Really good question to ask yourself. Like, what must happen to keep them coming back? So if we talk about a recap of today, we covered how to drive more leads, ways to double the dollar per lead, which is really... Run more promotions to your leads, sell more offers to your leads. I mean, to simplify it, that's really a recap of today. We've already seen in many of your businesses, we don't need much more. And there's six, and I know the numbers sound ludicrous to some people, but like guy downstairs that lives in this building is making an extra million dollars this year because of one of these things I spoke to you about this morning. It's the execution of it. It's the implementation of it. It's the removal of all the stuff, all of your baggage, all of your emotions that are holding you back from self-worth, self-pity, like old stories. Like I used to say I'm traumatized, highly traumatized. I, I now say I was. I, I don't I don't allow the trauma. I'm just I, I'm not allowing it to give me the, it's not who I am. It's it, who I was, fine, it happened to me, but I forgive, I can forgive myself, forgive everybody. I'm not carrying those stories. I'm now 40 years old. I'm not here to talk. You're going to get to see me move forward. You're going to witness it. Like, I'm going to just go forward and do what I do. You'll see the difference. You're like, oh, that's interesting. There's, there's a lot of change you know, coming forward. And, um, but that doesn't mean I'm going to be, learning too much stuff, honing in on this stuff. So a leverage question, where are my biggest levers in my business right now? Like you have different, different, different people have different levers. But there's a few specific things right now that you need to focus on, not, not just brush over. They need to be identified, isolated, and focused on again and again and again. Like for instance, Mary, Mary's got to look at like that close rate. We can't, listen, Mary can kick the can down the road for a month, two months, six months, mm -hmm. 10 years. But the fact is that the, the sooner she fixes that problem, the greater return she gets. Soon as she fixes that bottleneck, she is a more valuable person to the world. And now she knows what it is. Now is she willing to look in the mirror and have that honest conversation with herself? You know, it's like why most people are scared to sit on their own. You know, it, it's, you know, it's, it's people that people are afraid. It's like I say, I chased success, which is an illusion to keep me distracted. I have been running away from death my whole life. Just 40 years old ago, wait a minute. It's not my own. I could do it now, but like, I could do it. Four years ago, I couldn't sit in a room on my own. I'd have to drink alcohol. Couldn't sit with myself. Just wasn't able to sit on my own alone. 
So this, so that's just my personal life. But in the business, it's the same thing here. Where are the biggest levers in my business right now? You can identify them. You may be wrong. Am I right or am I wrong? Let me write this out. Can I conversate around this? Is this right? Like Mary's. Mary's is closing. Simple as that. Then there's a couple of other places and there's questions I have around a business. Three, three areas. If Mary has conversations with me around other things, I very, very much know that Mary is not looking at the problem. And that happens. That happens. I have conversations. I tell people this and then they say, so, um, so YouTube ads. And Mary's like, so, uh, you know, when we doing a YouTube ad masterclass, I just look, I'm like, fuck, what do I do here? You know, that's what people do to me. You know, it's, it's, um, and, and the other, the other side of it is like, sometimes I'm not paid enough money to like wipe your bum. So I just look at it, I'm like, well, I'm not getting paid. Like, this is not my business. I haven't been paid to like, you know, wipe somebody's bum or like, you know, change, you know, change, change clean your car. You know, it's like, I, I, put, I put it down. You didn't pick it up. Unfortunately, you know, you know, we're, we're in the, like I give some, I have to, you know, sometimes it's unfortunate, but with all of you, you don't have that luxury. Unfortunately, <laughs> I'm going to be on your case, each and every one of you. Yes, you no, don't. You I'm do. Not paying no, you don't have any. No, you don't have. Any, <laughs> you don't have any luxury to. Uh, to um, unfortunately, and um, like I said, I said this when the, the microphone was off. Um, you know, I make things very uncomfortable for people, and the reason is because success is uncomfortable. This success is not comfortable. Don't think success is comfortable. It's not. Being unsuccessful is comfortable because that's what you're used to. Wherever you are right now is what you're used to. So the breakout question is like, what are the, the one or two major projects I'm committed to achieve in this next quarter to quadruple growth, right? Just write that down. There's, 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 there's one or two things. Like in Mary, I would say there's one. She could like maybe look at two, but like I, I would just be like, I'm focused on this one thing. Because she, Mary, by focusing on one thing, can have six figures in her bank this time next year of profit. By not doing anything different than what she did last year, no building needed, just let the thing run, don't take so much more time off, and there's more money. It's, it's, it's a weird thing to adopt because it's so abnormal, but, but that's something else I'm going to be working with you on is making abnormal normal, your current normal abnormal. Yeah. I know this is a lot. There's a lot. There's a lot. But just keep it simple and keep asking the question. So what are the one or two major projects that you're committed to achieve in this next quarter to quadruple your growth? Everything was in this uh, this morning. So uh, I got a bonus question for you. Where are the leverage points in your business right now that you haven't handled? Because they take an extra effort, so you haven't put the uh, put them off, so you put them off, you know, procrastinating from them, so you're already busy doing other stuff. Because being busy is the greatest excuse of hiding from not facing the truth. And I'm reading a book right now. Um, Marie Folio uh, told me to read the book, and in there it says that. Um, the closer you get to truth or fear shows up as you get closer to the truth. So this here is the truth. The right now there's leverage in your business. Each of the, your businesses, there's leverage. And you haven't handled your business in that area. You haven't been a professional. You haven't been a leader. You haven't showed up to the best of your ability because it took you extra effort. It took effort the you dismissed, you procrastinated on because like, I got other stuff to do because your schedule had work in that. So one of the negotiations I'm about to have with Carl and John is, is that I wanna teach them how I work best. And I want them to understand that 
you know, as a visionary, it's, it's best for me to have nothing to do. If you have me busy, you're missing the trick. The aim is that I have nothing to do so I can actually do what is needed that nobody else can see. So my role or responsibility is to consult the different departments, but I'm not needed. It's like completely free of work. Because if you've got me busy, well, what's the point in just having me busy? Does that make sense? This, 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 if, if, if just for every for my my partners and my team to see me busy, it's, it's like almost like well, I'm being busy, so I'm not being guilty. So everybody does. So everybody else is busy, and I'm not busy. So I should be guilty. So I should be busy as well. That's no. So when I speak with Carl and John, it's look, I'll have projects, I'll have roles and responsibilities, but the aim is for me to be as free as possible so I can do this work because I'm really good at this work. I've been, you know, in the business, just it's, it needs restructure, needs, you know, hierarchy, needs to be fixed. But the point being here is most people are busy to do the real work. Don't hide in busyness. From the real work. All right. Cool. So, Susan, Abby, thank you. Hope you enjoyed that. We're going to break up the rooms differently because of the Wi Fi situation not being awesome and people trying to get in and out and get kicked out. Yep. So, what we're going to do is um, Kayleen is going to break the virtual people into groups. Um, I, I don't know, one or two groups. I don't know, three, maybe one group because there's just three of them. Yeah, maybe one group. And then in this room, you guys can split into your two and two. Does that work fine? And so what you're gonna do is you're gonna one, answer these questions that you had, and it's in the chat, right? The two questions, or you can go back and forth on the slides. So you guys can write down the question. And then just take a look at the question was about right? So your thoughts on those questions, but then really, he gave you tips on what to do to move the needle on those particular levels. How will you then take that back into your business, right? So this is your time to kind of work that out, work, you know, your questions with one another. Alex is certainly here. Yes. We're going to give you um, 20 minutes, 20 minutes. So it's 2.33 here. So we're going to take you to 2.53. Sweet. Okay. So 2.53, we will see you back here for a Q&A large group. Nice. Thank okay. you. Thanks. Woo. Cool. OK, so I'll go here.
I was talking and he's going to unmute me in a second on the other speaker. So just give us a minute. Thank you. In progress. So nodding no, I don't see anybody nodding. Audio, can you hear me in the virtual world? Yep, good. You got somebody saying yes? Yep. Okay. <clears throat> yep. Excellent. All right, you guys. So the whole idea, right, is that uh, we want to make sure that you guys get some training, then you guys get some time to sort of digest it, work on it, and come up with any questions you have for Alex. So what we're going to do is we're going to have 18 minutes of questions for Alex, and then we're going to give you a break. So who has questions that popped up for them? They have, they want to understand a little bit more for their own business or something that popped up in the group chat that they want to ask Alex. Just go ahead and unmute yourself and ask away. Alex? Yes? Um, something came up. David was really helpful then. Um, I've always been scared of how to post in my group and what to do in my lives yep. because I've been always, we were talking about converting people from our groups yep. to leads, you see. Um, I've always been scared of giving the how yep. because I thought that they wouldn't, they wouldn't want to buy off me if they were getting all this free stuff. Mm -hmm. and, and, and David just made me realize that that was kind of nonsense. And I wondered if you had any more on that. Yeah, tell stories. <clears throat> it's just as simple as that when i want to create content or i want to create lives i may not know what to do but when i engage with somebody maybe in my group or in messenger or you know they have an objection or they don't know a part of my topic I have an interaction with somebody on the phone and they don't buy or they didn't understand something. I've always got a story I can tell from it. And uh, that's what you do. Tell stories. Thank you. It's very difficult to tell the how when you're telling the story. You're, telling, you're sharing an experience. And I'll just leave it on this. When you, when you share an experience, you give other people hope. Because you, it's hearing other people's experiences. Yes. So you, so it's you don't have to do any teaching. You can do teaching, but telling stories is is the best way of marketing. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you so much. People definitely resonate because mm -hmm. it kind of makes sense for them when they hear stories. So I like that. Right. Who else has a question? Miss Monica, how you doing up there? I'm good. I'm just digesting it all. Yeah, yes, love. it's a it's a lot. To, uh, here's a probiotic. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to attempt to my wellness humor. I, I clearly see that I have a gap in that. So in the room. Room. Yeah, I'm gonna cut it for this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Monica. Anybody girl. in the room have a question? Okay. Sure this. <laughs> Huh? Yes, yes. Anything about the training is just done. Well, obviously, you can only go back and ask any other question. But um, specific to right now, we did this uh, secondary layer training. And then you guys had time to digest it. What was coming up for you guys? Was it difficult? Was it easier? Was there an aha? Something you want to share? Something you thought, oh, what the heck? Can you clarify a little bit more around this point? Yeah, when, when we were talking earlier, it's about the um, active listening in the kind of feedback that you yep. do. So you said that we ask the main, you have the information, for example, in our case for the business of the person, you talk about the pain, the glory, and you start writing down the objections. Was there something else? Yeah, so <clears throat> when I'm on the phone with somebody, I'm listening to them and I'm writing things down. And I'm writing down things about them. 
I'm writing down things about like, cause I sell people who want to build programs and services. So I'm writing down what they share about their program and service. If it's amazing, like I got the best program in the world. I write that down. If they're, if they're a wellness coach, I just write down wellness coach. So everything about like what they do, I've got a section for that. If they tell me like I'm struggling in a certain area, I write that down. I'll, yeah, I'll probe it and I'll write it down. But like I've got an area on a piece of paper, which is just then all of their pain. And then they may say like, I need these things, you know, and or, or like I need help with these things. So I've got that in the need section. And they, they, they may want like a, this. So I've got that in their like desire section. And then at the bottom of it, I just got the objection crusher. It's like, if they tell me something like, I've got to do this for my kids. Like I can't let my kids down again. And I'll ask them like, so if, you know, if you were to let your kids down again, like what, what, would, what would that mean to them? Oh, it would crush them. It would like ruin their lives. I just write that down and I carry on until later. And if they try and give me an objection, I say, so you want to crush and ruin your children's lives? And I really have that conversation with them. Not like even in... So it's very powerful when you have all of the information. I call it my ammunition. I don't even, I don't even sugarcoat it. My aim is that when you get on the phone with me, you're just getting on the phone for a conversation, but you're on the other end of the line is a trained assassin. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's how I want to yeah. see it myself. I'm a trained assassin on the phone because if I cannot, cl- if I cannot close the deal, I cannot help them. What, you're going to have conversations and let people down again and again and again? It doesn't do you any good. It doesn't do them any good. So I can't be on the phone and be all ditzy. I'm like, oh, it's okay. Come back. I, I, no, I can't. You, you'll get to a point where you've got to be, I am a closer. And I am trained. And you, I'm going to close deals. And it's, this is what I do. I've done it wrong in the past. And I've hard closed people. I now negotiate for the other person. So the person who's on the other end of the phone for me, with me, I'm negotiating on their behalf. I'm doing everything in their best interest to get them in the program. So that's how I see it. I'm negotiating on their behalf. I'm telling them the hard truths that they don't want to hear. The stuff that people don't say to them. You know, it's, it's, it's very interesting. When you're real with people, it's, 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 a, it's a beautiful thing. You know, it's truly a beautiful thing when you're real and honest with people and, mm-hmm. and they get it and they're like, fuck, you're right. And nobody else says, speaks yeah. to them like that. Nobody else has like, you know, like I tell people stuff they don't want to hear. Yeah. You know, I, I, I ask people those real tough, com- quite, not just in sales. I mean, like all around me, mm-hmm. you know. Level them up. <clears throat> yeah. Now, one of the things, and then we'll get to your question, Monica, because <clears throat> they see your hand raised. Good. One of the things that um, I like to think of it as like when I'm, when I'm speaking with people, right? This is the word I now use, use this trained assassin. I like to say that I'm a disruptor because people go about their lives in this sort of flow, yep. right? And they think that they are doing okay enough or getting by because they're working real hard or whatever it may be. And what I try to do when I'm effectively listening and writing these two different things, right? Is I'm really seeing what where they need disruption in their life so they can move forward. Because mm. right now they have a glass ceiling. Something in their life is keeping them. They can see the possibility, but they can't get out of the box. Yeah, yeah. And so by disrupting it, what I've done is I raised <coughs> the glass ceiling a little bit so that it seems a little bit more possible, yeah. right? But without <clears throat> being able to even let them know, they'll stay in the box. Yep. People will always stay in what they're comfortable with versus pursuing something they're uncomfortable with yes. because that's how we are sort of like are trained over time um, as human beings. They, so. they will deny yeah. the success mm. because it's uncomfortable to get to yeah. the success. So they will stay unsuccessful because it's comfortable to stay there. So when you understand that, they'll actually like, they're doing, they're not doing in their best interest. When you realize that, that I'm speaking to somebody who is not acting in their best interest. And they can't see that because you've been on the phone so many times, you just see the patterns again and again. I'm like, you first of all, you're frustrated. I can help you, Tanya. I can help you. I promise you I'll help you. Then you realize that they don't want to hear that because they're not feeling understood. So my ego is being splashed all over them. Like they're not here. So you start to listen to them and you get it. And there's, they're giving you this, this bullshit. And you listen to when you say, but is that what you told me here? Because earlier on, you said this, and now you're saying this. So which is it? 
Because both can't be true, Tanya. And for me, I don't care whichever one you choose. It makes no difference to me. By the way, and I tell them, just so you know, I am going to be successful with or without you. My goals will be met if me and you do not do business. So right now, this isn't about me closing a deal. I am going to hit my goals without you. With or without you. Right now, we're talking about you. Are you going to hit your goals? And, and this is what I see right now. Bum, 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 bum. And I'm just telling them the truth. Mm. Phone up Carl right now and ask Carl, Carl, what's the secret weapon in sales? He'll say, he'll be in bed and fast asleep. You go, the truth. That's all he'll say and go, I'm going back to sleep tonight. Because that's what I taught him. The truth will set you free. The truth is scary. People are shaking on the phone. They're like, oh my God, they give me the credit card shaking. And I, I pro congratulations, Mary. Your, your 25,000 went through that. Oh, thank God for that. Oh, God, I was so scared then. They get so scared up until the sale. And after the sale, they're accelerated. Then you got to make sure you have a button down process so they don't have buyer's remorse. <laughs> so, yes. you know, we Ms. could Ms. Monica, about. you're next. <laughs> so I have a list of books that I got from you, I think, since I started listening. And I had most many of them already in my library. And I want to know which ones to focus on. But here they are. I just found out about 100 million offers, yep. The Road Less Stupid, The Greatest Salesman in the yep. World, uh, Ready, Fire, Aim, Profit First. And I, I mean, I have my own list of bazillion. What should we, what would you recommend starting? I mean, you know, however you choose. I mean, $100 million offers, I think, is where I would start because the offer is the biggest lever. Like if I was in your business, the first place I would go to is the offer. Like that's just the very first place I'm going to fix your business. Let's go get the offer. What are we offering? From there, we can sort all the rest out. But that, that's my first, like we're sitting down. What, what are we offering? Like that's the first, like that's the first thing I'm going to ask you. So, so study that book. Ready, Fire, Rain will teach you. You only need to read the first chapter of Ready, Fire, Rain. He'll tell you that the first uh, thing you must do is sales. He's like, you're going to go want to get a, go out shopping for the art, for the office. And you want to, want to get the new furniture and the new computer, and the new software. And, you know, he's going to, you're going to want to do a lot of stuff. From zero to a million, there's nothing you should do apart from sell. If you have any conversations around anything else apart from sales, and, and you read that in the book, and I went out drinking with the author on the 22nd of August, 2012. And I woke up on the 23rd of August, 2012, and I quit running my company. I just phoned Adam up. I said, I'm not running the company. I'm a, I'm a dickhead. And, uh, <laughs> and he's like, what? And I said, well, that's what, that's what the author called me last night. <laughs> Sorry. No, he's my favorite author in the world, and he called me a dickhead. And that's, that's it. Like, you know, he's like, you're just stupid. He said, like, you're pathetic. And he, and he was very clear to me. He's like, you have just asked the most pathetic questions tonight. And you've just been like, have you read my book? I'm like, yes, twice. He's like, well, read it again. You're obviously not a good student. It was, he, was, he was screaming at me, screaming. He was very drunk. <laughs> <laughs> and we, we had drunk a bottle of tequila each. So, you know, but I took it, I took it to heart. And, and what it was, was <laughs> I was asking all the wrong questions because I was hiding from the truth. Because I didn't feel ready to grow, because I didn't feel worthy to grow, because I had self-worth issues. So it was all blanketed in all of this smoke and mirrors of all of this other stuff, because I wasn't willing to look at the truth. When I got to the truth, I phoned Adam and I said, Adam, you're running the company, figure it out. I've got to go and learn this stuff. So I started learning about the stuff that I'm really teaching you about. I've been on a journey for a number of years looking at this. So Ready, Fire, Aim, beautiful book. Um, you know, focus on sales. Uh, all of you the road less stupid like yeah read it now you know you're going to kick yourself every page yeah. you know <laughs> every page you're gonna be like oh i'm an idiot aren't i you know <laughs> no i uh, just yeah it's it's literally i was reading it i was just every page isn't that you know oh. there's just a question you really like oh my gosh like i've made so many mistakes in my life you know, so, so it's nice to know. Um, yeah, one of my favorite books, top two favorite books. So yeah, just read them all. Prof and then Profits First. 
Your question yeah. is, which yeah. one first? Wait, them all. No, well, Monica, <coughs> you did hear him say a hundred million dollar. I know. I just okay, want to clarify. Yeah. Let me do Alex speak for you. One hundred million dollar offer first, right? Ready, fire, aim, or fuel, or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Second, right? Then the road less stupid when you're feeling like your steam is high. We got that? Okay. That's your three and then, key. And then also a few more books. Um, Rock, rocket fuel. Um, who not how? The gate, the gain in the gap, or the gap in the gain. Yeah. So who not? Yeah. And the world's greatest salesman by Og or whatever you had recommended. I don't know. I have a copy. Fantastic. Um, yeah. So the gap in the gain. Who not how? Rocket fuel traction. Um, the power of less, the one thing, these all very good books, yes. Tanya's next book called How to Read 500 Books in a Year. <laughs> <laughs> That's coming out. Year, year. Oh, sorry, right. okay, yes. Oh, Lifetime, I feel better. So my esteem was really low when she said that this morning. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm such an underachiever. Okay, well, I got in my head. I don't know why I thought that. So who thank else? you for clarifying. Any other question? questions? Books for closing sales. Uh, really good. Um, books for closing sales was the question. So, uh, so books for closing sales. Or handling objections. Does anybody else have ideas too? Throw it in the chat. You know, I don't think I honest like. Never split the difference. I think that you know that gives you the, the the strategies, but I really think being on the phone mm -hmm. is where you learn. I don't. I haven't learned from like. I haven't really learned from a good like as long as I got a script I'm decent with. It's the belief. It's the, I'm going to like the, I said po po positive mental attitude like. I'd rather listen to some stuff of like closing deals on YouTube or something of just like getting the right PMA, like, like, you know, I'm, I, you know, like whatever it is in YouTube, like for about closing sales, I'd want to listen to that more than like read a book of like structurally, technically mm -hmm. how to close deals. Mm -hmm. Cause like when I want to be with somebody, it's just my energy, my confidence, like my, my words, my presentation, the, the, the my listening skills, it, it's, it's, it's like that one phone call, even if I don't close the sale, I'm coming off it. And like Susan, I know Susan does this as well. She comes off a call and she'll then examine herself. Like, how did she do? Where could she have got better? And it's that self-examination is, is the, is the yeah. study. <clears throat> yeah. And the like- The sooner you can do it, it's the fresher it is in your brain. Yeah. Right? Sure. <clears throat> yeah. Good I question. That. that was excellent. Yeah. Any other questions? Hey. I have a couple. Good. Okay, go ahead, Chad. Yep. Yeah. Uh, one of them is uh, what do you, what do I need to do versus delegate? Have we still got the? Uh, How much do I need to know before I go? I know. Um, do, I, do we have the virtual? I'm just making sure. Every no, they're good. Oh. Uh, it's virtual good. world, can you still hear us? Yeah. Okay. Cool. What was the question? I can delegate anything. Yeah. So how much do I need to know versus? Well, what I would, what, what I want to do is I want to, I want to know anything I'm delegating. I want to know, not unless I'm have like management, I believe in they're delegating, but from your level, if I'm going to delegate something, I want to at least know how to do it myself before I delegate it. So the best place, there you go. Start with the story. Nice. Mm. So the, the best the best way oh. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay, new sales nice. Hmm. go david go sales, sales, sales. Oh. sales grave i like the name sales grave these sales are you okay okay sales bible well yeah jeffrey gitmo is good yeah so that, like his work's good yeah yeah, his. Thanks, yeah, Dave. Thank you. Yeah, his works good. Um, so what I would do, Chad, is everything that you're doing right now, delegate. <laughs> Seriously. Can you delegate the worry? 
Let's get that off. Well, then go to therapy. Yeah, so delegate everything <laughs> and delegate and then go to therapy for the worry. Yeah, yeah there you go. I like it. So if you can delegate, yeah, it's it's a game that I play. Yeah. It's a, it's a delicate, it's a delicate game that I'm learning. I'm going to be much better at it um, after my last few seasons. But it's it's something, yes, you know, delegation is something that I'm um going to be much better at moving forward so you've just got like i was terrible at it. like when i started in 2010 i built my first team oh, i was horrific horrific and then by 2012 that's when like you know mark ford's after two years of doing it he's calling me you know dh and uh <laughs> said as far as i got that this time <laughs> Well, you know, come on. It's like I wasn't saying it was being said about me. You know, it's the, it's the time I get to Either swear. Either way is fine. I was just like, wow, that's nice. <laughs> it's the, huh? No, so, so delegate everything. Yeah. Okay. So one last question here, and that is, what creates more strategy sessions? Because you can't sell without getting some strategy sessions. <clears throat> so when you have your content, both in my Facebook ads. My Facebook ads look good, but I'm not getting strategy sessions. And then I'm, I'm in my power content. I do okay, but how could I increase more strategy? Well, sessions? what I would what I would like to see um, is like what Mary has given to me is her numbers in the way that she's given them. So if you were to look at that and then try and examine your own business and put the numbers into place you're going to start to see picture as a picture. I yeah. know you may not be able to read it, but I can read it. Yeah. And even with my own numbers, when I look at my own numbers, I have people come over and sit with me on the sofa and look through the numbers of like, what do you see? And I'm watching them of what they're picking up. Like, you know, business people, and I watch them. And they see things that I don't see. I'm like, oh, that's interesting. I didn't see that. Tell me more about that. So, you know, have conversations around numbers. A lot of people like to hide their numbers. Why? Embarrassment, shame, all of that's around numbers, okay? It's like my stepfather. He, he's like overweight, right? I can see you're overweight. He doesn't want to step on the scale in front. I can see you're big. <laughs> uh, the, the number's not going to change anything. <laughs> but he's embarrassed to show the number. But like you, and now he's losing weight right now. So I'm like, we gotta track it because like it's gonna be really important to take that before picture. And you know, and he's he's losing weight, but he does. He didn't want to tell the number. I'm like, I don't care the number, the buddy. <laughs> I can see. <laughs> so, but I was honest with him about that as well. I'm not hiding it. Um, <clears throat> I can't answer your question honestly as I can with Mary's business because I know Mary's business needs new adverts an opt-in page brush up and her to be a better closer. Specifically, as long as these numbers are not wrong and they can be because they're inputted by a human being. Mm -hmm. So they could be wrong. A double, triple, quadruple check. But you can still double, triple, quadruple and get them <laughs> wrong. But it gives me something of substance to say there's an issue here, an issue here and an issue here that we can then have conversation. Right now with your business, I don't have the luck. I don't have that. And we can get it. Um, so if you just go into the equations I put, first one is drive more traffic. That's one way of doing it. The second way is then where is it? Where is the bottleneck? Is it the power content? Is it the, you know, we'll have to look at the, the levers. So I'm going to pull up Mary's numbers after or tomorrow. I, I sent it to him. He, I have it. <clears throat> I'm going to pull them up and I'm going to show you on the screen. Thank you for, for providing them. I'm going to show you where I can see the specifics. And it's it's beautiful. All right, guys. Any other questions? Go ahead. Yes. Is yeah. there always a call before the strategy session? Call? A strategy session is a call. Yes, it, it's a call, but do, do we do like two calls? Or <coughs> So, so I, I have in clients in abundance, I've taught one call close. Um, the reason is I don't need to do two calls. Like I've just been trained to close deals like on the phone call and I make sure that number works. And however, 
Um, a two call close, I believe, is a much better model. Um, it's it's not new. I've been I did it 2018, 2019. Um, but we're going to be adopting it now. Because that's what I tend to do, and I would say that maybe eight out of ten people that come into the I call it the qualification call because we're just yep. talking. I'm just like knowing to. Uh -huh. Knowing them a little bit more, it's like having um, <coughs> how do you call that the the, the paper that we're going to be doing everything. Yeah. An application. An application. Uh -huh. it's, it's like yeah. I'm doing the application with them on the phone. Yep. So we relate a little. Yep. And I have no pressure to make the sale, so I'm never feeling stressed out. And when I go to the second call, then they know that I'm going to make the sale. So I found it much easier. So is that a good a good strategy to keep doing it if they're comfortable with that? Yeah, I mean, I, I just this is what I say. I just say go um, go with the uh, the numbers. So what I mean by that is that if you're doing one call close and your average call value is a thousand dollars a call, and you do a two call close and you find out the the people who come to the second call are worth sixteen thousand dollars a call, you can see very easily that a two call close is more valuable than a one call close. Oh, so to see you can, and it doesn't take very long to figure out which is a better one for you it doesn't take many calls so you can just test both and which does which feels better for you for, for our business now two call close is better and we're gonna really we're gonna we're dialing it in right now but like nat is just gonna be on the phone and nat and other people are just gonna be on the phone speaking with people all day we got the system set up and they're just going to be speaking with people all day and anybody that they think is good will then be passed on to closers. Yeah. So there's going to be a lot of stuff going on and I'll show you what we're doing, but there's going to be a lot of activity from people who are taking first calls. They're not there to close deals. They're there just to have conversations to be like, hey, good person. And, and then we got closers on them. How much data do you have to run before you know it? <coughs> Work, you, it, it, I mean, intuition over like because it's you, you'll like you be like for me, um, like I love, um, I don't need much data to know, even the data is there. I don't need much data to know. Do I prefer closing deals from cold traffic over the phone or people who have been to a three day seminar and then I'm on the phone with them? I can assure you that they are worlds apart. They are just very different. I don't need data. I'm just fully aware of this here is incredible. That's hard work. The data is there to show, but like your intuition would be like, hey, this seems to be working better over here. You still track the numbers, but like you'll see it. Like one phone call, two phone calls, three phone calls, the numbers are already working themselves out. You'll know. Um, two phone calls, like the first one you, you learn to know them a little bit more and like yep. the second one you are about more, more it can be the next day, but yeah, I, I'll just like I'll just say, I'll say like this, I'm going to be we're going to be doing two call close moving forward and um, you know, Susan likes done it, you know if, if she can close it in the first call she does Yeah, that's that's pretty much, you know it's but well, that's secondary so two call close, but we'll I'll teach you both models, is it yeah i think i yes i mean we're selling you know uh, a, a higher end package i think two call is better for that um even when we do the seminars though it's like well what's the seminars three call close mm -hmm. so the seminar when we do the seminars is three calls it's a call a second call and then it comes to the closer so it's is the introductory call the secondary oh, call and then there's the closer call. Yes. And it through the seminar. Huh? And it's through the seminar. Yes. 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 Two or two or three call. Yeah. So it's both depending on the you know the quality of the candidate. What I would say, what I'd say is this though, we can play with the different things. But when you look at the numbers, that's where the difference is. If you close them, if 
if I was frontline and I'm on the phone and it's just coming to me, so the business is coming to me, the applications are coming in, I'm not doing a two call close, I'm doing a one call close. If, the, if that's the pipeline, it's on me, I'm just doing business. We're speaking, we're doing business. And I'm going to be looking at my average call value and I'm going to be playing a game to drive my average call value up. That's the game I play myself because I'm sitting in a room on my own for a long time each day, speaking to different people, listening to their bullshit and stories and having to active listen when I know where we're going with this. And, you know, so I've got to play games with myself that keep me very stimulated. And a good game to play is increase the average call value. It's a very <laughs> profitable game I play. <laughs> And it's just great, you know? I want to increase my numbers. And I get to sit in a room and play the game of increasing numbers. Um, <clears throat> but building a company, um, I'm going to do two call closes and I'm going to, uh, yeah, there's going to be multiple calls and, and it's going to get people into our ecosystem. And um, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So David said, uh, I can't split up because it gets too big, but what's he saying? their why and what out of them and give them extra steps on the first call and then the second call i can hold them accountable open up the relationship yeah yes yeah, so he's doing two calls i mean you know there's just this <clears throat> well again how you do it <clears throat> is it's i can give you different models the main thing you want to do is track the numbers like how much are these calls actually worth because when I can pull up the numbers, when I'm doing the like post seminar phone calls, those phone calls are worth like $18,000 and I'm closing them in nine minutes or something. It's like an average call value of like 18,000. You look at that, you're like, whoa, like how can we just get, how can we get that now consistent? How can we turn that on? Like, that's like, well, I've now like with this restructuring, we have to do a look at it. But, like imagine that every day, other people doing that. So, yeah, so just look at those numbers and uh, from there, I'll be able to guide you better. Good, thank you. All right, you guys, any last questions here? Again, you could, we still have more time for the day, but before we go on break, we wanna make sure you get all your questions answered here up to this point. One more question. Of yeah. course, go ahead, Mary. When you have a two call close yep. and someone is setting the call, setting. Yep. Set, set. <clears throat> yep. What percentage or commission do you pay that set? You, I mean, you know, it's every, going to be dependent on your business. Yeah, right? really yeah. dependent. So you could look at it like you could. Um, but they wouldn't be on salary. They would be working for me in any other capacity. You you so. could if you if you wanted to put them on a salary, you could. But I would you put them on a commission. Um, you could 5%, 10%, you could just, you know, 3%. I mean, it's like, it, it, well, it, it, they're not closing, right? No, it's like a 10%. No, but it doesn't, but what, no. And again, it's what I like to look at is volume of margins. Okay. So, um, do you know what Cole? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So Cole Gordon has the training program where he does this, right? Oh. And so he actually looks for setters, helps people do things like that. So they would say that an average, just general setter that isn't necessarily closing would get anywhere from, and depends on your business. So you got to run your business and your numbers, but from three to 6%, what's dependent on that three to 6% in a commission base happens to be their skill level, how good, like their numbers are coming in. You got somebody really good at it, going to things, you're probably on the high end. You got somebody that's eh, they're probably on the low end. Mm. So people can build up as they go. Nice. But he says it's really dependent upon that. And the range is because, of course, of your own margin, your own type of things that you have in your own business as mm. well, right? Yep. You have to factor all of those things, but that's his range is three to six. Okay. You're welcome. Yeah. <clears throat> and also, it's something you can build a model, but sometimes my brain doesn't allow me to build <laughs> models in the future. <laughs> until I actually have the data and I build, I look at like my data sets. Um, but, you know, yeah, three, three to 6% seems very fair. And how fast is, is a good idea to hire a closer or a personal assistant? Yeah, really I think with the closer, I'm gonna be speaking about this tomorrow, but like with a closer, oh, we're gonna be building a phone room now and uh, like an in-person, like people. And um, I 
So can I give my lens while you're thinking on your lens? Mm -hmm. Here's my answer to that. I would say, right, as a typical thing, it depends, but here's why. It is about what is it costing you to do that when you could delegate it off? Do you see what I mean? So in your type of business, if you can delegate and pay somebody this, but by not doing that, you're doing this in higher level that pays you more then you'd want to do that sooner than later. Yes. However, if you're at a place where you have to do that and pay somebody just because you don't like it or don't want to build the skills or whatever it may be, but then it's costing you money you don't have or it's not building enough with, there's a factor. So that it isn't a clear cut black and white answer. What I would say is that's a great discussion though to have a further dialogue on a one-on-one -on -one basis based on your business needs. Is that helpful? Yes. Okay. I, you know, super legal answer, right? With the whole, it depends, but that's the <coughs> answer. <laughs> Okay, you guys, so keep thinking if you have any other questions. Meanwhile, let's go ahead and take a break. We're going to take a 10-minute break. So it's currently 3.32 here in Pacific Standard Time, so we're going to come back at 3.42. See you in 10.
Yeah. 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 I mean, you know. Business program. I yeah. Yeah. The thing is that. Where I think that it makes sense is that we have so many coaches and so many talks and so many help, and if you go to them, you can move forward so, 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 in so many aspects that I don't need to work with another program. Okay. I love it. Okay, you guys, here we're going to go. This is after the rest break, right? So what I want to do is I want to do an activity where we just go around for the day. Here's the thing. We're all busy. We're doing a lot of things. When we're building this community that I said, right, we're going to be a world class connected community. That's our intention, that's our vision. To do that, we have to make sure that we celebrate one another. And today you guys got to work a lot in groups from new people, people you just met in different groups, whatever it may be. So what I'd love to do is I would just like to go around and everybody gets to say something that they learned from somebody in one of their groups today that made an impact for them. Nice. Okay, or their business, something that they learned from them or an idea or something that's going to be shared. Because remember, we talked about at the very beginning when we were getting to know one another, right? What do we want from, what we want to ask from this leverage community? What do we want from them? We hear people say things like accountability, they want shares, they want whatever. Right now, I want us to make sure that we're contributing as well as we're getting contributed to, right? So let's just take a moment and contribute to one another by recognizing somebody that's made a difference, even today in this mastermind and contributed to you. So it's basically like a, a, a kudo, a thank you, a, a recognition type of piece. And we're just going to start. Let's start with our virtual community. So we're going to start with you, Ms. Catherine, something that somebody said that made a difference for you today in the breakout groups that you had. So somebody... Okay, so it was David um, who said a lot of great things actually, but um, said um, how much um, he got out of his Facebook communities and then drove them to to book calls or whatever he does, and um, and and then. Sorry, I'm it's way past my bedtime. I'm slurring. I yeah. do apologize. Um, but yeah, to use to use the fact to use my Facebook group more, and that's what I was saying I wanted to do. And he kind of confirmed that was a great thing to do. So that was really super helpful. Thank nice. You, so those that are just saying like, wow, they're struggling with it. They're not on all way to things. Here's somebody that's really taken and run with it a lot. So that would be something where you could leverage. You know, and use David, you know, and ask them, you know, whether in the Facebook community, reach out to them, whatever it may be. So, David, thank you for contributing to Miss Catherine. I appreciate it. So, we are going to come next to David, since you were on the spot already. David, who is the person that made something that you learned from in one of your breakout groups? So, uh, honestly, um, right back to Catherine on just her tenacious willing to get through this you know she she doesn't need to be here um she wants to be here and she's doing it for her and just that ability of you know it's it's something that's driving deep inside her and to push her to a different level that just motivates everybody around her i, I loved it oh that's fantastic it's beautiful catherine good job on that all right, Very Bertrand, nice. I know that you only have been on for the last little bit. Thank you for joining. In. I don't know if you're still on right now. Is he still on? Because it's pretty late for him as well. Okay, he's not on anymore. That's okay. We're going to go to the next one, which is Miss Monica. Miss Monica, are you back? Yeah. Yes, I just got back. So what are we doing now? Yeah, we are going to, you're going to share with us something that you learned from somebody in one of your breakout groups, somebody contributed to you that made a difference for you, your business, yourself today, who would you like to give recognition to in one of your breakout groups? Um, so David, in my last breakout group, he was <laughs> just watching, I joined late in that group and just watching what he said to Catherine uh, about the whole how, you know, like her how, she was not sure if she should share, you know, all that she's got. Like, and he's like, go for it, be transparent. This is what, you know, it's the truth, right, prevails. So that was, cause I wonder about that too. I'm like, oh my God, if we give it all away, then 
what are we going to sell them on? So that was a really powerful reminder. I love that. Good job, David. You got to contribute to multiple people today. Um, so I love it. Okay. Anybody else in the virtual world that I missed? I don't think so. Okay, we're going to come into the room then. And if you guys can't hear the person, make sure that you know, and then people in the room, if you can speak up really loudly, it'd be fantastic. For Jenny, we're going to start with you. Okay, so I will say that for me, I wasn't married. So um, it was the fact of being able to be with someone that has been here for a long time, seeing what she said that um, she started in a certain way, now she became really extremely organized mm. this event, being ready, having her stuff done, and she telling that this was what she was looking for when she joined at ATAC the second time. It brings me courage. It, it, it assures me that I made the right decision to not wait, yep. to, to take the step forward right now and have what I need right away and not wait a full year before yep. coming in. So that's, that's really what it makes me. Yeah, nice. that's excellent. Mary, you made that impact and Regeni today. So thank you mm. for that. I really appreciate it. Miss Mary, I know it's interesting because the two of you were in a group today, but go ahead. What contributed most to you today? Um, Upleveling systems. You were talking about systems. And so she gave me some comparables to some of the systems I'm using. I can up-level what I'm using, which I really appreciate. Nice. Good job, Regenia, right? We want to come here. We want to get contribute to and yeah. contribute. So I appreciate that. Mr. Chad. I have two. You said yell. <laughs> yes, I did. And I'm fine with it. Continue. <laughs> Same level. Uh, you know, I, I've got two. One of them is uh, Tanya. She gave me some perspective. She's a, first of all, she's a good active listener. She asks good questions. And that, I love that as a coach. So mm. she helped me get some perspective on uh, my offer. Yeah. And so I'm now thinking that could be a very helpful thing to me. So yes. that was good. And then Mary, she gave me, uh, she's very generous. Mm. And uh, she had a, uh, uh, she's got a template she's been working on. Uh, really cool. And I, she not only let me look at her numbers, but Alex's help, mm -hmm. and she also offered to provide them. So thank you. That's fantastic. Good job. I appreciate that you did that, right? And then Miss Mary, thank you for sharing. That's up lots of people see. Okay, Tanya. I have two. Um, I think it's Monica, that's her name. Yes. I appreciate people asking for great new books to read. Yeah. <laughs> Good job, Monica. <laughs> so I have them on another list. And I just wanted to thank Alex because the thing that stuck out to me this morning that we, I hadn't heard in calls from before was who's got my customers? Mm. And so that was a really like nice just sitting in my brain and I'm like, okay, where am I going to go and get more people from? So yeah. I love it, right? <clears throat> Look, you guys are, you have this time and everybody's time is valuable. The fact that you're taking the time to be here, to one, learn and level up yourselves, but then to contribute to others who want to level up because we all have different skills and expertise that we can help make the community. When we sit there and they look at a program like Leverage, it isn't just about Alex and what Alex can do for everybody. It is about you're going to best build yourself and your business by fully utilizing everybody's strengths, asking questions from everybody, holding each other accountable, contributing to each other and being contributed to. The more you're willing to do that, because we can get very caught up in our own world, but the more you're willing to do that, the more people are willing to do that for you. And then the community itself goes up. That's when you look at even additional things like <laughs> leverage X exponentially, not just, just your numbers, which are key and critical to building your numbers, right? And your business, but also leveraging this team and this community as it grows bigger and bigger. Right now, you guys are the pioneers, right? And really being able to set this up. But my vision is really around, right? The world-class connected community. So continue to do that. Don't have to have an activity to make sure that you guys are recognizing each other on your own accountability calls and really making sure that you never know when that thing that you say is just the right thing that makes the impact to the other person level up some way, shape, or form. So I appreciate that. Uh, thank you. Did I miss anybody? Okay. So then what we're going to do next, you guys, is we are going to give it to Alex, and he's going to do a high level. He briefly said he was going to go over some of the numbers of Mary and different things. He's going to sort of summarize up a few things for the day um, and, and do a recap. And then 
at approximately 4.30 or so for yourself, then we'll start to do the uh, positive round table at the end of the day. As you guys know, it's a, a step that we do. So, it was, I uh, sure care. Can we please? I sure care. <clears throat> so thank, thank you. So what I'd like to just acknowledge here is if I'm correct, um, we have a joint first. We had uh, uh, David with two recognitions and uh, Mary with two recognitions. And I want to I wanna just talk to this. <clears throat> when we, uh, if David um, focuses on coaching Catherine on her mindset of conversation, as an example, what will happen with David is he will become more aware of his mindset and how he does things. And he will become much sharper because he's able to see Catherine and then able to coach her and guide her and help her. But he has to then be at a higher standard himself. And it's really interesting how coaching makes you better. Yes. So that's why if all of you here can help each other, you're going to get better from it. And that's why the game of I play is like, I'm going to add more value to your life than you can add to me, because it's just such an incredible way of being to do things for people like, oh, I did that, huh? And, like, and I've got people who do it, <clears throat> like for instance, Susan, like Susan tries to figure out what I need help with and then just does it without telling me that it's done. And then I can find out and I know she did it. She makes a point of doing that. It's like when we used to do live seminars, John would do the exact same thing. He'd be in the room, John would there in a circle, it would, the conversation would happen. John would disappear out of the circle, you wouldn't notice it. He would leave, take care of it, and then come back to the circle and then look like that and say, Can you handle this? You go, I've already done it, son. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, Really? Yes, it's taken care of. It's like, wow, you know, so, so it's, it's, it's great. So just, you know, just being of that, being like that, um, you, you are, uh, I did an emotional intelligence seminar before, and then we all had to go around and, and give people sticks if they had, if they had, um, if over the weekend, if somebody had made an impact, you had five sticks, you'd give sticks out to people. You'd walk around and, you know, all these different people, there's a hundred people there and you'd have to give like, you know, uh, a, a, like a stick to like five people mm. and it was very interesting to see who got the sticks and the recognition at the end and mm. you know like how many people had just so many sticks and some people had like one and some people had none and it was really interesting so um yeah give it giving is uh giving is where you receive yeah absolutely thank you mm. thank you that's great okay so well done for david and mary yay it's, it doesn't go unnoticed, you know, even if it isn't said, it doesn't go unnoticed. Yes. Okay. Excellent. Okay. It's on you. On me. High level recap. Go over the numbers. Uh, whatever else you want to do till about 430. You got 30. Okay. Let me, um, so let me have a look at this. So, uh, yeah. Uh, so Susan, yes. I think the you've given me like a you've given me a Slack address. I don't know if I have access to. Link. So you give me a link, but it's a Slack link. So you kind of just give me a Slack link. Can you cut and paste that into no, a? No, it's not. I, okay. That wouldn't be a, that wouldn't be a link to Mary Kid. Okay, got it. So if you could. Um, Let me pull this up. Thank you. <laughs> and that that's the that's the thing, really. We really think about it. You have access to a real great community here who are looking at the same things and stuff. Really sharpen your, uh, you know, sharpen yourself against each other. Be willing to like help people in areas. 
comes back to you tremendously. But um, that's that's what I like to do with my uh, the masterminds I'm in. The speakers are great, but like the people who are in the rooms, that's where the business is. The access that the, the you put into Zoom. Does that work? Yep. Um, can you guys see that? Well, what I'm going to need, if you can put it. Here it is. Yeah, but I, I'm going to need. Um, yeah, I'm going to pop it up there. So can you send it to me? Okay. In the. Can you mind me to everybody? There you go. Thank you, my lovely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's that's it. You know, she's like, oh, I don't think I should be here. It's like, wait a minute, love. Look like what David just said. It's like you're a tenacious little bugger. You know, it's like one o'clock in the morning, and like you're you're up in the UK where everyone's asleep. I think you deserve to be here. You know, nobody's told you to be here. I respect that. Yeah. Nobody's told you to be here. Hey, Alex, will this work? If I do this, I just did the same. Yeah, that's it. That, that works. Um, that shows indication. Uh, I should put it. Catherine, to be contributed to. Oh, okay. yeah. no, girl. So when we started, Susan said something with her question. I'm at my best when I'm present. Mm. That's okay. so true. You know, sometimes we have our cell phone out. Yeah. It is. You can get it. Okay. Look at that beauty. That's <laughs> So, so what we so what we have here is uh, it's you know it's a set of numbers, and what I'm looking at here is I'm just coming down here. I'm looking at how much she spent. So. By there, you know, B35, like this is how much she spent. I want to come across, uh, let me actually make this smaller. So I'm coming across, how much did she make? 66K. But actually, she made 30,000 cash and there's rebuilds be collected. So she could be down money. Okay. So she could be down a couple of thousand bucks. Okay. So I know people have like lives to live and bills to pay and you know business costs and stuff. We can factor that stuff in. But like right now, this could still be a, a successful campaign because you know she's doing 22k. So she put out 31. She should get you know somewhere like 50 back. So you know she's got you know it's three to five. Put three and get five out. But it's not good enough. And, and what you start to realize is the effort that you put in has a value. And the hour rate is going to be low in this scenario. And uh, so what I look at is, then I come over here. Look, I've got all of these numbers to look at. And this, this is, you know, all... So I started to examine, I started to examine, like what I did first of all was I started to look at the the ad spend first, is this like where, like I just started to look at this quickly, it went up and down there. Then I looked at this and I started to notice that we got a better CPM. I didn't even look at this, you know, cause I want to look at the cost. Okay, we're at the highest we've been. So like the cost has gone up. Why is the cost gone up? Well, look at this. The, you know, they, they were in the, the, the double digits and I was dropped. So this tells me the click rate that like here, either the ad spend, um, either, the ads are not working like they used to, or they've changed their targeting around here. They did something with the targeting. They did a reboost, a relaunch, something's happened. But I would wanna ask questions. Was this a change in, in ads or has the, oh no, no, we haven't changed the targeting one bit. Okay, then the ads are fatiguing. So, so that tells you that. I go over here, like fine, I'm not really looking at this. Here though, I'm looking at, okay, interesting. We're in threes, twos, it's dropped. So these two are similar, so it's fine. Cost, cost has gone up. So I'm like, there's the, the first lever, it's getting this, this cost of lead down. But really, you know, it's the click-through rate is what's gonna do that. So number one, I've conclusion is her ads need a refresh. Like that's the first lever I see here, unless, 
the targeting was changed, which we'd have to speak to the Facebook person, right? Well, I can just see that from this. Here, this is called the 15. If we get that up to 20, so landing page conversion in December is 15.42, we get that to 20, that gives us a, that 5% move gives us a 20% bump in follow through traffic, like over here. So that, that, would, that would be a tweak point. Because it used to be up to like 26, now it's 15. Let's get it to 20. Change the headline. It can literally, like that, never have to change anything again. 20% extra business, 30% <clears throat> extra business, 40% extra business. Never do another thing ever again, but you have that much extra people coming through because look, 15%, 19%, like where, that's, that's a quite a lot of percentage if you look at follow through. 61 to 17. And what happened here? So something happened here. Look at all of these numbers in like add to cart. And if you're in the virtual world, maybe, um, you know, you're not having as good of experience of this, but <clears throat> of, of my explanation. But um, as you're just looking at these, I'll just show on the screen for this. This is a big, this is a big area. Uh, I'm just highlighting on the screen. Like these here, that's a big area of um, questioning, like what's going on here. This also, this is an area of questioning, like, like we need to bump this up. Um, look over here though, like 599 a call. So what happened there? Why only four? Like 20 to four, what happened? Did the text reminders break? Did, did like, um, like did did the per, did you have somebody on the phone like there's things now there's questions I need I need answers. Is the text messaging service working for the reminders? You may have run out of credit, and nobody's getting text reminders, so nobody's showing up. Or like, or actually that's not that. That's uh. Or did the button break? So on the VSL page, the button wasn't there for for two weeks. People couldn't apply. It's like, click the button below, and they're like, where's the button? I want to click the button. The button's not there. Technical issue. We went from 20 to four. There's, there's an issue. What happened? But like, if we don't know this, it's like, oh, the power content's not working. No. You know, click funnels change their code, and, and your button wasn't integrated anymore. It, it was like, you know, you got the email, like, ClickFunnels is going through an integration this evening. Maybe like, you know, we're, we're updating a few bugs in our system. And all of a sudden, they change something and your button is no longer on your page. You know, but, that, but, but we, 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 we can laugh. But like, that takes like, you know, 20 calls down to four calls. That takes 211 to 599. If you don't know what happened, if you're not following this along, your business is being shook up and you don't know where the heck it's coming from. So would you recommend them, like, that's a long time to wait 31 days to find out that. So would you be... Look at this, Amy. Yeah. You should be up there. Like, yeah. So just so you know, yeah. Yeah. Mary has one of these daily, correct? Yeah. Yes, I do. So she has a daily one of these that just is run daily. Yes, she, I never talked about that. So you can so you can see on a day to day basis, you can see something's not like <clears throat> just becomes that evident here. Um, however, two two sales there, so four calls, two sales. So something went right on the phone there. <coughs> Zero sales. Yeah. Yes. So. And also in February, eighteen calls, zero sales. March. <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> Bless you. Thank you. In March, eleven calls, yes. zero sales. Yes. The, the closing rate there is thirty-two calls and no sales. Yes, pretty much. That's, 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 that's good. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad you see these things. Yeah. That much yeah. yeah. It does. <laughs> now this is this is the problem when you need uh you need uh people around you 
to be able to support when you're going through that because you need the calls recorded and to be able to give them to somebody and say, take a listen. I'm like, Mary, you, like, you just don't sound like you. I'm like, Mary, you just sound off. You know, so you just didn't sound yourself. What was I doing? Oh, God, I needed this. You know, you've got to get the phone. No, I'm not my phone a lot of the time. Yeah, turn the phone over. Like, locked in. Or like, oh, by here, I was doing, by here, what was funny is, no sale, no sale, no sale. Oh, I went to Tony Robbins' seminar, and I started doing my, my morning primal stuff. And then all of a sudden, I got bored of it in October, and I stopped doing my morning primal stuff, and I didn't notice that I made no sales that month. Yeah, and I'm not, what I'm, what I'm getting at here is, this can now lead to, like, I can start asking questions, but I'm just making a joke out of it. But Mary can be like, holy shit. Actually, I meditated through the summer. Then we moved back to Toronto and I stopped meditating. And it could be something like, wait a minute. I was in the... And back into it. Closing deals. It's good, isn't it, when you look at numbers like this? And that's why I said to Catherine and Chad, if your numbers are bad, it's even better. Because it's so much easier for like exponential growth. But it, as long as you have the will, as Susan put it. Does <laughs> <laughs> anybody have any questions around this in the virtual room? Go on, There's Mary. also the gap between applications and calls pages, too, where, I, where I, I'm not following up on those people that filled up applications and those people that oh, Yeah, absolutely. So it's like, yeah. Yeah, it's like fifth is, yeah. Uh, go ahead, David. So I probably already know the answer to this, but I want to get your input on it. Um, so I've got three ways I get leads. Yep. Well, I have three ways I get calls to sales, different things. Facebook ads, getting them off of my Facebook group and into my email list, sometimes off my Facebook group and straight into a uh, you call them seminars. I call them intensives. Yep. Um, and then of course, out of my email list. Yep. If you noticed, um, I don't know if they shared with you or not in the Slack channel, I put all my metrics down of what the results were for the intensive. Fantastic. I split it out and created three campaigns so that we could track the numbers on what had the best results from Facebook ads, uh, from the, from the, uh, social media following and from the email list. And of course, email list one hands down. Um, my point, do I continue three campaigns for everything I do, or can I start tracking everything on one sheet like this? Well, very good question. So, um, so this here is the Facebook report. I wouldn't want to convolute them. So um, maybe if you want to, if you want to share your screen and show me the report that you shared, I'd love to look at it. <clears throat> I think it'd be good for everybody to look at because I've got questions that I'll stop sharing. <clears throat> what report do you want to see? <clears throat> well, you just said you, you submitted the, the three things, the three, three traffic sources for your intent. Oh, it was just a, it was a post inside Slack. Right. Okay. So what I would, what I would say is this, that, um, so what was your, uh, dollar per lead for all that? Do you have your dollar per lead? $92. Oh, are you to sales or, or income? So, um, either or just, just, we'll just have whichever, you know, it's, it's, um, they say it cost me $18 and, and some change per lead. Okay. And, and each lead was worth? Uh, well, off the Facebook traffic by itself and segregating that out, I don't have that number yet. Okay. But total, every lead is worth $92.80 to me. Okay, so perfect. So look, as a blended, what he's saying is that it cost him $18 and change per lead, and each lead was worth 92. Now, do you know the percentage of the three of traffic? Like how many... How many leads did you get total? Uh, total, we got 355. 355. And do you know the breakdown where they come from? 
Yes, I do. Now let me go back to that. So what I'm doing here is I'm just, so you'll get, I'm exploring the numbers and I don't really want a conversation with David around stuff. I really want to. <laughs> so then I can have a conversation. 132 came from ads. Yeah. 152 from the email list and 71 from social media. Okay. <clears throat> um, we had uh, 39 VIP registrants, 23 from the email list, nine from Facebook ads, seven from social media. Okay. So um, do, you not, do, you, do you know how much money come from, how much uh, money did you make total? Right now we're at uh, just over $53,000. Okay, congratulations. And then do you know how much of that come from the email list? 80% uh, of it. Interesting. So, so this is, so this is interesting. So, so, um, we all, we also know that 90% of them paid for the VIP. If they paid VIP, which was $97, then they either came into the community at $2,000 or they came into the coaching at $5,000. Yeah. So, so gathering all of this number, like all this stuff, just, just collating it just to like have conversations like this. And then like when he wants to do another intensive, he has the information to like make decisions on the next one. So like <laughs> this information is just, you know, so important. So, <clears throat> so you believe 80% of the 53 K come from the email list. Yes. I, I don't have that exact number, but I know it's right about there because we've okay. already looked at it. Okay. So from the ads, do you know how much you, and you don't know how much come from the, how much did you spend on the ads? One sale from the ads. How much did you spend from on the ads? We spent 4,200. No, it was total 4,227, but that included December's. Um, we spent around 3,300 in ads okay. and we had one sale for 4,997. It was cash collected. Okay, so here's, here's, so here's the thing. So I want you all to listen to this. Very important what I'm about to say to him. I'm just speculating, but just get this. So you basically bought some leads from Facebook, didn't make that much money from it. 3,300 spend, 4,400 back, 1,100 bucks, okay? Whatever. But what he now has is he has 132 people on his mailing list from those ads that he will be able to make the more offers if he follows what we said in the presentation. And as he makes more offers, he's gonna make more sales. So in 30 days time, he can track how much those 132 people are, 60 days, 90 days in a year. He doesn't have to just isolate them. You can actually build bigger things, but as long as he keeps making them offers, he can make more money from the 132. So he could, if he turns that 44 into 99, he just tripled his money. So even though he hasn't made it up front straight away, if he would have spent more money and it takes time, it's what we call a latency period of like, you know, you spend the money, you break even, then you're in profit. He's already in profit yeah. from those leads. So he's now, anything that he makes from those one, three, two is profit. Obviously he has running costs and stuff, but that's just, that's a different conversation. Those one, three, two, he can make more money. So the name of the game is to really start to understand how much am I paying for a lead? How quickly can I break even on that lead? And then how much more can I extract from that lead which in profit season? And then how many leads do I need to cover my running cost and make however much obscene amounts of profits you want to make? Was this the first one, David? First master class you did? No, this was, this was an intensive. This was the second intensive I've done, had similar results with the first one. So we've made the decision. We're going to do one every quarter this year. Nice. Uh, and we're going to bring in uh, other subject matter experts that are considered gurus in the real estate investing space so we can get in front of their audiences so that they can uh, present as well. Um, and we're going to run uh, free master classes every week with the intent to sell a $500 um, case study that is 
well should be sold for a heck of a lot more than 500 bucks and is going to come with 30 days free access into the community because it's a four week long masterclass. So it's a way to uh, give them as you would a $500 free trial to get into the community and then say, Oh, okay, here it is. It's 30 days. Thank you guys for playing. Hope you learned a lot. We'll see you on the next masterclass. They're gonna be like, wait, don't shut me off. Don't shut me off. <laughs> yes. So, so what, what I like about what he's saying here is, <clears throat> and this is, <clears throat> this is when you know your numbers. Yeah. I want to give you just for David and all of you, and I was looking forward to being able to give this talk to leverage. I'm going to give you a very brief summary of it, but I will teach you in the future. But it's like, he's paying that $18 a lead, and they're worth 92 combined. It's blended with all of the other stuff. But like, he's paying the 18 how many of those can he spend cash flow wise to buy, break even with them or make some profit with the intensive? So instead of having 355, you know, 700 at an event or whatever it is. But then, and then like what he's saying here is he's saying that he's going to have these like every week to those leads that come in, he's going to have these different trainings where he can sell them 500 that they get to know, like, and trust him that when he does a bigger offer, they're going to buy it. And those, and those emails are just going to be worth more and more over time. And that's it. Like I said it this morning, like you may have missed a lot of what I said this morning because it was so simple and just like compact, but it's how much are you paying for a lead and what's the dollar per lead? And however he wants to play with it and it's interesting about him. <laughs> but, uh, the guy just walked past. Uh, the the uh, whatever, whatever, um, whatever David wants to do with whatever, like he's like, you know, the 500, like that's all like um, playing around with stuff. That's just, if he can look at it consistently, how much am I paying for a lead and how much is that lead worth? And you play that game and you keep focused on that, you know, it's good. He is focused on that. There you go, buddy. Very good. Keep it simple as well. Okay. I think it was Russell Brunson said, Ye who can pay the most for a lead wins. <clears throat> so <clears throat> we learned it from Kennedy and it's, you know, he or she who can spend the most to acquire the lead wins. And that's why uh, I'm able to just stay in business. Um, that's why I'm able to just like, compete you know that's why I, I was able to do the one dollar seminar and spend 180 dollars to buy to sell a one dollar ticket so i had to pay 180 dollars to sell a one dollar ticket it's very difficult to compete with that you know it's because i was willing to spend 180 dollars to, to make a one dollar sale so i was just buying up the market and um and then, but those leads are then worth $800 each to the company. So when you figure that out, you know, you start figuring out, like I can spend this much, then I'm going to, then you go to the auctions and outspend people. So then when it's like, you know, he's paying $18 a lead, but they're worth 92. And if that's the holdout, I'm not going to try and squeeze on Facebook $18 leads. If I'm buying them at $36 and I can buy a hundred of them a day, send over a truckload of a hundred tomorrow morning for, you know, for 3,600, send them over. I'll give you the 3,600. Thank you very much. Bring a truck tomorrow with another bunch of leads for 36. I don't mind, but I can get them for 18. Cool. I can get you 10 of them for 18, but I want more than 10, but like, you don't want to spend, you can get them for 18. So here's 10. I'll buy 3,000 for 36. Let's go. It's funny you say that because that's what we average is about 10 a day at 18. That's funny you say that. Ah. And, and you may have to spend, like as you scale, you may have to spend more, but then it's, you're playing a different, it's, it's a volume versus margin game. You want to really study that. You know, it's, it's like, you've got to have more to like get the margins and you, you, I'll, I'll leave it on this. You can't fix a margin problem with volume. It's, it's just so difficult to fix a margin. And I've tried it many times and I've hurt myself many times. Um, it's very difficult to fix a margin problem with volume, but you can 
you get massive margins by using volume. <laughs> that sounds like Yeah, it just, but you, you just gotta, you could, if you could sit with it and look at it, you know, it's like, you know, if, if they, like David did what he did with 355 leads. Yeah. But if, if we got 700 leads go through that event, he has no extra energy to really put out, but we should have got $106,000 out of it. And no extra costs. Right? Not much more. There's not much more difference. The costs are already factored in. The stage was there, the, the camera was on, the lighting, the heating, the, the, the engineer, the, the staff, you know. So but I, I still have 31 more calls to get through strategy okay. sessions. And right now I'm closing at 77%. So that hunter is still in reach. Ooh, incredible. Hey, yeah, that's incredible. 77%. It's amazing. Very nice. Well done. <laughs> well, that's true. What is your price? Uh, 2000 to join the community, 5000 for the coaching. Okay, well, we, we can definitely look at putting the prices up, but there, there'll be a back end. Let me be clear. Are you selling all of these people into the group? All of these 5,000, I promise you this, 100%, I can, I can promise you, we could, whatever he makes, we could just double it by, because say we put, say we put a $20,000 offer out there to them and a quarter of them buy, they're all worth $10,000 each. So we can literally take that 53 right now and say that's 106 with a back end offer. We just need one in four to buy it. Well, that that's what's happening. That they are buying like they are right now because that five thousand dollars, that's the last time they're ever gonna see it. They know that as of what was that date, the twenty second, it went to ten thousand dollars. Sweet. And but I want you to just get this though. You make you come up with a twenty thousand dollar offer, and it could be twenty five or higher. But I'm just saying, if you come up with a twenty thousand dollar offer, we just need one in four of your existing five k people to buy it to double the lifetime value. So what I'm saying here is, with a back end offer that we haven't figured out, we don't need to know it yet. We will have one hundred and six thousand right now instead of the fifty three. And we, if we double the um, and you make those other 31 sales and then uh, there's a whole heap more money. So well done. It's very good. Love it. Oh. Good job, David. Yeah, well done, David. Because my question that I had kind of relates to this. Okay. So you said earlier that you changed your business model for CIA and stopped doing seminars. Yes. Because it wasn't consistent. Yes. To be consistent, you're like you're doing it every two months, and you're making a million and a half dollars. What if you, what's not consistent enough for that for you to change your <clears throat> So the um <clears throat> we would run the ads and build out the ads and go into the ad platform and compete for ad space and optimize our ads and keep refining them and getting better and spending more and getting them to the place where we're spending five, ten thousand dollars a day. And then it's the live event and you've got to turn the ads off. But they're crushing it. The, the ads are just crushing at the peak where they're, they're the best. And we got to turn them off. It's like, imagine keeping them on. It, it, I'm like, huh. Now, as soon as you turn them off, now you've got an ad agency who are doing nothing waiting for the next seminar before they can run ads on a retainer. Yeah. And now, you just, run yeah, but just, it just, you got to go through the seminars, you got to turn it off. You know, you got to have a whole funnel built for it, like for the next one. And then you gotta like turn it off. You gotta like run that event. Yeah, you could, but also, you know, we're plummeting like, you know, hundreds of thousands into this event. I don't want spending money. I want everybody's attention on like this event. So it was just event to event and, and going from an event to an event, well, my mentor, <clears throat> my dear friend and mentor, Rich Efren says, this is what he teaches. He says, if you have, if you go from event to event or promotion to a promotion, you don't have a business. So I'm just going, I'm just an event. Yeah. Just, I got like an event to event outside of that. There was no business. So I'm just like, Hey, 
yeah, it just doesn't make sense. As a business owner, it doesn't make sense to have an inconsistent business. And that's where I found myself with. So what are you doing different? Going to make it consistent. So, uh, well, we're going, to, we're going to go back to selling over the phone and having phone sales. The problem was that just the business group, just COVID threw us off. What, what first of all happened, you know, I guess it's just backstory, very simple. Number one, <clears throat> we're in the market competing. The, my competition uh, laid out his numbers and I think it was a very stupid move. Um, if, he, if he looked at it, he would mostly say, yes, I should never have done that. <clears throat> when, when I was doing backend stuff, I told nobody of my numbers, kept it very quiet. If I would have told them, they would have been doing it themselves. I would have shot myself in the foot. My competition, he, he shared the numbers that he was making. Within days, weeks, there was a thousand people coaching coaches how to build a coaching business. The market wasn't saturated. It was just like people just ripping everybody off. And it just, the whole industry was like, oh, everybody was like, well, who are you? I was a nobody because there was 27 people saying the same thing as me. Like, oh, I teach power content. What do you mean? I'm clients in abundance, you know? You know, it was just, it was madness. So we couldn't understand like how to beat it because everybody was saying the same thing. So we said, let's just jump on stage. And then nobody will, you know. So we went to seminars and then boom, the seminars were working, making a killing from the seminars. So, yeah, so I'm, I'll do this for a bit. Then COVID hit, went virtual and we haven't picked up since then. So I'm just going back to the phone, get that in place and then I'll put events on top. It just, it makes no sense to not do it, that's all. I've just never seen anybody think something was like, Every eight weeks, you're making a million and a half dollars shut off. <laughs> so try to understand the logic. Because there's tens of millions of it. So I'm just looking at the money. I'm like, there's tens of millions of, of lost money. It's like, it isn't as good as it looks because of the all the inefficiencies you can't see. I'm just seeing, I'm like, this is not, this is not what I want. Bless you. So it needed to change. Oh, people thought I was crazy. Carla Carl John are like, are you, are you okay in the head? I get it. You got it like so dialed in. You huh? You realized you got dialed in. Like dialed in. So dialed in. It was, it was fairly, it takes a lot of, it brings me a lot of work for those days. You don't see that. It's like the inefficiencies, like you say, that come up. So when you're looking at like impact, like energy, time invested in money, I don't know what's going to happen. Outside of the events, it was just very, just, it just, let me be clear. I'm not going to talk. You're going to see talk and teach him, but I'm not going to talk too much. You're going to see what I do. What I do is there's going to be a process, very good process of sales consistently, daily, outside of events. When we then do events, they're going to start off small and then they're going to snowball and then they're going to be very big events. And the aim is, that we're going to do very big events. But as soon as the event's over, the business is still running without the event. So instead of the business needing events, the, the events are a cherry on the top. So that million and a half you're talking about, you're walking out with duffel bags of cash and not needing to park it off and pay for things. You're throwing in the back of the trunk and going off to get investment, you know, investments. So, so the business was inconsistent, inefficient, ineffective, because we were just jumping from event to event. Now, the events were dialed in, but outside of the event, it wasn't. It sounds like people sustainability as well. I mean, your people, it's, there's more than just systems. There's people, <clears throat> and you can only do so much. It's not sustainable. It sounds like you could, you can, like people burn out. Let's say you can have I, I would just I would I would just say um yeah you know I can just say uh, just just simple it was inconsistent let's just say that and it's just I want to turn an inconsistent to a consistent and I want to see seven figure months without the events yeah I just I just it just it, yeah this is a game you know think about it it's, it's, for me it's just, strategies my brain you know 
I'd like to see us doing a million dollars a month without seminars. And then put the seminar on top. Love it. Thank you. All right. Any last questions before we go to round uh, round table? Positive round table. Positive table. My apologies. It's Thank okay. You. It's okay. Yes. yes. Go ahead. I, I'm really a relationship person and community person. I love having a place to go. I, I feel that I connect a lot with people. I take the time to go to talk to them, to exchange with them when they come in from the books yep. and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, now that you're talking about something that is sustainable and long term and that you can have like every day, is, is that something that you have ever done? Like, yeah, I mean, doing that? Yeah. I, I think I think building community is the most important thing in the business. The the what I learned from Dan Sullivan was to really grow a business, to really grow like a, a big business, you have to uh, change. You have to shift things. So I built you know really good communities over the years. And I was really a part of the communities. But then there's like, there's, la there's, there's our, like when you look at your, your hourly rates and stuff, it's like, I, I can't have like personally, like we have Nat in figuring out everybody who comes in the group and she's got a spreadsheet and she's got like all the like drop down menus for, for everybody. And then we can like categorize like, who, you know, so I can look at a spreadsheet of a load of names of people that I could like, I don't have the time and energy at this point to, to, to do that. And Dan Sullivan told me, give me permission. It's fine that I'm not in the communities. And the truth is I've paid Dan well over a hundred thousand dollars and I've never spoken to him outside of a room. I've never Facebooked with him, never emailed with him, never text with him, never phone. I've never had access to him outside of the room. And um, in your earlier stages, I think, you know, really give people that access, but then they've got to start paying for that access and the higher tiers. And like with David, you know, David saying he's got that 5K package. It's very easy to put a 20K package on, more access to David. We'll figure out like the channels and stuff, but just, yeah, come hang out with David. Like come to my office, let me show, come with me on a flip. I'm going to go and do some, whatever he does. Come with me on a, come with me on a, Whatever it is, whatever he does, come with me. Come with me to the office. Do you know how many times people have paid to come and sit in my office, just sit down with me in the office? I had people fly from Australia to the UK just to sit there and be in the office, see what you want to do. Yeah, pay a lot of money for it. There's nine of us on this call. Yeah, yeah, there you go. You know, and 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 really, you know, with with the skills, you know, between the team. Uh, we could have sold a lot more people into the program that uh, to be honest with you just wasn't ready for it like we're just i'm very happy with where it is and it's building and we'll add more people in but like i want more time with each of you like to learn like i want to get to know your businesses a bit more intimate and find out like where's the real lever like i, I need you to like find my own little store you know like what i've already built like i you know I, i'm glad Catherine's here and you know with her questions and the, you know the mindset earlier so go on anything else uh susan any last questions before we go to round, a positive round table okay sure. so when we do this you guys you know you guys are familiar with the positive round table mm -hmm. we go around and we talk about something positive but i really want to upscale it just one little level here today <laughs> nice. right we're in leverage we're talking about building your business talking about reaching your goals making the impact etc but a lot of time and energy in this and you guys spent your time and energy so when you go around and talk about what your really big positive or positives were for the day, we take this feedback very seriously. It helps us make sure that we're leveling up for you and for each other. So please think about this in the sense of what really made the biggest positive impacts throughout the day for yourself or positive just takeaways that you want to share with all of us. The sharing is you get to relive it yourself, as well as quite frankly, we get to learn and make sure that we're providing you what you always need. Okay, so I really want you to put some thought and energy and effort into that. We are going to start with our virtual team as well as Miss Catherine, because I know it's late there. So Catherine, I'm going to let you begin as well um, and start us off with the positive round table, please. Well, I've loved it all, um, as I love 
love leverage um it's just helped me focus mm. like i'd forgotten and maybe it's not right not to have that motivation but i've forgotten that i don't need this mm. you know this was my hobby <laughs> and it's great and i can definitely use the money don't get me wrong and i want to use it for my family and i want to use it for charity not so much for me to be honest but i can actually so a i don't have to be emotional about this because let it be a game and and, and david really helped me see that as well and right. and that i've got these people around me when you put me in a group with blooming David and Tanya, and I'm thinking, what's he doing putting me? I'm in kindergarten. They're like doing their PhDs. Like, and I haven't got to speak to, to Tanya much today. Um, I think she must have gone in another group. But um, like we can just be, well, I can't say friends yet. We don't know each other, but and I don't know if I can give anything, but I will give my absolute best whatever I've got. And I'm going to believe that I have got something to give. Yes, you do have something Love to it. give. Love it. Thank you, Catherine, Thank so you. much. David, your turn. So for me, it, it's all about the numbers. I think I've pretty much displayed that time and time again. Um, and uh, diving into the numbers and uh, figuring out, you know, where growth makes a difference and in getting involved in uh, fixing what's broken, but knowing those KPIs and where to figure them out. And I loved that spreadsheet. And um, uh, I don't know who made that spreadsheet, but I took a picture of it. So I'm going to steal it. I'm sorry, but I'm a little transparent. I am going to create that spreadsheet. I may add a few more fields to it, but I loved it. So um, I'm a big numbers guy. It's it's why I'm in investment, investment sales and investment uh, or multifamily investments. Uh, so that that's been my big takeaway today. Just uh, keep drilling down on the numbers and um, getting the KPIs where, like Alex said earlier, you just look at it and you can see what's broken just by looking at the numbers. Love Thank it. you. Can I can I just I want to just add one thing on that um, just to. See, he does family, uh, multifamily units. So something that he could easily do is charge $50,000 for access where he goes and does deals and stuff. And somebody's able to stay with him and watch it, okay? Let's just say $50,000. He only needs one out of 10 people who bought his 5K package to buy that to double his average order value. Mm -hmm. So that everybody who's giving 5K on average are all worth 10K. <coughs> And then if he sold a $20,000 package and he got one in four, that now triples that. Mm -hmm. So, but those, so it's, it's just right there, like massive profits as well. Okay. Great. Well done, David. It's really good. Like the Monica, you're up. <clears throat> so for me, um, what I've really taken away was the, again, the numbers, just like David was saying for Mary Sheet. It was, I'm very um, hesitant. I'm not a numbers person. And it's just all very intimidating, but like just to see the 20 to four, what happened and how we can figure out, you know, there's something that happened there. And then taking it further, how Alex said that maybe I stopped meditating or maybe something else is going on. It doesn't just have to be in the business. It could be in your personal life or in the world or, you know, whatever. So that was one um, huge takeaway. Cause this is not just, I guess, a business course it is, but when I signed on, it's kind of like taking a look at your whole life. So I'm excited about that. And then vulnerability of Catherine just now before I so resonate with her on every level, but I'm finding that I'm resonating with all the people that I got to talk to, for example, with Chad and his number stuff and me, like I'm just resonating with everyone that I've been in a room with um, and learning from them. And I do hope to be able to give back yes. big time. Thank you. Love it. Thank you so much, Monica. All right, in the room, we're going to go with Chad. Uh, so, you know, it's the same. It's the numbers. Um, it's it's the getting past my fear of, I'm going to push past my fear into the numbers. And uh, most of my life, I, you know, I've said this before, but 
my whole life I've said, I hate numbers and I don't have the DNA that my dad has. He's a CPA. And I've just always said, I don't have his DNA. And it's just become a, um, a self-fulfilling prophecy, which is a stupid mindset. <laughs> and I didn't realize it until we got into this group. So for me, I, you know, I, I am learning to absolutely love the numbers and uh, I'm going to step into my fear of and whatever it takes to understand them, just like sales, you know, I mean, just, I mean, anything like that, there's always fear. And I have to push through wherever the fear is. And I didn't think of this fear, I just justify. It gives so much a justification yeah. in my mind. Nope. I didn't think of it as a fear. Mm. I just, it's just been a thing. I just, mm. it's like, a, it's my personality. Mm. That's how ingrained most mindset stuff is, it is so core. You're not even aware of it. That's why we need coaches to show us what we can't see. And uh, so, yeah, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to move forward in it. It's not easy. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's not fun looking at the result. I'm looking at some of my numbers right now. I want to throw up, you know, I mean, but, but it's good. I mean, it's like, now I can make a change. Yeah. I got so, you. It's good. Yeah. Tanya. Oh, man. Um, I like I said before, I love that whole thing that Alex said about who's taught my customers that really turned on. Mm. About just different ways that I can drive, like, leads into the spa um, and into my tax salon. Um, and reminded me that I used to cross market between my three businesses and I stopped doing that with COVID. You can get that started in it. Um, so it triggered some things. Um, I really feel today that like it just really felt very just like I'm so blessed. Mm. Like I don't I don't know why, but I just really felt that way. Like that I have learned so much in my life, and I'm excited to um, be able to give back. Um, and I just feel so grateful that I can pass this on to my kids mm. at such like exactly thank so, you yeah. thank you miss regeni oh goodness let's start with the same set of meditations it's such great to be with people <laughs> it's just so great i feel like uh, i don't know why but i, I feel like the baby here <laughs> and i love that feeling i i i love that i have always felt weird because i love numbers i love taking notes of everything that i do and and talking about books and reading books and being with you guys and you're talking about that and what book are we going to read after and I just read like a 500 book and I was like okay I, I'm not alone I'm not weird it's, this is just okay this is just normal to be going like this and it's just okay to be following up our numbers and yes it makes an impact and you know where you have been and not no it's not too much not it's not exaggerated it's just a way of following up what have I been doing, what is working, what is not working, how can I improve that? And seeing that you guys are having all those results, I'm like, okay, there's where I'm going. So I, I that inspires me a lot to see you go. And I'm like, okay, there's where I'm going. So thank you for being such an inspiration. And yeah, I, I just feel great to be there. Great. <laughs> That's good for you, Regina. Mary. Something you shared earlier today, I just kind of found my note that I wrote on. Oh, when you were talking about it's either a skill or a will issue? Mm -hmm. That was that was massive to me. That was really big. Yeah, it it's like I watched my father build his empire from nothing, <clears throat> but I didn't learn the skills. I never learned the skills either. I rejected the skills. Mm -hmm. And now I'm finding that I'm hearing things and I'm like. Wait a minute, like I threw the baby out with the bathwater. I just threw it all out. And I just feel like I'm claiming some stuff that I uh, didn't even know was in there. Mm. Mm. Or transferable skills of other things I've done in my life that <clears throat> I'm utilizing here that I wouldn't even think would be of value. To yes. Us. I love that. Thank you, Mary. Yeah. All right, Miss Kayleen. 
Excellent. All right, I'll do mine and then we'll let it, you end it. How about that? So here's the thing for me, you guys. I sat there and I watched and observed all day and I, I was just in awe because what happens is you're all very busy people. Our brains can go a million different directions, but you were present, you stayed connected, you contributed, mm -hmm. you asked questions, mm -hmm. you wanted to get something out of this and you put something into this. Yes. And I'm telling you in life, when we do that, the impact we make absolutely is exponentially much greater than we can ever imagine today. When you hear Alex talk about leverage X, it's not just the numbers, which it is important. It's also about the impact you're gonna make in each and every one of them. Each of you have already done that out in the world and you don't even realize the full impact you've made. But the fact that you're trying to grow that to be even bigger, because you each have a purpose, you have goals, you have things you want to do for people for the right reasons. It's absolutely wonderful to see. If we have more people in this world wanting to do stuff like that, imagine the world we could build together. For me, what I just watched and observed that was a real big positive was the contribution to each other. When we're gonna build a world-class community, you guys opted in right away. There wasn't any of this hesitation. You're gonna see, you gotta prove yourself. Things that I can typically see sometimes from groups when they come in, you guys were all in and saying, let's do it together. That way alone, we'll do so many great things, it's hard. And then I really enjoy, because I know many of you at different levels, but I sit there and I watch people and I, I love seeing the growth in even whatever time frame. Don't underestimate your own impact and growth you can have in even a short period of time. David, I'm just gonna take you for an example. I sat and I watched you and you and I, David, go back you know, to CIA. As we sat there and we had conversations, I remember you almost didn't opt in. You were at a place where you're looking at even a program. It was untested, untrue. And now you're in this, not even that many months later, talking about you're going to be the first one to $1 million. Mm -hmm. We can dream big. You can make an impact. He wants to help families get to the thing that they're doing. He has big purpose, big things. And he went after it. He stood in it. The fact that you guys are doing that, although it's hard, you're not doing it alone. Mm -hmm. It's not just Alex that's going to help you. It's not just Kayleen or myself that's going to help you. But you guys now have each other. Mm -hmm. And by being able to leverage and utilize everybody mm -hmm. as the community continues to grow by contributing more, yep. getting contributed to, I'm so excited that even today and the next one, I'm going to watch that growth be further. For me, life is very, very short. And I try every day to make an impact in somebody's life and in my own. <clears throat> today, you guys have made a huge impact on mine. It was such a blessing and an honor to be here with you all. Getting emotional now, so I'm gonna wrap it up because <laughs> this is what y'all did to me. But I'm just gonna say it's because I truly love and care. And this group of people love and cares mm. authentically. If there were people here for the wrong reasons. We could catch it and see that. And I'm just amazed at how you all showed up so present today. So thank you very much for my positives. Alex, on to you. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, I, I have to follow that. <laughs> well, you know, I, I'll just start with a positive view. Know, I hope you enjoyed my presentations today. Uh, there are two or four. I have two more presentations for you tomorrow. And I believe by the four presentations, I've compacted everything that you need to move forward to grow the business tremendously mm -hmm. with ease. Um, yes, you do have to get past your fear, Chad. You all have to get past yourselves. Mm. You are the biggest hurdle for the next day, week, month, quarter, year, decade, lifetime. Um, so, you know, by, by seeing the numbers, being excited by the numbers, seeing how the numbers tell a story, it's very beautiful for me to see. And you all have numbers, so you're not beginners. You've all like advanced from that level, mm -hmm. that now you can have exponential growth. And you know, Tanya's like, 
oh, I could like merge my three businesses. Yes. So now you can cross promote your businesses and now start increasing your average customer value in all of your businesses. And now you can now cross promote your businesses and do very exciting fun things and look at the numbers and see the difference that it makes. It isn't just, oh, there's activity. It's real, uh, it's real data. Uh, also, you said about like, who's got my customers? You know, I was doing $20,000 a month. Then I got people to promote me and I had a $330,000 following month. I'd never seen money like that in my life before. But because I went after that, who's got my customers? So just that one simple thing could business. It's just, it's just your levers were in today. Whether you pull them or not is up to you. Whether it's fear or you didn't spend the time or it's the slippery fish slipped out of your, your mind, the results will happen in the future. I recommend this evening looking at your notes and saying, what is the one or two things, one or two things I'm going to do in the next 90 days the will get me double, triple, quadruple, or 10x results of where I am now. And I swear you, you double, triple, quadruple down on that. Mm. The results are there. So I believe every single one of you has it in you. Uh, what David said by David, what David said about Catherine, she's tenacious. Mm -hmm. All of you are tenacious. Chad, tenacious. Mm -hmm. Monica, tenacious. All of you. I don't need to name you. All. So... I'll leave it on that. Skill or will, you can learn the skills here, but you got to bring the will here. Mm. I think that's always going to stay with you, Susan, what you said Definitely. there, you know? So mm. I will uh, leave it there. I think you're all amazing. My name is Mr. A to the J. Some call me, I won't say. <laughs> <laughs> they call him master, master leverage. Well, I'll take that. <laughs> Thank you so much. Well done, everybody. Enjoy the day. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Bye, guys.